Welcome back, everybody, to the Blast Premier Spring Showdown. It's day two, which means we get to send some more teams home, send a little bit, uh, a few more teams deeper into the bracket. I'm joined again today by Bubski. You get some good sleep, man. You get some nice rest. Have you gotten over the fiasco, the simple fiasco? I mean, it was it was hard to, to sleep on that one, right? No nightmares yet, but uh, simple for sure. <laughs> Didn't have the best nights nice of his sleep. Um, definitely a, a career changing game for some reason, I would say, but um, he's going to be all right, I assume. Yeah, yeah, probably uh, probably tossing and turning all night. Let's check uh, the look at the results from yesterday as well. This was day one. Cloud9 taking care of Rare Adam with ease to start the day. Heroic 2 owing NIP uh, using their academy squad for the most part. And obviously the big match, mm. the big upset is uh, Meta's Sport taking down Falcons 2-1 to one in simple CS2 debut. Yeah, and the, the worst thing is that it was a deserved victory. Yeah, Meta Sport couldn't even have won the first map if they played a little bit better. So it was uh, a messy look for a, a team filled with superstars, but not even being able to play against part-time players from the likes of Metasport. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a big day for them, surely. Big respect to what they bring to the table. Also, the two twins was absolutely crushing it. So uh, a lot of good aspects for, yep. for the Swedish scene. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, we were excited about that with the, with the young Swedish players coming up. Let's check a look at the uh, the play of the day presented by Traded GG yesterday. A lot of Counter-Strike action, but only three plays could make it into the final running. Only one of those plays could win. And in third place, we have Nerds pushing up middle. A solid Mirage performance from him. He was helping Heroic Power over NIP. Uh, this one went into overtime, so they needed every ounce that Nerds was going to provide, and this 4K, 4K helped them out. Uh, Jakino, he had a big day yesterday. Other guys uh, kind of took some of the spotlight on Meta sport but Jakino quietly had a very nice day this was an early 1v3 clutch clutches dictated a lot in this game and for whatever reason the inexperience came out on top and the winning clip the play of day one magisk 4k out of palace trying to help falcons helping falcons win this map unfortunately not enough to help them win the series um but magisk as always bubski was just rock solid yeah i mean yesterday. i think we can almost conclude at this point that magisk has been the the only player in falcons who's really lived up to to somewhat of the expectations of a roster like this. I, I look at other names like Snappy, and yeah. Payus, also Simple yesterday, and Madden not really performing to the level expected of them. Uh, Magic must also be turning around in the bed at night because he made a, an interesting choice leaving the best team for, for this mess right now. Yeah, not panning out so far, but they, they got some runway this year to try and make things work. This is the bracket. This is what everyone's playing for. One team from each side of the bracket going to move on to the main event, to, to the finals out in London. Uh, and and yeah, this is just seeing the progress. we got some games today, so we'll get some of those quarterfinals set by the end of the day today. Metasport, Cloud9, Heroic, all waiting to see who's going to be uh, who's gonna be joining them. And here's your day two schedule. This is what we've got for you coming up today. Liquid taking on Saw. Liquid, a long travel day after that rough depression pressing loss at the uh, RMR out in Monterey, Mexico just last week. Complexity, a much easier flight. Happy that they were able to overcome and actually qualify for the Copenhagen Major. They're going to be taking on OG. And then Imperial Monty to close out the, uh, the, the the day, the evening, the afternoon, wherever it is you live. Um, let's check out predictions. we got a, an obviously awesome, super fun prediction game going on amongst all the talent. Um, Scrawny and Launders uh, both had an upset pick of Metasport over Falcons. They went against Against GG Bet's uh, prediction uh, line of Falcons. So they got to steal two lives, um, which they took away from Harry and Hugo. So there's a little bit of a, a caster civil war going on at the moment, uh, which is which is great for us on the desk to witness. Um, but Scrawny's sitting at the top with 10, which it doesn't make me happy. No, I mean, we are, we are safe for now. As long as we keep a low profile, I, I think we can keep it on low and maybe <laughs> sneak on to the top at, at the end. But Banks, I'm having a look out for you. So, oh, okay, we even have the same picks today. So it's not going to matter too much today, but uh, hopefully Hopefully in the next couple no. of days, it's going to be different. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and the fun thing is that other casters don't even don't even really get a chance to listen to us do our segments, so we can talk all the smack that we want, um, and it's all good. But we're going to get into that Liquid taking on Saw matchup, and before we dive too deep into the actual matchup, we got to talk with Kadian uh, earlier today to get his kind of thoughts, and obviously going to be a little bit of an emotional interview after a tough loss and elimination at the RMR. Kaden, you guys are coming straight from an emotional, heartbreaking RMR into the showdown. So have you been able to do anything to reset and just, just how are things going in Liquid right now? Um, we ended pretty late local time in, in Mexico and uh, we had uh, more or less a 24-hour travel. I arrived in my apartment at 8 last night, so that's not been a lot of time to digest or work on things or even, yeah. even just like find your own groove and stuff. So yeah, I think that... Um, 
we'll have to do our best here under tough circumstances, but um, it is the way it is. It is the way it is. That is uh, very key, I think. How would you say the whole team is at mentally, though, coming into this? Yeah, I think, of course, not making the majors a big hit for the team and for the organization. Um, but I, th I think it could be worse. I mean, we'll we'll try to do our best. Um, I think a, a bigger breakdown of and debrief of, of how things went um, will happen after showdown. Uh, I think right now we have to just focus on these games ahead of us and and, and try to do our best. Uh, we could definitely use extra land, <laughs> extra land tournament. So yeah, we'll have to to do our yeah. best. And in terms of doing your best, obviously, sadly, the calendar isn't very packed now for Liquid, right? So does this make the showdown even more important for you guys? I mean, we actually have quite a few things planned, I think, still think, for the next upcoming month. So it's not like, of course, the Major is going to be two uh, tough weeks of, of, of watching and, and not playing. Um, but other than mm -hmm. that, we actually do have a lot of tournaments still. Um, so, yeah, I think um, we're just still planning out how to make the most out of the next upcoming weeks and how to be the most efficient. Um, and um, I mean, uh, for me personally, at least a, a blast tournament is, is always a land I want to participate at. So yeah, I'm here to do my best. Mm. You to do their best, and obviously uh, acknowledging a lot of work to do on this Liquid lineup, uh, Bobski. This is this is the RMR results from Team Liquid, uh, and it's not it's not pretty. Obviously yeah. eliminated by Complexity in that final day, won't be at the major. But even even those those victories over Bastia, over Boss, those weren't well, pretty let's, either. Let's be honest. Like the format itself is rough, right? Like no excuses. Like they had a, a rough showing yeah. here. They meet the two best team in the North American region, and they lose to both of them. Sucks, right? But the reality of things is that if we look outside of this. Um, and also at the resource at this armor itself, it doesn't really look good from Liquid. It's not like you're getting that feeling that they're on the path to something greater. The in-game leader in the middle, Kadian, I I'm not sure what he what he's doing currently in his individual level because he was so good in the in the end of Heroic, but right now he just seems a little clueless in, in some other rounds. Like, I'm not sure if it's because the other guys is not really up to par with that Heroic style of play, but it does seem a bit messy at times because currently he's on a 1-0-8 rating, and if you take into consideration of the NA attacks that he's playing against, like Boss, uh, Team Badass, and all these teams, then it's a really low rating considering his level. Sure, I think I think probably within this liquid uh, lineup, I mean, you're going to see those kind of diminished levels individually, especially from from Katie and trying to get everyone onto his same page of thinking about the game and on the, the way he likes to call and the things he likes to do. There's probably a lot of conflict between, I would imagine, him, Zeus, uh, Yakinder, obviously, Twist as well, probably bring some ideas. So I think it's taken longer for them to uh, to kind of coalesce all these ideas into one identity that they can actually play with. And I think I think maybe one of the nice things about this liquid roster is all of them have been pretty open yeah. and, and you know self admitting that they're they're having more issues than anyone would have expected so um yeah i think there's a, there's a world in which you can be very disappointed in what liquid has brought out in, into the servers over these past few events um and also kind of optimistic that this lineup has the experience to kind of turn the ship around uh, just unfortunate that they won't get the major to be able to help do that at all um but yeah, a weird place. I mean, it does, it does feel like the friendship and the, the things outside the server has really fallen into place, like from the documentaries and also seeing some of the land footage. It looks like they're having a, a great time together, but it's just some of the players is not playing up to the level. We spoke about Exile yesterday. What a downfall he's had, right? He's maybe on an upward yeah. trend again, but now we talk about a guy like Yekindar. He was destined to be what kind of dunk is, obviously not to the same extent, but Yekindar was so good in Virtus Pro. But ever since he's been that IGL role for Liquid, it's just been mediocre at best that the conversion to igl is a tough thing to pull off and obviously you don't always come back from it at the same level uh let's let's go to the opposite side of the spectrum the opposite side of the coin with saw because they too had a a wonderful qualification for the copenhagen major um and obviously you got to feel for guys like muterus guys like roman who have just been around working at it trying banging their head against the wall and finally this time the first one in cs2 they accomplished their dream they accomplished their goal and they've qualified so a feel-good story uh for saw out of the feel-bad story yeah, and it's so incredible because of roman and 
and Maturis. Like I remember coming through that scene in 2016, and these guys I met them so many times at like different lands, and this was like not the, the ESL Cologne. It was like the Dream Hacks back then, um, Dream Hack Open, I think they yep. were called. And these guys were not a, a top team at all, and we weren't either for that matter. But we got the first land experience back then with the with the real circuit, right? And now all of a sudden, a guy with so many years of experience get his his dream. I really, yeah, I just have the biggest respect for for Mutiris and Roman keeping that Portuguese scene alive. Like they could easily have probably called it quits a couple of years ago, but they stick to it. Yeah, and I think two guys you're going to want to keep your eye on after when we come out of the break and get this game live. Ujerks and Eridoche had a wonderful RMR, and they were hitting hard. They were shooting headshots. We're off to a break. When we come back, it's Liquid taking on Saw, and it's Harry and Hugo from a little room out in England somewhere, south of England, middle of nowhere, whatever. They're going to be bringing you the action for Liquid Saw. Stay tuned. And in terms of doing your best, you got to face off against Saw in the first game. Now, they did pretty well at the European RMR qualifying through, so we, we doubt it'll be an easy game, but how was your preparation like? Have you even had much time to get anything done? What are we realistically looking at? Um, our, um, our um, secondary coach, Jay, has has prepared some, some files for us that we can look at, so there's definitely some material out there available for us that we've been looking through. Uh, but uh, a kind of full breakdown and, and the way we would maybe normally do things there's not been time for. Um, but yeah, Saul has definitely been on the uprise. I think it's it's great for the Portuguese scene that they finally made the major after the 0, .0 yeah. something uh, a heartbreak uh, against um, James uh, and Inferno with the Dodo. Uh, so yeah, great for them to, to make it. But um, again, it, it's a team I practiced against plenty of times in, in EU and mm -hmm. yeah, I, I still think we should uh, have the upper hand, even though they of course have way more momentum than we have right now.
And in terms of that, you said you still think you should have the upper hand. Do you still consider yourself with Liquid, the players you have, as one of the favorites? Mm, I definitely think that uh, Cloud9 and uh, Heroic um, has a stronger hand than than we do right now. Um, but then again, it's uh, we're sitting at home. Just, you know, the vibe's a bit different than, than LAN and stuff. And uh, I think, you know, everything is possible. Um, I think, again, it's, it's hard to judge our, our full level. Of course, we want to beat yeah. be teams like Fury and Complexity, but uh, this time it was not meant to be. And yeah, we'll, we'll have to do better uh, in this one. Oh, hell yeah. We love hearing a little bit from KD. And I think he's uh, doing a fantastic job of at least keeping it very real yeah. because Liquid, they are facing uh, some some big issues, some big heartbreak. And after a fall down at the RMR, I mean, we all saw it, right? We all saw that complexity game. We know that things are not cushy for, for Liquid right now. But do you want some Liquid Coat? Okay, I can give you a little bit of Liquid right. Coat. There's I'm gonna always be some, down for there's Liquid There's some Liquid fans out here today. Let's we'll give some it. Liquid Coat. To me, it's not, it's not about the games that Liquid lost. It's not like they've come through and they've lost a some huge underdogs and they've been falling to no namers no it's 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 you know it's about the mental side what okay. happens now that they have lost right how do they build themselves back up is it a fire lit underneath them or is it players questioning the roster questioning the system questioning the captain it all depends how liquid react to this moment to me it's not like liquid have lost some insane games that they shouldn't be losing on paper right a couple of upsets over in the north american region but when we saw them back up blast groups on LAN at the start of the year the only teams they lost to were FaZe and were G2. Those were respectable losses in my opinion. Still, it's not going to be an easy game. They're favorites on the GG bet odds, but Saw have certainly impressed us this year, Harry. Yeah, they, they really have. I mean, you know, their, their run at the RMI, it's, it's really like a, a tale of two very different situations for these squads. Uh, Saw's run through the RMI was stellar, right? They fall down 0-2 in the BO1s, yeah. but then when we get to the BO3s, they grind through 3-2 without even dropping a map. So talk about redemption. For, uh, for a gang that were upset, as Katie and even mentioned yeah. in that interview by James, Everyone all the way back, that. and I took one of the most heartbreaking games you've ever seen. And let's see if this one can fit that same bill. Yeah. Liquid said they need more lands in their future, so let's see if they can send themselves to London here. They're gonna need a win to open this up again. Just such a difficult game, considering the mental aspect of both these teams. Saw so on the up and up, Liquid downtrodden in the dirt. We've got Skulls pushing Hut. The Julies are out and they're gone in the blink of an eye. Explosion into Upper for Saw and the flank denied as well. That might just be a pistol for the Portuguese. Yeah, this this has got a done deal written all over it, man. What do you do here? Twist is like contending that he still believes in this round, but he does not, surely. Yeah, he don't. <laughs> I'll see you now as well. They could throw themselves in, but there's no kit, so five players. Aiden's going to flash them out okay. through the heavens. One flash and a dream. Late retake here. Last second retake. Flash will only find one player. Everyone else was anti. It's one out of nap life. And now RS Doss plays his hand. He's going to get away with one. And that there uh, goes the way that we thought it would. Yeah. Nice, uh, nice upper hit for Saw. Coming through confidently on their map pick with the play. Liquid went for Inferno. A lot of teams, uh, you know, playing Inferno, the NA RMR as well. We saw that. Furia for Liquid for Complexity come through. So it's surprising the, the least picked map starting the year back in Katowice was barely even a factor. Um, so interesting to see Liquid try and make it a mainstay of their roster. And that's a thing. That's always been a thing for Liquid. When you look at the players on this team, you have high expectations. You think you're Kinder in Banana on Inferno? Well, that's beautiful. I remember VP. This ain't VP no more. He's had trouble. Liquid have had trouble. I don't need to tell you that, but I will. Saw comes through with a fall by looking to upset yet again. We've already had a huge favorite removed from the showdown just yesterday. Metasport dropping Falcons. Will there be more heads to fall? Nat finds a double on ramp. Great position. Getting two out of it. But unfortunately for Liquid, there's no rotations towards hell. There's no one to stop this play. They could drop B into Cadian. Saw so pull back though. Yeah to the lobby and they catch more aggression however one for ones at this point of the round is leaving them in an uncomfortable spot kdm might have the round winning position here yeah he's in a very good place is kdm forward bit of info as well the moment noise is made down here towards b mater is you know he can kind of remain hidden if it's roman taking the contact but 
you know, you don't imagine that Roman is ready for this. These no. doors are all closed down at low. kadian has been down here a very long while, and so that one nice. comes for free. And now they learn that this bomb was moving down towards the B site. These rotates should start shuffling down, and Kadian like a bandit, man. Look at him go. He's out of the nice. sight. Mutir is, is chasing a ghost that no longer exists here. Get the Waluigi board out, man. Wow. He's got to start communicating with otherworldly spirits in a quick turnaround, but he can't find the man at ramp. And so Materas, I think oh, he knows this one is over. Weird. This one is done at Liquid with a reply on the force by. That's great. Just great move from Kadian to, I've never seen a player sit behind the silo off of spawn. He broke the window and goes there instantly. And that's why Nap is committed. He knows he's going to die in this position, but getting two kills is unbelievable considering he's alone with an MP9 and Kadian just gets that one crucial kill. What an awkward bomb drop spot as well there was no way for materials back into that round and so saw have to field a force back as liquid get involved early in this game it's all ct new all about just you know considering every option getting the mollies in early on top site trying to get as much information outside when these smoke walls come down kadian will play aggressive Pistols here, clearing the corners. Nice. nice shot, but he's down to just point of health. Six left, he'll have to get out. Oh, now Flight, you are committed to this fight. And he's only going to get out with one. It's a lick of damage as well, downrange on the second player, but Bomb makes it down towards lower. Uh, he's left here all alone. Skulls doesn't swing it. Uh, Sora thankful for that. Allowed to get themselves teed up in a three-on-three three post plant here. Bit of damage from Roman, but he's brought down low. Yakindar catches him, and now Twists moves in up through the control room. That window's already broken, so he's allowed to sneak on into the fray, and Aristos is cut down. It's all left onto Mutiras, and this one is a done deal. Again, Mutiras cannot offer up anything in this clutch with the sight taken. His best option is to get the hell out of there, but he only saves onto the MP9. Feels like a wasted opportunity for Saw. I don't know why Roman goes diving through the window. Sure, Dark is taken, so there's not many positions available in post plant, but even just staying ramp and, and drawing attention would have allowed time for that flank to come through. They had a second player, a third player rather, in secret, walking behind. Him dying by jumping through window just opens up a really quick play uh, for Liquid, and they come through with a retake before that flank is even a factor. Sure, he wasn't ready for the ramp flank. He thought he had room. Yakinda was playing his own delayed game. But still, that is a, a bit of a wasted opportunity for Saw. Still a bomb plant, some damage. It can tempt fate here in the next round. We've got a bit of a tech first, though. Seems yeah, I like... noticed the cams have gone off for uh, yeah, Kadian and Naf, right. so something's gone wrong. That's all well and good. Yeah, you know, this is this is nice for Liquid to have kind of bought a bit of heat early on here. I think this is a team that's in need of a bit of a pick-me-up, right? And yeah. so you, at least I, find myself cautiously optimistic for them. It's, it's really hard. But also, hard, you it? already showed, like, the mental yeah. gymnastics to be a Liquid fan. Yeah, true, like, true. Oh, maybe they're, they're like, what's the performance of the RMR? That's going to ignite the fires underneath them. I and think it's, gonna, it's, and you're going to play the best they've ever no, played before. That's absolutely not what I said. I think it's more just... <laughs> It's Sometimes easy. you got to lose to really win, you know what no, I mean? No, no, <laughs> I love it, but no. It's more just... The material really... is the vibe. Yeah, I like is. this, like, hoodie over the over the chair. Don't know why I said I don't it know like why that. I said it like uh, that. Yeah. It's it more... Just felt right. The liquid coat, let me just keep coping. It's yeah. more just like... Man, they haven't had these crazy upsets. They haven't lost <laughs> awful games. It's just the fashion in which they lose them, right? Like losing to complexity yeah. in a in a you know two one elimination game Hot take. for the major. Losing is bad. Losing is bad, but you know, Liquid only lose to good teams. Okay, yeah. But so are so a good team. There, so it, yeah, so there we go. It's kind of a tricky one to navigate. Also, you know, we have the hoodie over the chair for materials. You have the I've actually seen Twist wear this a fair lot. Like that, this okay. is kind of his yeah. I don't know what vibe it is. It almost gives like an, an I am legend, like end of the world. Yeah, I was thinking like farmer vibe. Yeah. But like, comp that's a good thing, you know, like cool like, farmer. You could, you could see twists over like the roaming the, the desolate wasteland, right? Wearing that coat and he's and he's growing out all his facial hair and he's roaming around and, and he's like, you, you gotta come with me back to Canada. That's where we'll be safe. 
and yeah. that's how Canadians that's sound. That's a South Park Canadian accent. Yeah. That's how that is. Uh, What's better though, the hoodie or the big fur? The hoodie is big, big fur coat, that is, the big not like the player. Oh, nice. The, the big him. fur coat is nice, but the hoodie's being used. You know, yeah. so it's over the shoulders. Yeah. It's, it's there for warmth, Harry. Although Portugal, pretty nice place to be right now, I think. Pretty warm place to be. I do like getting a little look at, like, what's that behind Scott? Is that a bin? I think that's a bin. <laughs> Your, why? I don't know, man. I'm wow, just, it's I'm, a bin. I'm trying wow. to take it all the scenery, you know? Like, yeah. there's little um, kind of subtle context cues we're in the background. These, we're getting these looks into people's homes. Exactly. We're getting a look lives. into people's lives. Who does make this their bed? This is world building. That's the question. Who does make their bed? Aristos is a pretty sick looking room, I'll be honest. Is that a. Look, 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 look at that. It's nice. It's clean. It's kind of minimal. Minimalist. Yeah. You like that, Hugo. I you like must. That. Yeah, it kind of yeah. gives off like kind a, of like um like straight a straight jacket vibe, like a know, swanky just... hospital sort of vibe. Yeah, yeah, that's how I like my rooms. Nothing on the walls, just white. Just white and uh, some uh, padding. A mirror that people are standing on the other side <laughs> yeah. of can see me. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're getting back in. Guess what, everyone? The tech issues have subsided. We no longer have to continue with the Harry and Hugo room review. And instead, we're going to get right back in to the nitty gritty. The game is underway. Liquid taking on Saw. Tech issues subside. And if you're just joining us, Saw won the pistol. And Liquid upset with the force fire. They've won every round since. So let's see. They look to keep the good times rolling in. It's just the pistols left to get past here. Let's open up for Skulls, catching an attempt at the dead dive. On every new map we cast, I'm going to pay close attention to the spawns, see what's available. Obviously, we had those spawn changes. Uh, some, I'd say, better than others, just from looking at them. Overpass, CP definitely feels nerfed. We were seeing the Mirage window spawn timings be very quick yesterday on CT side as well. Oh, Molly forces the rush. KD in ramp. Orp hits his. Is the bomb dropped at ramp? This round was never going to happen, though. And Kadian and Yakindar make it so. Shot for their support here, and it's going to be nice and easy. Clean for Liquid. Three and one. And Saw's map pick, as I said, to start this off on Nuke. Let's see what their first full gun round is going to look like. Won the response now out of Saw, right? You kind of, you've gone through the muck and the mud here in these first few rounds after falling down against the force. Trying to reply, and they certainly had chances along the way, right? We all remember that kind of 3v3 bomb plant down towards lower that just didn't pan out. But this, this is the, the real meat and potatoes of it. If you're so inclined to eat that. Potatoes aren't optional. Potatoes aren't, no. The meat is skulls. The meat man. What can he do? Brazilian oh, barbecue fray here, man. Look at him go, spraying through the smoke, trying to trim the fat of this topside exec. But he's only going to get out with one on the ladder. Cadian's being cheeky. Love it. But nothing connects. Meanwhile, Nafly, a bit of a response to oh, this aggression dear. out towards the top site. He's pushed through the ramp, and that's a freebie. Bit of a head scratcher. Roman doesn't even consider it. Oh, your kinder. Looked like he had the position, but Story catches his head through the smoke. That's twice now Roman has just pulled his knife and tried to jump out of position. He's been caught on the flank again. That one even less forgivable, but it may not matter. As Saw have a 3v2, and Kadian had to make that long rotation round. He didn't even go secret to reset. Is Nav trying to ninja this? Well, it's not very secret anymore. Yeah, it's not, you know. But Kadian, Kadian came from Vent to B to ramp to lobby. He's got to care about that bomb. They might exit his way as well. Kadian, be careful, buddy. Nav's faking that he's going to go for this. He will not go for this. And uh, Kadian will die in this position to the bomb. So he's got to run. Misses that timing. He'll be okay. And Saw do lose a player at the end. It's a bit of damage. I actually like the idea for Nav. Throwing in some nades like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going for this. You better stay with the bomb. That new radius is very high. Dude, the nuke radius is super punishing nowadays. I'm, Closing the name, I, I guess. Yeah, you know, I mean, it always made sense, I guess. Yeah, but I don't know. It just it does feel odd. The fact that no, like if you're in the lobby yeah. and you die, damn. It's not about the range; it's about the damage at range. Right? There are positions like you can run as far as you physically can yeah. from B to secret. You'll still die. Yeah. Like we've all been there. Oh, we have. But Source still get out with a smile on their face. A gun round to their name. 
they're going to do some late smokes, it looks like. They're back in spawn for a while now. Tira is getting jump spots outside. Kadian begins B. This is great. He's ahead of the curve. Smoke's raining. It's all a fake out for Materius to get to control. Kadian can clear this if he opts to be daring. Right now, he's just holding position. And because he makes no contact, Liquid hyper aware, vigilant in their bomb sites as the A pop comes in. Yeah. First kill for Skulls, but he's full blind. Good util to nullify these two top site defenders. Twists and Skulls never even see a thing. And this time they're ready for the ramp progression. You cannot. Yep. Nothing from that push through the radio. He's cut down and this will be another save. Liquid, these rounds are starting to feel like deja vu. They get two top site hits in a row. And both of them, they're just kind of relegated to the save immediately left hinging on. Big impact from a flanking through lobby, and when, when that doesn't materialize, it's a done deal. Oh no. Oh dear, that's the orb god. Sick round for Materius because he's the outside player, but he runs through those smokes to split main with the upper hit. So he's not even, you know, selling a fake. The smokes yeah. do that. His position gets the crucial kill onto the backside player. I actually also, you know, I really like that usage of doing the the kind of diagonal smokes outside with the waterfall smoke over in main because once that's come in, they kind of... You know that Liquid aren't going to be staring at that smoke over towards main. Usually, if you're looking to use that, you're trying to take outside space if you want to play through the smokes. If you're, you're looking for that control over towards outside, you might be leaning out towards the garage, leaning out towards heaven, but instead, Materia just goes right through it, as you say, and the attention is all on the door. It's all on the heart. It's freebies for Materia's. Some well-drilled rounds from Saw, as you would expect, right? This is a team that's getting ready for the Major, for crying out loud. Sorry, Liquid fans. They've got a busy, busy calendar, and they've got things to work towards. Story takes out Orp outside and picks your Kinder this time. Careful, sees the flash. Miss shot, though. Story could take a boost. Go back for a little bit more, considering that Kadian could come up from secret yet again. But instead, he's wrapping around the hell side. Naf has at least gotten into position, but he knows with an AWP out here, making a play is uh, very bold. And Naf's a bold guy. But not for long, he'll regroup on the ramp side as they try and aggress. Maybe it was one, but there's more where that came from. Naf like, uh, just gonna get out alive, and there's Twitch to lend a helping hand. You've just fought three players over towards ramp. Now the bomb is away from Saw. Great position for Twists. Damn, they really throwing it all the way back. A is the gap, but with the bomb, uh, bomb down, Saw can't do anything with that position. They're just hunting kills right now, and Liquid are so grouped. There really isn't anything, anything available. I love that call from Cadian. He pulls Naf back to ramp so they can double push. They realize that if Saw have secret, where are they going to split? It's not five players down secret, it's one or two. So they've got to join them. They're probably not going to vent dive with three players. So it's a ramp here. Cadian makes a fantastic read. They double up and they slaughter the ramp hold or the ramp push rather. That's a nice reaction to Liquid. Or for Liquid. Let's so get back on with the fourth. Hey, on the upside, this save. I saw we had someone drop out, but they're already back in because of the saved guns. So you do like to see it. I'm optimistic that this won't be a crazy long tech pause, Hugo. It's fine. We've all done a bit of coping today. But no, I think, you know, for, for Liquid, that represents a, a pretty big moment in this game, right? They kind of finally feel like they get ahead of the, uh, the sore calls thus far. Because they've kind of been playing catch up in, in the majority of these gun rounds. And so finally, Katie feels like he comes through with the, the right read, the right decisions. And if you're sore, you, you know that you just got kind of outread and outpositioned yeah. here, right? Three players. Brian, out loud, you fought three different players on the ramp here. Oh, through the volley, they really take Oh, okay. You feel like this could be a bit of a almost reaction to how that last round went down, right? It's far heavier towards outside. This time, if Liquid were to look for solutions out towards the ramp, they will not find them. 
Kindar drops down lower quickly. Kadian is looking oh. through the smokes, but doesn't see anything. I wonder if he caught a head there. Not enough to take a shot, but either way, you've got to consider the sword could have numerous players down lower. So Yakinda has made that early vent drop. They even needed the door smoke, so he checked for lurkers. He didn't see the player in lobby. I assure you there is one there. Roman ready to activate late. And so they go cold for a little bit, hoping Liquid maybe doubt themselves, but Kinder's playing a nice safe angle. He's going to have a warning, and he can go and play the B bomb site, really dragging this round out. There's the spot. Yakinda's out. And now the pressure is on Saw once again. Yeah, some nice fluid rotates here for Liquid, right? Naf immediately drops down the ramp. He's going to go reinforce this lower side. Kadian takes up his position over towards the ramp side and even flexes it with a bit of a peek in through the lobby. And so he's now kind of building this idea in his mind that he's not seeing anyone there. He should be available to come and help out down towards lower that much faster. Oh. Nafli is overran. Now Yakinda firing off just a second too soon, and they're coming up the vent. Twists suddenly tasked with the defense here, and he's only good for the one. Skulls from heaven. Oh, double kill out of Skulls. One Whoa. man inside of the site, and Skulls is going to nail him. And so now, with three kills to his name, the hero has emerged for Liquid. Oh. It's Skulls as he puts up a stellar defense of that top site. Absolutely sick shooting out of Skulls. Every headshot and every one required on that top Damn. site. I love that call for Saw. That's the worst part, Harry, because it did exactly what it had to do. It drew Skulls out of the bomb site in the first place. He's the anchor. He's gone, and he's still up in heaven with 10 seconds left, dropping that bomb. It had to fight. It couldn't stick after the cover died but that was all that was not a reaction for saw that was the call out of the gate they had a player in main they had mm. roman in door they wanted to go up vent maturis sold that perfectly on lower i like the cooling for saw i like what they're these are these are dry run strats there things they prepped very well they're oh. all in the right positions for it but liquid they got that x factor harry they got yeah. that star power skulls looks great at the rmr as well he was one of the better looking pieces of liquid more consistently well, we know Brazil did pretty well at the RMR. That's the safest shore. And I mean, you know, even the uh, sports psychologist for Liquid singing Skulls' praises, saying he soaked everything up like a sponge yeah. thus far. And grenade. Damn, that's good damage. You like that. Uh -oh. oh, but you might not like this. Oh, now, fly. I can't oh. believe he's re-challenged. He's dropping down. He's got support. So, Yakinda will kind of promptly put a pin in this round. And with Twists already moving over, it's well contained in towards ramp. Liquid are building upon this lead. Sat up 6-3 right now. They brush aside that pistol round. And they're shooting for a, uh, a great first half here at Liquid. Mm. Yeah, I feel like this could have been so much more for Saw. Um, despite that, I've still been impressed at what we've seen positionally. But closing the rounds has been easier said than done. I do wonder that three on three on lower very early in the game, what that could have been if you kind of didn't deny Roman jumping through the window. Pressure put on upper. Oh, that's awkward. Getting spammed through the smoke. Saw they needed that, and they're going to use it. Right down the vent they go. The break of the smoke was good for Naf, or for Skulls, rather, but he was full blind. He couldn't see them. And so Saw make it into lower before Liquid are even here. This was not part of the plan for Liquid. Yeah, this is kind of awkward now. I mean, there's still players back in the lobby, but yeah, you can't even really justify going for this. You don't have a path to rotate through. No. Every every option available to you is just going to take too long if you're liquid. And they know there's still upper players as well, so it's not even the comfort of being able to chase that bomb down oh, B. That's goggles for you, though. At least going to get himself a AK upgrade, get out of there. Mutir is wants to try and remove some of these guns, and he hears them running off into the spawn. Hello. It's not, it's not like the end of the world for Liquid losing guns here. They can still buy up in the next. Gonna take his one. Kind of playing, you know, the... Oh. Where was Kadian? I think he red. was out in the yard at red. red. Yeah. yeah. So there's, bomb, there's the bomb we were talking about. Yeah. Right? The radio, a bit red. of a classic. Um, That's crazy. I think he'd lost some health already. But yeah, I think also from where they rushed to the plant on the vent drop, it was like... 
you know, like the, the deep sight path for the single door. So you can imagine it does more damage to red yeah. from there. So here's a, here's a fun fact. The, the damage fall off isn't like vertical. I, I think even if you're top silo, you die as well. It's like a B plant. Pretty sure that... Hey, that's epic. It's, I'm not, really, it's not really included epic. that. Yeah, it's pretty annoying actually. So silo is not safe, folks. They love these A pressure rounds and they're going to do it again, Harry. Oh, and this time Skulls and Del with them. Hang on a moment, they're down the vent again. See ya. This time dropping through a liquid molly. Nafly's already down here. So he will offer up some resistance for Saw. This gets a little more awkward now. Their forces are split apart. They're going to just try to come straight back up. <laughs> My I god, they live in the vents. They're like Alien from that one film about aliens. Four on four, and the top site taken. Saw Sigourney weave their way back up hey. And the bomb plant might make Li Liquid's decision again for them. They have a 4v4. I'd like to see them have a look. But there's the Util coming in. Last bit gone now. Liquid fights available. They need to take them quickly. Unless it's going to be again another late heaven drop. Are they really conceding once more? Liquid don't like what they see in a 4 on 4. It, it's this or, you know. I, that's the thing. They can sort of buy next anyway. Like, they don't have a lot of loss bonus, I guess. But... They could risk a couple of guns to at least keep the damage up. Regardless, another fantastic rotation for Saw. Terrorist Everyone way. believes in the system. You know, when someone calls guard vent in matchmaking, you don't see them be so decisive. That's four players going down B and coming right back up. Mm. And of course, who could forget about the performance that Ujax is having wow. right now? Putting him on blast. He, yeah, that is where he is. Yeah. For a chance to get to London, Hugo. That's what we fight for. Yeah, to frag, though. 12 ADR, though, you can't deny. He is doing something. He is doing something, Harry, that is correct. Hey, look, man, they're still winning rounds, ain't they? <laughs> sure. Why are you coming for him like this, Hugo? <laughs> right, so here we are. Liquid, they, they saved. Also, they could have everything they need here and now. Ooh. That need the difference maker out in the yard. You can die. Wow. He's getting fights. He's going to spam out with Tiris and with a hop skip and a jump, he's dodged that player up on top of red. Saw still managed to get down. They come straight back outside. Obviously. They are super mobile. <laughs> it's like you see them going one place. It's like a spider right now. Okay. You think you know where it's going, and then okay. suddenly, <laughs> that's the legs. That's the noise they make. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's Saw suddenly repositioning, scuttling around outside, laying eggs. In and if you're liquid, it's like how, how do you even how do you even do this, man? You're paranoid about everything. Yeah, they could be down lower. Yeah, they could also come up the vent into upper. I guess we're just gonna have to play two two. But this is no ballet dance for Liquid. So I'm gonna stick to their guns. Sorry, Hugo. I'm that's fine. It's gonna make a joke from what you said. But nice. The, the, the timing's gone. You keep going, Harry. You're doing great. Well, Comedy is all about timing, and this round is much the same. But they're never gonna spot Saw crossing down towards Secret. Twenty seconds. This is a last second play down in towards B. And this is for a chance to split the half if you're sore. But Liquid are set up to deal with this. Aros Doss, it's the one kill from him, but he shouldn't be ready for Skulls. Yeah. It's that second man, and with the bomb getting away from them, this one is a Liquid half, one out, 7-5. Score on the door at the end of this first half. They managed to get ahead of this very scuttly, very uh, freewheeling saw T side and they'll win out that first half of play.
Good first half from Liquid as they sit up in the lead. Saw played a very interesting tee side, and it feels like it could have been that much sweeter, right? I think, really, if you look at Liquid, they were bailed out a few times by a couple of key individuals yeah. there. And I think it goes without saying, Skulls was a huge part of that. If it wasn't for him repelling that, that kind of fast top sight exit in the uh, in the middle of this first half, I think this could have been a very different scoreline with a very different looking Liquid. Saw would have been sat up in the lead, but thankfully, Liquid maneuver their piece as well. They get ahead of some of these problems they were facing earlier on, whether that was the top side hits or the kind of high maneuverability of Saw's T side. And they managed to get out 7 5 on the first half. Now they swap over to their T side, and it's something a little more standard early on. Naflai, great opener. Story is a dead man. And they make it down secret, but these players were seen crossing. Saw at least tap the info. He's up close in the hallway, putting them in the bin. A couple of kills. But Naf does respond. This PT50 dropped by the captain has been put to good use. Two kills, and they're running over B right now. They've got to retrieve that bomb. Inside of the vent sits Roman with Materius by his side. The old heads of Saw been around for four years in this organization. And they've got to try and win this round together. Side by side, Skulls finds the headshot, and they come running. They do Saw's own game against them up the vent. Did they forget are. the bomb? They did. They did forget the bomb, but it's okay because Materius is gambling B. He's realizing now. They've, they've done the Saw, but one step better. It's up the vent, down the vent, up the vent again. The seesaw, Harry. Yeah. And have you seen Saw? On the seesaw. By the seashore. Sure. It will just be a save for Materius. And I do love, you know, you were touching on how long him and Roman have been here. Legends. Of course, you know, Years spent together, and it didn't stop Mutiris just abandoning Roman there in the event. <laughs> so I think, in a way, we've all learned a little something from that exchange. Yeah, that's a very good point, Harry. Liquid with a pistol round, though. That's pretty sick. Suddenly, suddenly, they're, they're in with a real shot here. Oh. Can they get off to a good start on the T side? Now, if you remember, right, they were able to find success in the first half of the pistol, but then instantly got kind of, uh, oh no, it was the other way around. Saw won the pistol, but then Liquid picked it up with the force fight. So yes. now we have to see if Saw can do the same thing. Well, they're CT side. It's a bit of a, a, no. <laughs> a mouthful, Harry. <laughs> There's a lot of C and soaring and CT soaring and shining of modesty and whatnot. Oh, you got to shine him. Everyone would know a thing or two about that. We've got, uh, yeah. A, a big decision to make because you don't have a lot of breathing room. They will force. I actually respect it. You know, Saw have come to with some cool ideas in this game. Not all of them have worked, but they want to try and get back on the board early. Um, pistol flash. To me, well, to anyone, Skulls has been the carry this game. He has had some phenomenal rounds. That pistol included. Naf by his side with a couple there. These two have been very annoying for Saw. Yeah, uh, you know, I think if, I, I feel kind of bad for Twist. He's having one of these games where I don't, you know, he's not. Not like he's making any glaring errors, but I feel like he's been the one on the on the rough end of a lot of these like top sight hits. True. Often fared a lot better for skulls in those yeah. moments, right? Like is the round where Twist just gets smoke spam trying to cross down the vent. He's had a rough go at it. On the other side of things, you know, the Ujax 0 and 11, it didn't Ooh. feel super impactful when Saw were finding success in spite of it, but it's like now, now you need him. You can't win this 4v5. Damn. Uterus is pre rotated B. The bomb is here, but even with a second from ramp, uh, you're going to need some crispy headshots with that 5 7. And if he picks to sit behind the blue box, that single door will be his demise. Yakinda is ready to pop. 40 seconds. They're all getting their pieces together. Surrounding is Yakinda. Is everyone okay? No, no one's okay. I don't think damage was done. I think that's fine. <laughs> It was 30 seconds and everyone was That's lower. That's insane. And then the round just 30 ends. seconds left, no damage <laughs> done into the tech pause. Could, could have gone worse, honestly. Could have gone worse for everyone involved. We'll take Kenyon's that. has got a bit of a red neck. I wonder if that sunburn. Or, yeah, he was in Mexico. It could very well be. And, you know, you got you to really think, you know, would that affect your gameplay? Probably not, unless it's a really bad sunburn, Harry. Let's put it to the test. I'm going to leave you in a UV tanning bed yeah. overnight. Lock it. <laughs> I'm going to put a weight on top of I'm it. Not, I'm not very good at sleeping in the light, though. That's the issue. No, no one is, no. you know? So it's the ultimate test. Look at that. Either right, bro, leave him alone. Either he's had a little slap up the back of the head, or... I'm about to give you a little slap up well, the back of the head, Well, hang on a second, Harry. Harry. Well, because, you know, no one else is sunburned, so either they were all wearing sunscreen. <laughs> it's like ice cream, but for your skin. 
and for the sun. I mean, ice cream's for the sun too. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was a weird round, though. But on the bright side, it's like they didn't. Well, hit you know, me, it wasn't so... a real round, mate. So yeah. we can forget about it. True, but it's not like Saw actually ever saw <laughs> what was going on, right? Bloody hell, man! You need to get get the thesaurus out, Hugo. Thesaurus. Get the yeah. It's my favorite dinosaur, the thesaurus. <laughs> get it out and learn a new word for having seen things. So I never observed them yes. going down low. There you go. There was no vision of the opponents there in that go. round. But I've they got a vision for you. Befuddled by the lower play, you could yes, say. Yes, yes, indubitably. We'll buy up again. So running it back. Did Liquid do the same yard smokes? That would be very dangerous. Yeah, let's get our eyes on what's planned in this round. Yeah. Hey, Outside quite. smokes go in. Well, and it might it. just be the same thing again. Here they are crossing out of the yard. Story, trying to hand out some haircuts, open up a barbershop, call it his story. Oh, and that fly caught crossing. There is the Deagle, ringing out with one. Indeed. Roman has a nice position here. Tucked in a single. You can, uh, with no one to trade him right now, and 5-7 up close, we'll just chew through your face. A little upgrade. This is not the last round. This is a different round. And this is going very, very badly for Liquid. A force buy in a five on three. They're gonna try to split up, but there's no one here. There's no kit. But Kadian has a bomb in the garage. Run! He's gonna make it across. Phew. Into the top site, top site secure, and holding onto the heavens is Skulls with this Mac 10. Molly goes in, and that's going to deny a peek to Saw. This is a hard round. We're in this five on three in the retake. Oh. Still a little bit of util for Liquid to play around. Smoke out over at main. That will at least slow this retake down. As players get contact out through the heavens, everyone else is going to start moving. Everyone else is going to start mobilizing, and they collapse down upon Liquid. Liquid is sent packing, and so the replay of that round does not go their favor. No. Saw pick it up on the force by. Liquid kicking themselves because if they actually just ran back the same previous round, they probably would have won it. But there, there is that mental aspect of like, you know, even though Saw didn't see us down lower. Sorry, Harry. Uh, <laughs> it, the, the play was kind of obvious last round. They had two players there, but still Liquid. It felt like positionally already. Instead, it's Yekinda walking into a pistol. And Saw did play like it was the last round. Double lower. So that, that Liquid kicking themselves definitely after that one. But a bomb plant at least in what was a three on five. And yeah, just Kaden shaking his head. A bit annoying to lose that. He felt so ready to run Wait. over this T side. New York's got a kill. Wait. When did that happen? Let's uh, go. Last round. He he's came through in, the main smoke. Yes, he's on the board. And so now it might be over. Here's a chance to oh. pad these stats even more. Oh, nearly man. a kill. So nearly a kill. Good day. Util can do it. Util can do it. Yes. There's another. Oh. Let's go, buddy. Three kills deep. He's just 400% in his scoreline in one round. Any more from the guy? Any more? Come on, man. Don't stop there. <laughs> this might be it for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they are coming up again. They're terrified. He's waiting down at lower. He's being responsible. Fair play. But will he get rewarded for his patience? Over towards hell. Mutiris is spotted on a jiggle. They want to go and approach him. And if you see this man, do not approach him. Mutiris does damage, and here's Arostos. Sweet rice from the heavens. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Flash of the year, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. Oh, and imagine. it nearly gives Skulls a chance. Imagine. But who jokes? <laughs> Making money moves in that round there. Everyone's smiling. Everyone's having a good time. It was a good one. We're yeah. smiling. They're smiling. Honestly, if, I look at, if, if I'm liquid, I'm not going ramp because every time you've gone ramp, you jokes is triple killed. So it's true. That is terrifying. It's, it is accurate. Statistics can be manipulated. But now Liquid come in with a buy. They planted in the B uh, in the upper round, but they saved for this. Still lacking some nades, but we've got the guns. Kinder outside smokes for the cross, and no one here to stop him. Uturis doesn't even have an HE. Ujix could nade it. He's got a good arm. Lob it. 
the cross is safe for your kinder. And no one lower either. Ramp hit coming in. Oh, Second damn. player in time, but they're ahead of that smoke. Oh, it hit him. They know. Oh, that's a disaster for Liquid. They didn't get the kill. They didn't get our ramp. They never saw you jerks. Back to the drawing board. Your kinder might have to start taking space now. They give all the util to Cadian. Oh, is it an upper hit? Gonna go roof and lob in a molly, lob in a couple of flashes. Is Yukinda gonna fake or is he gonna be a vent man? Maybe maybe it's the upper hit into, into the vent Yukinda, No, you kinda going up, up ramp. Up ramp. I don't know. Let's see. Through the skylights, around the world, out connector like a speed demon. Options are plentiful. Naf is still waiting ramp side, so I, I wonder if Liquid want to fake this out. It's not a lot of util just to hit upper. Or misses his shot. Here comes the nades. Yeah, they're going to rain in now, but doesn't force a reposition out of anyone for store. The spam connects, but only for a moment, and it's story rewarded over the edge of that smoke. Smoke blows. Going to try and get out. Oh, God, Roman right here and ready to go. He sees him on the edge of the smoke, but he can't quite find it. It's all story right now on this AWP. And with five seconds, Kadian just doesn't have time, doesn't have the chances. And Ujokes is going to go on to finish the round. I don't really know what the call was. No. I'm not really sure what the intent was. They they went, they, they threw a really bad vent smoke, and then they didn't go down vent, and then they went through the smoke and fought main. I'm not really sure what that was for Liquid. Like... I don't think I've ever seen anyone pass it. They mollied half the top of us, so that's pretty big. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, yeah, that's confusing. Where, where did your kinder get up to? I think he came up the vent he into the smoke. The so maybe that's the idea behind the close vent smoke. But I'm reaching. Yeah, I think we're all reaching a little bit. That was a very ugly round for Liquid. And Saw just didn't really move. Patient play from them. Hold their sights. Even Kadian scratching his head. He's like, yeah. what What the hell just happened there? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I was kind of, I think I was expecting something a little more convoluted, you know? Sometimes it's better to keep it basic, but that, that one didn't look good. No, oh, Kadian's giving a rousing speech. Not to be confused with an arousing speech. Oh, what is that? Those mean? are two different speeches, my friend. One puts the hairs up on the back of your neck, and well, eco round for liquid. It's stopped early. Silo swing, and that's an ugly spray, but recovered for a kill. And they can't really get the gun with a player in main. See ya. Kadian hop, skip, and a jump down lower yet again. They could get this control, and Saw haven't really minded. They could have never ended B. Holding hut with Julie's and the bomb. An apt observation there, Hugo. Thank you. Yeah, it all slows down for Liquid here and now. Kadian's making it around the world. But when you go around the world, you've got to be prepared for some turbulence. And it might be coming up here. He does find a bit of the timing. Ooh, hang on. Did he see? That was kind of a half jiggle. I feel like he I feel like he saw something. Cadian saw him, but I don't know if he got spotted. They're gonna come in from oh, yes. oh. There we go. Just stocks through the roof right yeah. now on this guy. Picked him up for pennies on the dollar at the start of this round. Or the start of this game, rather. Pink sheets. And he's really started to, to find his footing at a, at a pivotal moment as well, yeah, right? His, his you know score going up coincides perfectly with Saw starting to win rounds, right? He's been able to lock down ramp in a lot of these. He's been pretty mobile. Feels like his confidence back a bit. And uh, and now we're seeing Saw leapfrog up into the lead. So this is a nice recovery arc for Ujax. Yeah, I don't want to, you know... I probably shouldn't keep talking about it, but damn, that tech issue really did suck the wind out of Liquid, right? Like, it seemed like they were about to convert their pistol, and now they've had nothing since the pistol. Right, this is a crucial gun round for Liquid. Store have had the answers every single time. Yakinda gets down secret yet again, but it's layered. Kadian and Naf are late to the yard. So they're looking for fight ticking that might come back up later. I'm, I'm forgotten again that plenty of time here for Liquid. Ramp contact for Twists and Skulls. 
You jerks here ready to drop off if needed. There's that deep still, outside take. Still holding on to a Molotov as well. That's nice. The fact that he's still got that in his back pocket. Ooh. And he's getting the leave ramp. This is so starting to take the lobby away. They could find the bomb right now. Oh, the bomb is here alone. Oh, and they don't know about Roman. Roman, come on. Yes, oh. there it is. The bomb gets away from Liquid. They were poised to split oh, down towards no. this lower what? site. Ujax can't convert the kill, but the bomb's still lost back in lobby. That's a problem. Twist has got it. It fell a little deeper. Cadian, in his dying breaths, threw that bomb across to Liquid. And so they will manage this ramp play. They start to move in down towards lower. Mutiris has been waiting here for a long while. He's being held, though. He can't actually stop this bomb with Yekinder in this position. Yekinder, Mutiris should make this play, but Yekinder... Oh, he's in the bin, rather! He does get the kill. The bomb still makes its way into the ground. Three on three. Retake is on, and the first point of rotation cut off. Naf on a late lurk finds Aradose ahead of the vent. Three on two. Saw have a big decision to make, but it's getting taken away from them. Manhandled in this post plant. That almost looked like it was about to go wrong, but Liquid stay above water for now. Woo! Yeah, right. That's a bit of a nerve wracking round. When they lose the bomb back in lobby, you could just imagine like everything that's been talked about up until that point all goes out the window. Suddenly your priority is getting back, getting it under your control, and then you're you're left kind of down to the wire to try and move in towards lower, but they navigate these murky waters, do liquid. After saw, that one feels like it's a, a missed opportunity, a round that they had in the palm of their hand. You get gifted a bomb drop back in the lobby, and yeah. you, you want to capitalize on that. You want to win those rounds. I mean, you jerks needed that kill. He really needed to win that fight against Skulls, put him onto three health, spraying with the A4. But instead, they have enough manpower to go back and get that bomb and to cover or at least trade the bomb plant. That's enough. Fine. You got the plant. It's not like if Mutiris goes a second earlier and does get still gets that kill and denies the bomb plant, they're never going to feel comfortable enough to plant alone because Naf is in main. Your kid is in vent. Someone needs to move. Like, there were a lot of ways that could go wrong for Liquid. But 9-9, nine, nine, they find their first gun round here. Saw just trying to hold on to this match. Showing us some great rounds on the CT side. Yeah, I mean, this round is weighted super heavily in the grand scheme of this game, right? Both teams are kind of all in. There's a bit of extra residual cash floating around on the liquid side of things, but it's still not enough to make you feel comfortable. And if you're sore and you fall short here, and maybe, you know, the, the save is denied in the fashion that Liquid hunted down that last player in the round prior, uh, suddenly you're broke and Liquid are looking to leapfrog you right at the doors, uh, right at the closing of the doors, rather. It's here is back at the garage. Flash doesn't get him off the angle, so he's got a free sight line here out into the yard. It's a good bit of damage. And Arostos wins out another fight in the meantime. Skulls out of the round. And this is the, the two top performers for Liquid dead in the opening stages of this round. Skulls and Nafly both removed. Twists is super low. The AWP is overkill here, if anything. Oh, but does he hear this? No idea right now. Twist is up in the heavens. Bomb is lower. Twist is just holding. This is strange. Is he ho hoping they're going to come save? He can cut down secret rotations. Yeah, they're not looking here. You're definitely hoping they rotate secret, right? The vent drop is super risky. Secret's meant to kind of be a bit of a safe haven for you, but it's only the one kill from Twist. Still, he was very low on health, so getting away with that maybe gives Liquid a bit more of a fighting chance here. It slowed the rotates at least. Bought them a bit more time, but with KD and dead, Yakindar wow. forced out into the open, and a two jerks to find him. It's a saw. They had a lot riding on this round. Their money was on the line, and they're able to pick it up, stealing it away from Liquid. The bomb plant and the loss bonus can be a bit of a saving grace for the Liquid yeah. squad here. Kadian was so dedicated to holding right side ramp for his teammate that he was just oh, he was at the back of Decon. He was open to the vent drop. So Arasdos just gets that free kill here. Look at the shadow. I mean, every warning, every chance for that frag. And Yakindo is just stuck in the middle of the open. That falls apart after Twist dies as Liquid cannot convert the post. Nice retake round for Saw. 
the comms do look very clean. Like the, the timing, not just on this T side, like some of the some of the rounds they make very quick mid round decisions. That everyone assigns to. That's a smoothly done retake. No one goes too soon. Warp is very aggressive in the yard. Liquid have not run into any fight at Red this game. They might go right past it. With those smokes down, this is perfect. The Interiors is ready oh. to receive over in main. It's a nice, easy double kill teed up for him. And even though he's silenced, there's that rotate in through the main oh. side. It's left on Acadium, 1v2. He's low on health. He's got a clutch. They need this round desperately. But look at Story Aggress. And he's knife out, man. He's trying to keep mobile. He needs the speed right now. Because even though he's got a good bit of time to work with, it's slowly getting away from him. Story will go back at least. Doesn't continue this aggression. And so the only thing that Cadian's got going for him is that Saw are very split up here. But other than that, everything is in their favor. He's low on health. And so for Story, it's a clean kill to close. Sigh of relief. You see Cadian in a 1v2 and he, he gets that trade in A and then he just runs away. He wants to drag it out. He wants to mind game. A very capable clutcher, but not in this one. Too low for the job. And Saw on their map pick right now are looking to steal it away from Liquid. Who had a great first half. Seven round CT defense, won a pistol on top of that. But it's all been downhill from then. And Zeus with a final chat before we get into what could be the culmination of Nuke. Great double for Materius. He's had some very, very nice rounds in this game, individually. Had a lot of control on T side, running, you know, often lurks, solo yard, coming in on main splits, doing exactly that to Liquid. Now he's gonna go back to the red, another aggressive angle. I mean, if you're Liquid, you're either hoping for a miracle in this round or you're hoping you can grind it out in OT. That's not a bad way for it to start. Kill found out in the yard. Story, if he'd held off a second later than that shot, he would have been able to catch a player jumping. But now that's ooh, kicked to the wayside. It's fast down through secret. Saw. Oh, this one's a bit more chaotic. They're scrambling around to try set up a defense here, but they will get one erected in time. Rotates even in, down towards low, and a lend a helping hand, and knock down in the door. Ujerks lights them up from up on top of the rafters. And so these pistols, it might have been a promising start, that early 5v4. But it's quickly silenced and liquid, and now in dire straits, with Napfly dead, Skulls falls, and Saw move onto map points. Saw haven't seen a single round like that from Liquid in this game, where they where they rush five players anywhere, they get the kill, they commit. Liquid have been playing super mid-roundy on this T side, and still Saw know to make the perfect call, which is rotate absolutely everyone down lower. They drop three players down ramp to B, and are perfectly set up for that rush. Can't blame Liquid for committing with the opening kill, but Saw make the perfect move at the right time. 12 to nine, and it was only an eco for Liquid. It was all on this, but I can't help but believe that Saw have the ability to close this map. A team in fantastic form right now, who did it with their backs against the wall in the RMR. Yeah, I mean, they're a team that's showing they they can perform under pressure. Yes. Right now, I don't think they're even feeling pressure. No. Everything has gone right. And, you know, you touched on it earlier, but a, a team that's trying to play in form for a major as well. Ooh. So, you're seeing a lot of depth here out of Saw. They've got a lot of ideas, and they're looking to run this one over the line here and now. Ujerks out from the heavens. is on an island. Fed to Yakinda, but Mutira is trying to make a round-saving play as he throws himself up through the vent. No way he goes through. Saw for a knockdown. Oh, yeah, he down the ladder. Oh, God, Skulls. He had the Goomba stomp him. Story dead now. And it's all left on the Materia's last scene over at the door. Are they ready for him to wrap the heavens? Or will he just look? Oh, that AWP, it looks like he does want to go for this. I mean, the money's fine for Saw. But 9 HP. 
He needs a free fight and he's not going to get it. They're honed in on the angle. Skulls locks it in and it's a little awkward over towards the ladder. Skulls has a big laugh at the end of that round. You don't often get to fight a player like that. Thank goodness it was an orb. Yeah. That's all he's thinking. Like, that's a rifle. I'm so dead. But yeah, jumping on heads in heaven to hell. Dancing on graves right now. Skulls has played phenomenally well in this map. Through thick and thin. <laughs> it yeah. looks so crazy from the third person. Their sound denied at the final second. <clears throat> okay. A couple of rush rounds for Liquid. Just throwing everything at them. Sora's still got timeouts left to use. I like the pace from Liquid. I wonder if they'll keep it up, though. The one thing they could get gnarly, right, was when Materials was attempting that 1v2, I said, like, you know, their money is fine. They can still buy up in the next. Where it does get awkward is, like, this next rifle round, That that's it. Like, yeah. if they fall short there, you're, I don't want to say guaranteed OT, because, you know, you can always do it with the pistols. We've certainly seen it before. This is the buy, though. But this is, you know, your your big ticket item to try and get the game over and done with. Oh, they're going to get it. It feels like they just want to group and hit together, try and play trades. They know they, in, you know, they have superior firepower. They have better individuals. They should be able to win these explosive rounds. Oh my God! It happened again. again. Not again. The Kindar. He's just going to creep on by. He wants nothing to do with it. Cadian spam through the smoke. That's it. Awful way to go. Ujux gets a double story. Repeaks, and this might be the end of Liquid on you. Two left. Twist finds a double out of nowhere. The flank is in, but he's got to take that bomb to your kinder. Yeah, Twist is just running. He's got to get down lower. He can't fight these Ram players. And so him and Yakinda trying to cook up a 2v3 here. Let's see if they can do it. Smoke for the oh. bomb plant. Spam connects, but Twist is still alive. Yakinda whittled down and left in this one all alone. It rests solely on his shoulders now. Yakinda, a lot of work oh. to do and not the position to do it from. He's run down and saw close this out at 13-10. Their map pick is now locked in. And, you know, we were, we were talking about it earlier on, but Ujax's recovery arc was crazy. He went from 0 and 11. He finishes that having gone, like, what, 14 and 2 over the remaining next few rounds. That's madness, man. Yeah, so they're going to be feeling good. Liquid, once again, backs against a wall and facing elimination on Inferno here at Showdown.
Map one done and dusted. It's a 13 to 10 victory in the favor of Saw on Nuke over Team Liquid. And I guess, I mean, lockdown defense, Bubski, that was a big part of things. Uh, Liquid never able to get anything going. I on mean, the only side. thing Liquid really got going was uh, the player who's probably been under the most criticism, right? Uh, Skulls, but he's been playing uh, really well on this uh, Nuke, which is why it's even more confusing that Liquid is not able to, to close this one. Yeah, it seemed, I mean, I think I think the big difference is it felt like Saw in the first half on their own T side was able to find a little bit of a weakness, right? They were able to exploit that upper bomb site. Mm. Even with Skulls there and even with Skulls performing well, they were still able to overrun it. They got to play with the vents a little bit up and down between the bomb sites. When you switch sides, uh, Liquid, you know, frequently got Yakinder in towards Secret, got him downstairs a couple of times, but they could never find a way to like meet the two prongs of that attack into any kind of effectiveness. The defense from Saw was, was absolutely spectacular. Yeah, I think this is again. an example of a team who's played together for a long time, maybe don't have the greatest individual players like the, the top 20 players or anything like that, but they know where they stand on the map constantly and they communicate really well, considering uh, NIP, sorry, not NIP, um, Liquid, where we're looking at these roster and we are kind of looking at a guy like Twist and it's you can't, Kinder and it's almost only dependent on them having a good round right now if they're gonna actually win a game. And it's such a confusing part because Kadian coming into this team, I would expect him to be able to lead these guys to a much more successful run. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, regardless of what Kadian does, although, I mean, you, you kind of touched on it, you know, Twist and, and Yakinder and Kadian had had a tough time staying, having consistent impact on, on some of these rounds, which I think is is probably the head-scratching part of this for, for Team Liquid fans, is like this roster should be having a little bit more punch to it, um, and it's and it's just it's just not there at the moment, which is which is kind of crazy. Yeah, and it must also be, be devastating for, for Twist and Kadian. They left well-functioning projects, right, to, to go to this project in, in Team Liquid and, and really built a new story they were used to sitting on the biggest stages playing the grand finals against phase uh, vitality all these sorts of teams and now they're sitting on online qualifiers against so and actually getting their ass beat i mean it's it's a it's a whole novel story and i also think it can be super demotivating and i hope they they had the fundamentals in place because they ca this can be rough well, that, that was kind of one of the questions coming into this as well for Team Liquid was, was the mental side of this competition that they're going into considering they're coming off that rough loss at the RMRs where they failed to qualify. That That's a huge blow to any player, to any organization, to any team. Um, but then also you come into this, you win the pistol round in the second half, you get the tech issue, you know, with 30 seconds left in the second round where it looks like you're poised to win it, got to redo it, and then you lose that as well. And those mental stresses just keep piling up. So now you add one more onto it where they go into the next map of the series and they're already down, you know, one to nothing and, and facing elimination. Inferno's going to be up next. Their map pick didn't look great for them at the RMR. You know, still had their, their fair share of struggles on it, despite liking to pick it. Um, and, and just in a rough place against a Salt team that's playing super well in these past Yeah, games. I understand that. And, and Yekinda, he was once again a topic of discussion, right? He was not really performing. But on, in Inferno, I, I think Prime Yekinda, what I thought about him was that he was so good on that banana roll on the T side. Like, that was where in Virtus Pro, he complimented that roster really well because you had the passiveness of all the other players like who was camping down slope but then all of a sudden you can die would like push down the dial and just go for the initial kills he was really good at that but it feels like he's lost all confidence and i'm not sure if he's actually able to to get back to what he was once because it, it looks like he's a different player right now yeah, even, even even in his time at Liquid, we've seen him kind of single-handedly win Inferno for them a couple of times with how effective he's been in, in Banana as a B player. But uh, you've, you've kind of nailed it, is like that Kindar doesn't seem to exist at the moment with just a, a lack of confidence in his own game. He doesn't seem like he has that same assertiveness to take control of that part of the map. So um, yeah, we'll have we'll have to see. Mm -hmm. for, for Saw, it's a different story because what we saw at the, at the two RMRs between the Europe and Americas, Inferno has played vastly more in the Americas than it was in the European uh, RMR as well. So for Saw coming into this, I mean, they obviously they don't ban it in the first round. But is there any world in which they're like, you know, they don't they don't really probably with all the teams that ban it in Europe, it probably doesn't get a whole lot of love. I wonder if Saw is going to really be prepared for Inferno. I also think there's a difference in, in this category. I think internally, these two teams know they're kind of equal right now, but from an outside perspective, all the pressure is still on, on Liquid, right? And that's a freedom you have as the underdogs of Saw. Um, it's going to continue for that until obviously they push the limits to even further than what we've seen. But um, yeah, I think it's a very 50-50 matchup, surprisingly saying that considering the names on the Liquid side, but they're playing extremely well. So they're finally 
finally found some talents in Portugal, which isn't Fox, and can actually start doing some damage together. Right. And it's interesting to see that it's Roman and Mutiris with this many years of experience who's kind of leading the ship. And then, and then you have guys like Aradoche who had a good nuke performance as well. Ujerks also, I mean, when he started out something like 0-9, I think, in the first half of nuke and got his first kill in the second round of the second half and then ends with 11 frags, so had a little bit of a rebound performance. So, yeah, I think I think you, you kind of uh, have nailed it a little bit. Yeah, here we go. 0-11 on the T side, 13-4 and 4 on the CT side on map one. He had he had a great rebound, um, which which comes down, I think, a lot to uh, the experience of Muterus and Roman helps, but the fact that this is this is a team playing yep. team counter strike where the counterparts in liquid don't really it's have so that nice yet. to see that the portuguese players whoever is leading this team right who took that decision not to reuse the old players because that's kind of the thing in spain and portugal most of the time when we've looked at that scene they just keep reusing the same players over and over again they don't really give the the new talent a chance now they've finally given three players uh, a chance and they've just proven it from the get-go now making the best result we've ever seen from Saul. and it's it's a big future and a big and it gives hope for the future as well for the Portuguese fans. I think that's a, I think that's like a symptom of every scene, right? Like yeah, every scene has that where you have like yeah. your established hierarchy and those guys get the guys at the top who have already proven that they can do it get a lot of chances to kind of bounce back while some of the younger talent I, I mean, how long did it how long how many times did you feel like you were past over Bubski? Mean how many times in the in the Danish scene were you just like, you know what, that's messed up. I should. I feel like it was like that Toy Story scene where I, the Australians almost like, I don't want to play with you anymore, and then there was nobody to pick me up, and everybody grew up. <laughs> um, I, I think I was that guy, but I, considering my circumstance, I think I I had a few chances to to actually go back and and try again. But um, I think the Portuguese guys are not going to be looking for a team in the near future because they have seemed to build something special, really. And, and and I think you, you have it right, you know, the position this team is at uh, still kind of being considered underdogs in a lot of their yep. matchups, you know, they also finally achieved that goal of the of the major. So this is kind of the build up to the Copenhagen major right now. So I imagine they had maybe a week off during, uh, you know, after the RMR and everything now is full focus, all attention, all work is going into preparing for the major. And that includes the spring showdown as well and qualifying for London. Um, so they're playing hot. They're playing solid right now. Inferno is up next. Saw on the verge of eliminating Liquid from yet another event from the spring showdown we'll see if it happens right after the break it's coming back and we got harry and hugo ready to get you through the action
Welcome to the Blast Spring Final. Hell yeah. I'm ready. I'm excited. The stage is set. I'm just going to let that trophy. No! What is that? It all comes down to the next three maps for Counter Strike. All right. Okay. And he can't believe it. Come to UK, you will never understand. That's right, London is calling Hugo, and that's where these teams are trying to end up. But for Liquid, how are we feeling about this, right? Because okay. it felt like for a moment there, they had Nuke in the palm of their hand. Imagine this is their hand, right? Yep. It was right there. Yeah. It was in the palm of it. What happened but then they that? went, whoa, all of a sudden, and, uh, and you know, egg on their face, mate. It, yeah. ends up, it ends up going the way of Saw, doesn't it? It does. Uh, Ujax has a phenomenal recovery, goes, what, 13 and four uh, after his 0 and 11 start. So hell of a turnaround for him individually and now we have our eyes set on inferno but hugo i come to you as the liquid coper ah. um and i ask is there do things look better now they've got a map win streak harry they've got a that's seven good. map that's win good. streak. you're already getting me on side it's all against north american and south american teams and okay well we're in europe now harry we're in that europe true and it's a little bit harder around these parts i'll give you some more cope okay. inferno the least played map in the last three months for Saw, with the exception of their Instaban, which is Mirage. They've got three games logged. So we don't okay. have a lot of data, and it felt like they had a lot of experience on Nuke. They had some really nice dry run XX. They had some cool uh, ideas on their T sides, uh, but the GG bet odds are certainly starting to no, flip in the, the other favor way. of Saw now, because fair to say, Harry, they played phenomenally well. Yes, that's yeah. what I said in the first map. And to be honest, you can't look at Liquid right now and not criticize your kinder. He is seemingly like I, I think Bubsky did a great job on the desk explaining it. like the lack of confidence the lack of aim i think this is not the ukindar that we saw for years absolutely dominate european tier one cs so it's uh it's scary for team liquid you hope ukindar can get back to form but if he can't liquid are in trouble it's skulls having to you know put this team in his backpack and carry them to wins and sometimes even losses skulls the young brazilian on your screen now he was phenomenal back on Nuke and, and Naf had a solid game as well but yeah it's uh everything's under question right now for Liquid and going 0-2 here at this point it wouldn't even surprise me Harry oh dear sorry that's, that's your coat yeah that's my coat that's the rousing speech that you've given me to get excited they, for they, I'd like to think they can win Inferno if they can't win Inferno then they were never going to run through this bracket right there's some yeah. seriously tough teams no, Katie talked take. about it in the interview he said like I don't even think we're better than you know Cloud9 or Heroic right now and and that's a, another issue for Liquid because it's confidence check and they're lacking it Harry yeah they most uh, they most certainly are um, you know I, I <laughs> I want this to go three. I want us to have yeah, a, a bit a more fight, fight at a yeah. liquid. And I hope that, as you kind of highlighted for your Kinda specifically, like, you know, there was, in kind of his heyday, the conversation when he made that decision to leave VP was like, oh, damn, he could join any team right yeah, now he and he would propel them into the stratosphere. Was and, the argument for him on phase? Yeah. And, and you know, we just, this isn't the Akinda that we were all no. excited about, man. This isn't him at all. No. It's, it's... Go on, you can that man. Big smile. I always know him as a very smiley guy. I want to yeah. see him smiling. I want to see him feeling good. Slick the hair back. He's got the blast hoodie on hair. Put his turtleneck on. He always used to look good in a turtleneck. That's true, he did. Did you, Kinder? And so I want that energy. That kind of James Bond energy. Okay. But not 007 in the scoreboard, ideally. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a big ask, I guess. That is right quite now. difficult. He got seven kills last map. He was bottom of the server. Well, I have it on good authority. He was like no lifing it in the warm up, just wrecking fools in sports. So trying to, players. you know, anything to get the confidence back, I guess, at this point. Yeah, you'll need it. I also like the way the, the desk framed this saw project because, well, it's easy to talk about Liquid. They are the big name. They are the talk of the town. They are the, the uh, unfortunately, the biggest disappointment this year, I think, in terms of the CS circuit. At the same time, Saw are the antithesis. They are the opposite right now. This is a team that was 0-2 in the RMR, a team that went 13-1 down to nine pandas, and then they made a clean streak, three 2-0s in a row to qualify to the major. Uh, a, a, a squad, I say a squad, you know, two players of which we saw back at Antwerp have that humiliating loss 
to the outside is now VP. Yeah. Uh, to Yakinda, actually, funnily enough, when he was in that team back in 2022, uh, a millisecond defuse for Jamin, a 1v1, that if they won, would have qualified them to the major. Well, Saw finally made it there. The Iberian pride, the Portuguese players, and the new generation of which as well, seeing players like Story, Ar Ar Aros Dos. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that's so sick is like you do have this mixture of new and old. And I mean, you know, a lot of these guys have been floating around for a hot minute, but yeah. you have those like incumbent players in Roman and Mutiras who have just been a part of this team for what feels like an eternity now. Yeah, four years. And, uh, you know, e even even prior to that, Mutiras was always kind of one of the guys, you know, waving the flag for the region. These were players that were playing on, you know, teams that like kick. Yeah, I always remember. I always remember kick, kick, man. That like, was... They, yeah, these guys were before Go. They've been playing CS for 20 years. At, at, at 50 about years. 50, 100 oh, thousands years. Thousands of years. At a high level as well. They've always been like gatekeepers. They've always been on the edge. Players like Materius, he was on one of those old Kingwin squads with Fox and Rallon, you know? Back when G2 and Kingwin were entering CS. The early days ago feel so long ago now. So they've, they've been around the block. They've been on the edge of success. But to be honest, this is even qualifying to the major, the best run that a full Portuguese team has had. And it's not just one team as well, because the ex-members uh, of, of Saw have gone on into Movistar Koi, and they've yep. also looked really, really good. So I just think it's such a great time for the Iberian scene. And to win this game as well against, yes, a wounded liquid, but still a, you know, still a big roster. Yeah, still a and, big it's, team. and it's really, I don't know. I feel like Sora kind of, cementing themselves as like BO3 merchants. Yeah, and like sure. they, they really are, you know, imagine a world where they where they 2 this and then you just kind of look at their track record and it's just full of all these convincing wins in BO3s. That's really cool, especially, you know, and I hate, it's kind of inevitable with this team. Everything links back into the, obviously that N12 RMR game. Yeah. But, uh, you know, like there, it was the lack of longevity. It was the fact that when that got, you know, taken away from them in the in the long run versus a team that it's very hard to put yeah. games away against they, they couldn't they couldn't handle the pressure right they crumbled under it and it was really sad but the fact that we see them look so good in bo3s nowadays shows that that was like a, a real learning experience for for the guys that were there to to, to witness that and it feels like uh, it's made the team strong in the in the long term yeah and then you throw in you know young players with a lot of firepower New jokes with a great recovery, great mental for Saw right now. And they could be on for a bit of a mental run if they can knock out Liquid here in this single elimination format. The road to London, get on that big red bus. Let's get it then, shall we? It's a little bit of Inferno. This is one that a lot of teams have kind of shied away from, but Liquid have very much embraced it. Yes. And with the pieces they have on the team, again, you would expect that this would be a good map for them. And the results have been solid. This was a map they didn't lose at the NA RMR or the America's RMR. And um, I'm going to say, mate, yeah, the Brazilian <laughs> RMR, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to be honest. Keota. All right, then. Liquid teeing up over towards the apartments. They're looking for a little A pop. Got a molly for skulls and util out for Cadian. Let's use that to smoke off over towards Moto and now the util rains out. Molly into the pit, that falls the story wide. Arastos is run down. Skulls shoots the body just to be sure. Quick little double tap. That's zombie land law right there from Skulls. And that's a convincing A play out of Team Liquid. Yeah. Saw so never even really knew what hit him. No gambling 3B as well. It's Inferno, you're you're going to have to make those risks sometimes and double pit the first bullet connecting to Story's head basically wins Liquid yeah. the round. Hot start for Skulls as well as he kind of solos this pistol round. Yeah, he was He was also the guy with the with the Molotov, right? So not even like he had armor to play with there. Oh, double headshot. But yeah, pieces of this team you'd expect to be good on this map, right? Yakinda was a beast back in VP in this roster, uh, in in this map, in Banana on both halves. And uh, as Bubsky was talking about, the pace changes that he provided, even on CT side, we we saw, if anything, I didn't really like what he was doing CT Inferno at the Americas RMI. He was losing a lot of rounds in smokes, hiding in smokes, getting walked past, getting no kills. But we know he can absolutely take control of that part of the map. Cadian as well in his time in Heroic. This is always a great map for the Heroic boys. 
talking about honor as well, I don't know if you've ever seen this. I always get ads for this like yeah. device that injects chocolate into the into the middle of bananas. I've never seen them. Have you never seen them? No. They're big man. They're they're, they're, they're kinda of taking the world by storm. Where does the chocolate come from? You have to provide the chocolate. You have to melt it. It's just no, like, you know, you buy like, like a piece. Like a chocolate spread of some variety. Oh, okay, sure. And so let's see the spread over towards this B site. Oh. Kindar. Sweet. Cocktail sausage ready to go. Wait. I have it on good authority. I bet like that, like that is spread oh. related. Here we are. Yeah. Kindar, double kill. Yeah, you want to give up on this one? They might even just leave. They might just go, fine, have the B site. We don't want it. Anyway. Someone grab the AK. Someone need, does need to grab that, but they can tear their way through this B bomb site first. Make sure there's no one here starting like that. Okay, do don't let Nap like it too comfortable. Spam him a little just yeah. to freak him out as he goes in. You gotta stay on your toes. The AK gets saved, so. Yeah, good round for Liquid. You can do with a double up banana. Love to see it. Saw had a flash set up. They wanted to re-aggress a car, uh, but you can do was up ahead of the flash. Mac 10s will come hunting. Yeah, trying to build some goodwill here on their hunting from Liquid. They've done the maths and they want that money. My boy's wicked smart. <laughs> but will they get the money? They will not. So there we are. That one just kind of peters out. Um, there's the conversion. They stick the landing on it. Three guns saved on the other side of things. So, you know, if you're sore, you still have a chance to make this one exciting. I wonder what they're going to do with it, Hugo. Gamble. That's the big question. Gamble, you think it's going to be another one of these little gamble stacks? I, I always want to see a little bit of mid aggression, man. You, know? you go all the way down quiet. mid. I don't know why I went so quiet there. When you go down mid, I like that. I like those fights. Yeah, I feel like some... they always get crazy. You've got spawn smokes. Obviously, open skyboxes now. So you can lob some deep smokes down mid, take some control, but. They're quick bringing some pace. They're fighting for mid. Kinder's up at logs already. We have the same setup. Flash B. Oh, they've got to go before the flash. Oh, really God. Blinded. This is a little awkward. That molly has Ooh. divided the top banana take, and the util's already come out they to just... try and get Story back into the uh, the safety net of this B site. Go on, Yekinda. 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 Come on, buddy. I think we all would want his return to form. I don't think. You know, there's always some haters. Saw sure don't. <laughs> yeah, true, true. I can think of five people that don't want him to return to form right and now. Launders might ha be hate maxing him a little bit right now. I mean, fair enough. It is an international team after all. Oh, he's walked in. Hello. What story? Look at that one. Oh dear, his team can't cover him there. They walk below the smoke. So that feels like a bit of a, a miscom for Saw, a miss setup. Look at all that cooked. Look at all these chickens. Nice. Whoa. Whoa, they whoa. Just whoa. Oh my God, that's crazy. I didn't know they did that. I don't think they do. Well, they did just do it. Yeah, I know. Like you're playing. <laughs> Is that a spectator thing? What do you I've mean you don't think they do that? I've you just watched that. it happen, man. I've watched some chickens. All well over here. Don't believe what I see. And so from the chicken to the sweet rice, it all gets taken away over towards the long side. It's a bit cooked here at Archside, Harry. Dinner is served. Liquid chowing down on a 3-0 lead. Liquid in the lead? What could go wrong? Yeah, I'm not sure about that. These smokes plume so large, Harry, that you know, it's even easier now to walk under that smoke and make it to pit or to pool. Liquid, a quick dip. Back up banana. They filled it with spread and they've jump shot Roman. That's despicable from your kinder. He's six and one, Hugo. He's back. He's like one kill away from the same amount that he got in all of Nuke. Yikes. This is good for Team Liquid. Story, AWP. Prime, ready to go. But here they are, right there, and ready to respond. Arostos, gonna get run down in the pit, and he's only good for the first, does what he can, but it's not enough. 
It's here is. Time to come through that smoke, buddy. I was watching. Util out. Good util. Gonna burn twists down low, but it's not quite the kill. At least forces an exchange of util here out towards Moto, oh, but it's Kadian. Ouch. To burn out Mutiris and finish off the last man. Right now, still flawless for Team Liquid. This is much better. This is much better. I don't know why I keep saying things weirdly. No, I'm loving it. I'm I kind of like it. It's like a very energy. chaotic yeah. energy. Yeah. You never know what he's going to say next. And how he's going to say it. Well, Liquid had some the same sort as we can see. That's apparently. crazy. Hang on. That's he like, you see that? What? He like, he like glitches on the... Did he, did he like Yeah, he up? like did like the... the, the oh, you're like floating? <laughs> Like stuttery kind of vibe. Oh, well, I don't. I don't know if it was intentional. I don't think it was. It just. No, if you run against happened, the wall, you know? that happens sometimes. Should probably be patched. No, the game is in a perfect state. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually been so successful. You could probably just pick any five players from the Premier Matchmaking Cl True. queue, and they could probably beat Team Liquid. I think... And any other team, for that matter. Yeah, I think most of my Premier opponents <laughs> would win the Major <laughs> in their current form. Yeah, Just don't check sip. the PC. Big old sip, you can... Uh, you're playing great, my son. He is playing great, Harry. Seven and one. He's got seven kills on Nuke. He's already on the road to redemption. And it's a long road. Oh, nice. Kadian, 5 and 0. Oh. Everything's looking good. This is why we can't. They're so play. back. They're so back. They're why so we back. Don't ignore the fact that Sword don't play this map. Ignore that this is Liquid's pick. Ignore Nuke. It's 4 and 0. Oh. With a man up, pistols, bit of a banana take, but Liquid can molly it. Yeah. Kinda, he's ready. He's ready. I feel like Kinda has one of those devices. What, that fills his banana? Yeah, it fills his banana. What do you banana. think he puts in him? Uh, puts in him peanut butter? No, God, no. Chocolate spread? Chocolate spread. Marmalade, maybe. That would be spicy. Oh, God. Aristos, not ready for them. Already out in mid. And he kidnapped. up. Easy. He pumps that banana full. Delicious. Come on, Story. Do you want to face him as well? Hang on. Do look you the, want it? Look at the sticker. <laughs> Look at the sticker on this PC. He's got a liquid. Yeah. Hang on a second. Story double agent? Question mark? Ooh. This is tense. This might be the most tense round I've ever seen. Oh. Got bad news for you, Skulls. No, Skulls! Dead man. AK retrieved. Story. Any more? Let's see. Can he do it? Holding on. Left trigger help. Spam it. Spam it and pray it. But nothing connects, and your Kindar replies. So he continues to ascend up to the top of the board in a very real way. Just two kills every round of Banana. It's great. Just do that every game. Well, you can't win the Major. Bit late for that. But maybe you can make it to London. I mean, that's the other thing. When we look back... The wound's not even scabbed over yet, man. No, and but, you're just you know, picking at it. If you don't laugh, you'll cry. You know, Liquid... Go on. <laughs> that was it. That was just drawing attention. I mean, their run to Lon London was really hard. If you remember Blast Groups, they they had a... They beat Spirit, albeit without Donk, playing yeah. with a coach, you know. Wounded Spirit. Wounded Spirit. Um, they won another match, but then they lost to phase in the upper bracket game to qualify. Okay, fair enough. And then they went into the play-in and they lost to G2. So it's like they actually had, they had a really difficult run. That's how they got to showdown. Like they were in a very tough group. So yeah, I'm not sure what my point was, but I'd like to see them in London. I think that'd be nice. You want the liquid payroll? Eh, you're always willing to give us the, the lowdown. And why Liquid are just misunderstood. Right, here we are. They've they've actually had a bit of, you know, had to contest for this banana control early. The util held them back for a moment, but that boost over the top was nice. It let them know that Saw weren't fighting for this. Ooh, close. Close indeed. Now your Kindar's gonna try it. I mean, he's had a pretty good track record over here, you could say, at nine and one. Materials is even moving back around. Paranoid about the B play. Looming. And it is looming. 
No nades. Here we go. Kikindar dead early. Picked up by the man up on the boost, and that's going to send Liquid back and away into this story. AWP. No time. 12 seconds. Naf ran down toward the air saving. Yeah. Nice. So they say what you want about Sword. They are very patient. They were showing that on Nuke as well. Mm. They were never jumping the gun. They will find a way until the 20 second mark without even a kill coming through. And obviously Inferno is a lot about that, you know, not over rotating, always having a pit player. And so like the pistol round, they stack triple B off of the banana control for Liquid after a fake execute. Your kinder dies on the entry and Story's still on A side as their double pit side with the AWP. So good patience for Saw, everything they needed to do. And they did it right, five alive. So they have a bit of a balance for later if things go wrong. Can sort build back into the CT side now, starting Triple B. And again, trying to take Banana, but they could have been very keen in this position, smoking the mollies most of the time. He has the bomb, he'll drop it. Oh, good flash. Saves the Sandbags player's life, and Ujax can now swing off of that. Oh, it's a good spray save with a nade as well. Saw absolutely rid Liquid from this position. And you just saw a lot of bodies over towards B, but the window to kind of pick up the pace for the A play is closing. Saw have already bought a third man back over. So this util coming out in top mid kind of takes the pace out of it for Liquid. Close smoke dropped in. Roman. Eyes and wait, seeing if anyone's creeping through that. They blow the smoke open. They see him on the long side now. They look to chase him down. Ooh, nice Nathalie will pick it up. That puts a bit more pressure on these players still inside of the site because Liquid could be wrapping long. They're not. All in, up through short and out through the apartments. A good crossfire here between Pit and the site. Mutiras. They try to deal with him. His hit player can get activated. Arastos is not even needed because Mutiras takes matters into his own hands. And I feel like he's very good in these moments, man, where he's got to offer up a multi-kill and he's kind of left as the, the anchor man. You see him do his best work there. Three big kills. You saw him doing it all across the, some of those rounds on the CT side over towards main where he could just single-handedly shut down the bushes. That uh, second shot is yeah. crazy on an apple. I don't even think he realized he got him. Sick hold for Matiras. Yeah, multi-kill man on this Saw squad. Did great on CT side nuke as well over in A main. Shut out some splits from Liquid, some upper hits. And Liquid coming in early with a timeout as they lose a couple of gun rounds here. And clean gun rounds are that for Saw, who are starting to build bank on the CT side. This is a map that we have not seen them play a lot. Okay, a different lens to look at this through, Hugo, because, yeah. you know, we've been feeling good for Liquid, and I, I'm still feeling pretty good for Liquid. But if they were to lose this on Inferno, kind of their home yeah. map, yeah. you know, what's that mean? Nothing good, Harry. Okay. Nothing good. I, I, you know, I think just the com coming off the back of the RMR, Kadian said 24 hour travel day to get here to immediately play an official against a, such a hungry team that Liquid aren't some like heavy favor over in their current form. Nicely it's, done. It's easy to be doubtful of Liquid right now. And all the jokes aside, you know, as much as I want to see them in London at the same time, if they got eliminated here, it would just give them more time, I think, to, to go back to the drawing board, take yeah. a much needed break and figure out what their identity is going to be. At the same time, they should still be winning these kind of games just yeah, out I mean, of name power. That's what I was going to say. Like, the thing that's always been so surprising is when you look at the names on this squad, it's like, right, it should be, it should be sick. You got Naf and Twists reunited. Naf after some great performances, staying out in NA. Twists, obviously, finding a boatload of success with FaZe. And then Cadian bought over. Just after story. taking Heroic to, to fantastic heights, right? Yeah. So, Story Orb.
Gonna have to do something here. Gonna have to be a pretty big round for the guy. And a missed shot is not the way you wanted this to start. He's now gonna just go through the motions, back off. Can see this site control and with that liquid move in. Oh, they, they want to save, but they're going to get lurked on. The Skulls is coming up archside at the same time, so nothing is guaranteed for Saw in this round except death. Skulls will offer it up and liquid do convert. A nice little B hit. Naf, cheeky boy, will be denied, but it's not a worry here for liquid. Even There's though they are all A, with the bomb. They are all A, Harry. There's one guy with the bomb. They're walking Let's, around. Surely this doesn't come back Just to haunt die. them. Just don't die. Just don't die. Surely this die. doesn't come back to haunt them. Yeah. And now it won't. If he died there, though, I would be a little concerned. Oh, he's dead. Uh, okay. He is dead, okay. but there's no time. Okay. Least oh. stressful liquid round. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Boom. Oh, dear. What a shot missed. Oh, that's ugly. Luckily, they have money. They won back-to-back -back rounds, but that will cost them everything. Good luck for Skulls again. And a nice jump over to set off the AWP. The, you know, story hits that. We're cooking. Liquid back on the board. And this may be the final buy for now if Saw can't convert to this gun round. They've wanted to take car control back a lot, but Liquid are doing a very good job of icing out the top of Banana with a lot of util, like this. Double nade into a molly. The kid is forced forward. There's util everywhere right now. He's got a player trapped to sandbags. They're trying to support him. The corner molly goes into the sandbags. Roman's got to move. He smokes it. This is getting messy. The uh. saw that. He knows it's an orb. Wall banging, Cadian will send it back their way. And Saw are really dying on this hill right now. They're going to come for it. Oh, oh dear, you joke. Spammed out by Cadian's orb. Story's not going to look to do the same. Instead, he's looking for this fight, and Cadian will fall in the process. So they trade blow for blow over in Banana. Kidnar doesn't no. check the sandbags, and so that one's free. And now with Banana Control taken, they rotate this third man back over on the AWP. Story, will he get there in time? Mutirez can't put up a hold for a double. It's just a one. A missed shot from Story's AWP in this 2v2. And he's trying to keep it nimble, trying to keep them guessing. He repositions through the archway, and this is going to give Roman a bit more time on this lurk through the apartments. Saw really want this round. I mean, they've bought it down to the wire, and you don't want Liquid to continue, you know, streaking them together. Nice. Continuing to build on this lead, but you might not have a choice as Roman falls up in the apartment. Story has got to save. And so even though they get the fights they were looking for over at Banana, they are able to win that out. It doesn't convert to a round win for Saw. Yeah, Liquid realized how much... You know, how many resources were getting used to be and even though they hear that rotate roman's still tucked in a sandbag he kind of thinks he has some like flank timing but saw, uh, saw bait him into that kill and as liquid lose all of banana with the kind alone there they're just forced into an a play it goes fantastically see some nice rounds out of twist as well in this game wasn't really a factor back on you it was skulls it was naf but I mean, if, if coming into this team, Twist was a player in best form out of everyone on this roster, right? Obviously, he was on, you know, title taking roster of phase, but he was without a doubt the, the most informed player on Team Liquid when this project got announced. So we, we need him in these games to perform, and he's doing it right now. So we're just trying to hold on right now on CT. But you can see the experience on Inferno prevailing for Liquid at the moment. This round could still be interesting because you've got the story orb to play around. They're going to boost him up over in middle, hoping he can find an early incision into the Liquid ranks. Good nade damage down Banana, and that was the chance. Ooh. Aros Doss with a bit of aggression, backed up by the AWP. They're hesitant to peek and try and trade middle because of that orb. Yeah. And so that kill comes for free. This is a, a nice start to the round for Saw. They almost gambled a rotation, but they're going to keep 3A. They're going to keep the orb in the same position. 
I kind of like that with yeah. how mobile Story's been. Like you're expecting oh. he was going to rotate off, but won't come to matter. Twist has just located him and dealt with him. Takes a leg, but it really doesn't matter. Now he's all ping. There's plenty of players to trade in middle. Arrows Dossa hits the shot, and the flank comes through Boiler at the perfect time. Massive double kill for Materius. Feels like he's always good for a multi, does this guy? Yeah. Now Yakinda, he's had a very strong map, and he's got a big gap. Is there a clutch cooking, Harry? It's all the makings of one, but there's guns over here in mid, right? The 1v3. Oh, they think he went. They B? think he's gone somewhere oh, else. But oh, they find him over at long. Roman keeps his wits about him and won't allow your kinder the room to cook up a clutch there in the one on three. It felt too good to be true, right? When you're your kinder there, you just have so much room. You don't even want to stick the bomb. What if they're swinging me from balcony? They're going to trap me here. He just wants to either find an escape route or find a kill while he has the element of surprise. Great double for Materias. That Saw. could be a bit of a you know disaster for Liquid in the long run here. Right at the end of the half, Saw could have a way back in. Five round CT. Could be nice. Liquid lose this, they're broke. Twists oh. running through all the mollies. No one to take either. He'll have to Mac 10 and just essentially be a trade bot in this round and go in first. It's unfortunate, but plenty of players capable the, of trading here. The thing that's really sad there is like you did all that to try and get top banana, but then the the retake util came out from Saw, and because everyone's low from the util, like you don't want to hang around and fight for that. So they don't even have the real estate that like they traded all that damage for. They're just gonna have to fall back into a bit of an A play here. Rosdos pit side, up on long. Liquid smoke it off though, so this might be the perfect routing into just one player. Story even hits his from the cross. He can flash his teammate up on the balcony. Arrows goes for the swing, but there's the liquid flash that fully blinds him through the smoke. Nath goes one for one. Arrows dropping in. They don't even know about him, and he wins the round on his own. Great supportive utility. The double long setup is there, and Arrows Dos uncleared, unbothered in his lane, moisturized. Yeah, soft skin and a hard round put a stop to from Arastos. Story's up. It's like very solid in this game. Like also an A. And I mean, this is it right now. Liquid are broke, and suddenly what could have been a, a crazy strong T side half suddenly becomes a hell of a lot closer. They're going to try and go with a real pacey round here, but it's into that story orb, and he's quick on the trigger. Skulls is going. He's got no one to help him here. Sirius with a nade over the top. It comes flying in, and Liquid, well, they'll be going out of the window, you feel like, in this round. Naf is somehow in the smoke. He's put two kills. They've got to play the pit. It's saved. Bomb drop. Naf has got oh an orb. My God. He's on for a world beater right now. Two players left. One bullet in the mag. And Naf tries to hunt a kill. Roman on a jiggle and Arrows Dos again saving the day. Four kills from the back of the pit. He does it in back-to-back -back rounds. Saw may have something to say at the end of this half, Harry. Welcome to Map Makeover Madness. We're going to dive into these CSGO maps and turn them into beautiful CS2 editions. It's going to be a mind-blowing transformation, even more mind-blowing than Apex hitting a one-tap. Oh my god, looks really, really old. Yeah, and I really don't like flash. this. Like look, Team Sky. Oh, look at the sun. Oh, it's oh. Really beautiful. Let's leave this shit. Bye. Bye. Oh, oh. magnifique. Oh. My mustache oh. is really? going up. What else is this? It's beautiful. Oh. Ooh, it's really new. I like this one. Yes, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like it as well. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. We take it. We yeah, my mustache is okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, look at this. Oh, it looks dirty here. 
It's oh. look the smell. <sighs> oh, look your fart. Oh, we need to leave. Yeah, let's leave. Yeah, I'm leaving. It's really yeah. dirty. Um, not good. Job. Oh, ho, ho. such a good cleaning Look toilet. Smell it. It smells so good. I could actually live here. Mm. Look at the trash can close to us. Yes, everything it's is perfect. Clean. I like those toilets. Yes, yeah, and we might buy it as well. Yes. Yeah, I'm looking from the same place. Yeah, let's leave. Bye. I'm with Liquid had a real shot at a stellar first half here, but a kind of late game recovery on the cards from Saw has given the boys a fighting chance. It's backboned by some lights out moments from Story on the AWP. And I think goes without saying, Aros Doss and some of these A-side holds, him and Mutira is really putting up numbers as, uh, as this one comes down to the wire a lot more than it felt like it was ever going to at the start of this game. That being said, seven rounds, T-side Inferno, nothing to turn your nose up at. I think Yakinda really enjoyed the new spawns as well. He was up top of Banana almost every single round uh, for free. And Saw started to figure it out at B towards the end of the half by winning the util battle, doing a lot of damage with mollies, retaking top Banana. And that seems to be the play for Liquid in this pistol. Yakinda with contact and a flash ready to go. Everyone's sitting here with the util out. The exception of Cadian, who lies in wait over at dark, but I'm just gonna have to drop that smoke in, try to remove the ability to hit this B site. I mean, they're gonna start to flood on through it, but that's where Naflai and Cadian look to thin the herd. There's a miss smoke over towards the uh, the coffins here. And so that's giving Naflai the angle just to keep on fighting and maintaining a presence over towards this side of the map. Aros Doss can't quite finish off the man over at dark, and so it's a bit of an ugly pistol there. That's uh, literally a smoke miss that cost them the entire round, right? Like, who knows how it would have gone if, if it landed, but Naf gets three kills from Coffin, unbridled by the util, and that's a disaster for Saw. They had to hit that smoke for any chance because there's still KD in the bomb, uh, in the bomb site. Nice shooting for Naf, spamming those USPs. Liquid, get a pistol round. No force up here for Saw. This should be an easy conversion for Liquid. And their home map right now, at least looking comfortable. That's kind of the bare minimum. Damn, twist. It's all right with the aim lock. I see you. MP9s go. Brrr. Now, is a player in pit, obviously. <laughs> I wouldn't be. No one knows how he's here, but he is. <laughs> what the wow. hell? Man, yeah, what if, do you you're, do? if you're liquid and you die to this, you're like... They seem almost aware, but... Oh. oh. Although, I don't even know if no, you, like, register no. that. Yeah. Oh, Cadian's looking now. Oh! oh! Ah! He, tried, he tried he tried to hold shoot? the shot. Yeah. He tried to hold the shot. Wanted to milk that for all he could. No, no. I don't think I've ever even been up here on CS2 Inferno. It looks different. Where are the railings? Anyone can fall off. 
story. I feel like if you were going to go through the hassle to stack the tables, you could have at least stacked them straightly, right? Instead, they're all sideways, man. Damn. The audacity. I don't know, man. They, they don't even have the, the windows lighting up on Inferno. That's true. And that's been the case since Go. Also true. But we can talk about things other than the layout of the map now. As the Glock round draws to a swift end. And even though for a moment it looked like it could have been cool, that this is what I'm talking about. Look at that. I mean, it gets Kinda the job done. To, it gets the job done, sure. But like, you know, have a bit of pride in your work, man. I'll consider it. All right, back up banana. Liquid actually gamble on A. Twist is sending it. We didn't see anything like this for Saw. A deep mid smoke on CT side. And they're not even going to really use it. They're just no, I mean, keeping the pressure on. You're going to see this a lot, right? It's kind of the backbone of a lot of these CT sides just lobbing in this early util down towards the, uh, the base of mid, and that just slows the T side down. They were hoping that that smoke would draw the old mid player to care about middle because Saw have no info from ramp, but Harris does read it very well and just tucks in as Liquid Aggressor Apartments. Kadia throwing some nades, but if they want, they can dive in. And they will. Good read for Saw. They have a gap, they'll take it. Nath will meet them in the site. He comes flying through the smoke, but they find him in the corner. And KD just giving it a go. This is not meant to be for Liquid. Oh, reload. And there's cover. NT. Saw with a nice first gun round. Yeah, you know, I mean, that was brushing aside the, the bonus round attempt from Liquid. But you at least managed to do it in a very clean fashion. That's exactly what's kind of demanded of you. It all starts with this, locking out the apps push. It looks silly, but I, I like the thought behind it with the deep mid smoke, and you have MP9, so you, you know making a play isn't necessarily a bad decision, but it's just very well contained. So annoying, but still going to buy around here. Kadian with Nor, Skulls taking the L. Oh. Oh, so head they have the, the rug? Yeah. No, he hit his head on the roof. Oh, okay. Slid him. Oh! But he also doesn't want to tell them yeah. he's not. So, a random spam is too much info to give away for free. Kadian won't play rotation either. And this might just be an early B exec uh, execute, which would be nice and decisive for Saw. They found one player trapped back a coffin. Do they have the smoke this time? Oh, now oh, he's no. still jiggling it. Yeah, it's good. Tempting right. fate a little there. Smoke yeah. dropped in, but they're already ahead of it. Ujax with the opener. Now starts to wrap fast into the ruins. Oh. A second kill. Not ready for Nafly. But the Molly at least displaces him, and this time the coffin smoke will land. Arostos is lurking in the meantime, but he's going to miss this time in Acadian, who's already made it past into the library. Liquid. Right now, they've got a three on three. They don't know about it. They don't know that there's even odds inside of the site here. Okay. With each second they take, Arastos gets closer, and Nafly goes back to check for this. But he's not long for the world. I and like so how he resets as well. He's got them trapped. Now, if you're liquid, you're left kind of combat saving here. Yeah. Oh, jumping. No one to trade. They'll swing, though. And Skulls is there fighting for his life. He'll lose it. Kadian looks like he's got his orb. That's all Liquid will take into this next gun round. I say gun round. There's nothing behind it. Saw a nice little B explosion. And the Lurker doing his job and not overstepping. It's clean counter-strike right now from Saw. The Kindo surprises him get caught there. We can see Nav's POV. Obviously, he let him play it through on those jiggles. Just unfortunate timing. But Yakinda drops his smoke and immediately thinks he's safe. So, surprising error to see from Yukinda. He had a great start to this game. He was 12 and 5. He's now 13 and 11. Fall from grace. Just the orb. It will go B. To be expected. They should be aware of it. Try nice. set the orb up, and that's a nice way to do it. They bait the shots out of you, Jerks, and that's when Kadian strikes. Oh, they tempted to speed it up and just Ooh. go A quick. Zeus. Zeus and a dream on your Kindar. Okay, scream on. Twist, lying in wait in mid, is caught 
But here we are. Come on. Ah, there it is. Arastos is a dead man. And now you're on to an AK. You might be onto a winner. You kind a bit more damage done. Up in the apartments, not the killing blow, sure, but the numbers are oh, thin, no. and they lose story in the site. Mutiris is hurt from his skirmish with Yakinda. And so it's like lightning there as the Zeus deals with them. Over in the apartments, Mutiris. All that's left to do is die here, surely. Ooh, a little awkward as he drops on in, but a missed shot from Katie and at least gives him room. He's looking for this fight and he will pick it up. Surely not. You can see him. 11 yeah. HP. Don't he's crouch. playing around this smoke. If Skull stands for even a second, he's a dead man. He doesn't have to. There's no reason for him to stand up here. 20 seconds. And Materials has to be the one to make oh. a move. They swing oh. him together. And luckily enough, Nafly is there. Will guarantee the trade. A damn good try from a 11 HP Materials in the 1v3 to get it down to the 1v1. But it's not enough to win the round. And the real heroes there is Liquid, bro. They, they managed to pick that up with just the AWP. A Zeus and a dream. Skulls gets a double with the PC-50. The AWP runs him down. It's a reasonable play for Story. He thinks he's got a, a advantageous fight that he needs to get rid of Skulls quickly. But with no rifle behind him to trade, he dies. Ooh. So does the camera. That's a fall from grace for Saw. That could have been and should have been an easy anti-eco, even despite that five on four fielded by Cadian's orb. My oh my, saw so the final timeout. Pressure's on. And that will reignite some faith for Liquid. Much needed. Really, can I just crack the smile? Wow. It's been a long time coming. And I mean, winning around like that, you're dead on, right? It suddenly just kind of brings you back into the fold in a very meaningful way. You're not going to be gifted rounds like that often. I mean, you weren't gifted it. You had to earn it. Yeah, Mysterious almost pulled out a sick 1v3 at the end. The power of friendship, though. Swing with your buddies. Get that trade. He's in the bowl. <laughs> Util out in the top mid. They've got to get past the KD and AWP. So here it is. Full on explosion. Oh, he's blind. Just about makes it back into the site. And he does have support. Skulls double kill. Ah! Kadian, <laughs> changing, changing, oh, go! God. And maybe Mutiris can be the savior here. Two kills, propels, soar nice. in, but Kadian responds with a vengeance. Not caught sleeping the second time around. He destroys the hopes of this one for Saw. It's all on Arastos. Trying to make a play out through the pit. This motor smoke is fading. The security he provides is gone. And Nafly is there to pick up that kill and lock in the round for Team Liquid, who is swiftly moving towards the finish line now. At least Cadian hit his. You know, it cost him his entire team. It was uh, not ideal having the AWP not out after getting flashed on the site, but he recovered well. He wins the round for Liquid. It's so after Maturis comes through with a crazy double kill. Now just pistol saw having to play for OT. It's this Liquid's map pick off third map is ancient. Another decent map for Liquid, I'd say. Like uh, one they've actually had cool ideas on and looked far more comfortable. So despite the scare at the start of the match with, you know, nuke looking, or Liquid looking like a deer in headlights, completely lost, blinded on nuke. There may be a chance to save this series at the end of the day, save their showdown. Kinder's even taking liberties on the ante and going all the way down banana. I mean, he's got the bomb right here and he wants even more. Just the pistols, so he's not at all worried. He's got support from Nafly. They've retrieved the bomb at least, but what's that gonna do? Oh, yeah, almost. Almost. He had to take the shot or Twist would have died. So this is what Saw have been waiting for. They had to give it up and allow Liquid a map point. 
Was it worth it? Liquid looking to take us the distance, settle the score on Ancient. I mean, they could get there with a, a tidy game of Inferno under their belts. There was no doubting them on this map, or at least, you know, if we go off their results in the Americas, they're very at home here, and it's very reassuring to see them look this good. Oh, Everyone's it's here banana. is going to go through to grab the bomb. The rest of his team stacked up over in top mid, but this extra time given to Liquid lets them reassess where they wanted to play here. They were three strong battling for Banana, and they move everyone over towards A. Liquid must be expecting them to be way deeper if they're going for this whole full rotators three. I wonder if they send Cadian back after they clear this site because this is a big gamble to make in such a you know early part even, of the round. Even the sound cues there, you hear two Molotovs come out from Liquid if you're sore, and that's going to give you a, a huge leg up in oh, terms of knowing where though. Liquid are poised. It's a nice reaction here to start re-aggroing and clearing out middle, so you're going to be hot on their heels with the backstab. If Cadian can catch one crossing, this round has still got legs on it for Liquid. Smoke in his way. Spam doesn't connect. Second time, not the charm. It's going to come down to this flank instead, and that fly is way deeper than Roman should be ready for. That one's free. Now they know about this push up through the banana, but trapped in the smoke at CT is Mutiris, and he's finished off. Liquid looking for a clean close on their pick of Inferno. They want to take us the distance, and it's just oh. Arostos left to stop them. He's on for the ace right now, and it's just Kadian, the man left to beat. Tap on the bomb is not enough, wow. and Arostos keeps sore in this game. Five kills from him as the point man. He starts the round and he ends it to the follow through from Arastos. Keeps Saw's head above water here on Inferno. 1v3 ace in the B-bombs. Like, that feels good. And over Kadian in the 1v1 as well. He had no kit. He had to go for the fight. And Arastos makes it look easy. Great spray over Coffin as well. And Saw, they're keeping it very simple on this T side. But when you have your players be able to step up like that, it's going to make your life a lot easier. 19 and 13 on the aforementioned player. Story nade on the smoke, and that's a nice pick. Your kid are dead immediately at Banana. Still an orb back here. Kadian's got the money. So we may have this head to head. Molly forces that close player right behind the wall. Wall bank potential. Nafka becomes swinging. Here's the orb. And that back 10 just chews through his teeth. Saw, they got something to say. That smoke is very deep. Kadian absolutely should go for a kill here before he departs. Yeah, I'd love to just steal one right as they move out. And he will get away with it. The secret ingredient is crime there for Kadian. Oh, even black oh, through. That's ballsy. That is criminal. He's going to get out with his life still intact, but at what cost? Oh, that feels like it should be connecting something, but nothing on the dice roll of that spam. Saw with a bomb plant and a 3v3. Lots of damage done to Kadian. If they don't give up a kill, if they don't give Liquid a reason to go for this, it should just be the save. Yeah, Resmoke, that might just do it. There's no kit. Positionally, they have no flank of banana. They're hoping someone feeds them in this post part, but Saw didn't even want to risk the spam battle through the smoke. They just want to win the round, and they will do so. A little risky play for Cadian, but he will be able to keep the AWP as a result. And Saw, just still pretty basic, but it's, it is getting the job done. They're fielding rounds on T-side. Liquid seem to know these hits are coming every single time. They just haven't been able to put a stop to the final rush and send us to Ancient. It all starts with this little Ujerks and uh, Story Nade Smoke play over towards Banana. Kadian 4-0 and in opening duels in this game. One that was T-side picks. Also up banana with the orb, but this time he's in apartments here. 
Leaving Banana completely open. So we're gonna start to walk up late. Molly sends him packing out in the middle. Good nade, at least, to stop them, you know, capitalizing on that movement from the Molly. Without that nade, Saul would have swung him there and probably caught him escaping, so... It's a nice idea for Saul. Boost up, trying to put this rifle to use. Spotted and legged as well. The Akinder even gets knocked out at AB while with a re-smoke. Still don't need to go through this. They shouldn't feel the pressure to commit at a minute mark. They know they have the advantage when it comes to the buy. And Liquid are making a nice gamble here to move every player into B. They've got nothing to lose by doing this. Yeah, this is going to be a real skirmish for the B side. Still a good chance for Liquid in this round. They flash through. They look to fight this head on. And that feeds them to the sore hole that's just waiting oh, no. on the extremities of this B site. KD is spammed out. And the stack is dismantled. Liquid had everyone here. Katie and they don't get a single kill from it. KD was so blind. He was running into the wall. He wasn't actually escaping. He wasn't leaving. Would have been able to double dip otherwise. And instead, Skulls just knows, yeah, I could go for some damage from stats, but saving is the best route right now. A saw find double digits. This was a game we were ready to ride off with Liquid finding three in a row, winning a big eco on the A site. I mean, it all comes to that reinjection of energy if you're saw from the Arastos Ace 1v3 clutch, yeah. right? Like. It suddenly, that put wind back in your sails. It broke the liquid money. It was a perfect storm to, to start to take some ownership of this game. And so Saw, you know, you might not have favored their chances. There was a world where Liquid could have had this over rounds ago. Yeah. But suddenly they're in with a chance. And I mean, there's a certain poetic nature right here on Inferno. Now it's Saw tasked with this comeback to try and lock Liquid out. This would be one hell of a way to lose, right? Like, we almost had it assumed that Liquid would be taking this map back. Well, look, man, take it from me. I speak with experience here. You can never assume anything about the Liquid or God Inferno. That is true. And as good as they have been. I've seen, I've actually seen both of these organizations have big fall down yes, moments true. here on we, this map. Yeah, we've been there for their lowest lows, I think. When Refresh killed a roster and when Jame did the same. And so what's one more for old times sake, okay? <laughs> Heartbreak for someone today. But if it came on map two for Liquid, that'd be nothing short of disappointing. Explosive banana take. Yakinda calling for Kadian support. He doesn't have an orb. Story does. Trying to find that pick. You can do a dangerous cross into the site, but he's got full util. He needs to be here inside of B to defend. Smoke break is ready. Or just a nade on the attack. They have a lot of util prime. Afghan flash pull. They could have a seemingly good setup. If we just see a full exec into B here. It, it looks nice right now for Liquid. Move in, Mutira is at the helm of this ship. You still have Aristotle kind of lurking around over towards A. I wonder if they want him to get a move on, try and take a bit of space, try and tee up Saw for a last minute rotate back, and that looks to be the decision here. Can he win oh, this? Convincing wow. kills out of Aristos. It was him who saved the day for Saw and kept him in this game in the first place. And he's looking to, to draw us into extra time now. That is a mind melter. They got every bit of util out of Liquid at B. I thought they were just about to re-execute second time, but Aros Dos grabs Liquid and choke slams them on the A site. Two players just in the open on short side. And clinical execution for the young player. 22 and 13. He ace clutch to stay in this game. And that double kill. Look at what it's done. Liquid are trying to save, but they are absolutely not guaranteed.
Are they going to risk any more in the hunt? I mean, I think they should. I think they should, should throw right? every single player at this. I time. understand the no story, so. not because yeah. you, know, you don't That's... want to give a free AWP over. But yeah, you felt like they could That's have even looked to do more damage there. Yeah, they can buy full. They should. They should die for that. They should but, send both rifles in. Man, regardless, Aristos really wants this over in two. He is believing right now. From an ace just rounds ago to two key openers there to suddenly turn that one around and look at the frustration for Twist. That is a death slab. He is very upset with how that one falls apart. And if you're liquid, I don't think they were ever worried that this was going to slip through their fingers. I oh. felt like they thought they had it in the bag. And it's like, sure, you get aced, you get 1v3. You go, you go, okay, we still have loads of rounds left to play. He just had like one good round. But no, now he's keeping keeping this performance going. It keeps having good rounds. You can't make the excuse anymore. And you're running out of time to close this one out. That pressure that Liquid weren't feeling rounds ago is now weighing down upon them. They're in the Mariana Trench right now. Yeah. The, the Marinera Trench. Covered in sauce, Harry. It's too sticky. It's too sweet. It's sweet rice. Arrows Doss doing the dirty. And with these spilt liquids, we might need to clean up right now. It's 12, 11, it's all to play for, and it's back up banana without any fear for Materius. Maybe he should have some nay to Brutal. It's only Naf on B right now. The Kinder gonna pick up more utility. And he can't cross into the open this time. Oh, they saw his arm. They've oh, seen his hand. Oh, God, this stop is so close. changing you till, please. <laughs> He's just okay, just about. And they think a banana take is coming so they concede. Perfectly reasonable, still all boosted. Story is trying to get this opening kill. If he gets it, we could be looking at overtime. Hadian's pulled back around. This is so similar to that last round, Aristos. Yeah. This Go time back. it should be way harder for him to find anything out through mid because of the crossfire liquid are running. He's not going to catch them bunched up on the short side. He's going to have his attention pulled either which way. His teammates move around and join him. They've got full faith in the Arastos lurk. That absolutely would be perfect right now. Could backstab this double mid setup. Twiss is hiding anti-flash. Skulls wants that contact. Arrows Doss is too far back to do anything right now, but the rifles are grouped up in middle. Liquid, they have this sinking feeling. They know it's coming. Contact play. Skulls with his kill. Twist needs something here. He falls with not a single oh, frag. No. And Saw have got the round in the palm of their hand. If you're Liquid now, you are, uh, you've got to, you've got to dig deep and try to attempt this in a 3v4 retake. Story not even in the site. He's waiting around here in alt mid. He hears the footsteps of this scrambled rotate. And so that one free this one is slipping away from liquid and ot beckons arastos not even needed in this last round just his presence in the apartment gave them peace of mind enough who jacks is burnt out sure but is that going to be enough of a leg up for liquid a missed shot off the orb a story course corrects and for nafly there should be no winning this one 1v2 knows about the man in apartments but roman's never been spotted down here in the pit and it's a done deal five in a row to drag us into overtime unbelievable recovery from Saw in this game they have looked very very good on this t side and arrows dos being able to find these crucial entries these clutches liquid walking away at arrows dos actually he needs a break he needs a breather and liquid head in hands desk slams everything but the one round they needed that was 12 7 up they were right there, ready to close this game, take us to Ancient, and now they could be facing elimination in their first and perhaps only BO3 of the showdown. My, oh my. Sort of playing up to the mark. So surprised to see so much Bernardo control for Saw in this T-side, uncontested, it, it took, uh, by the end of Saw CT, they figured out what they wanted to do at Banana. They figured out that the, the reflashes and saving their mollies for late and taking it back from Liquid was the way. But Liquid have only played inside of the bomb sites this entire defensive half.
Yeah, and I mean, what that often does is, is enforcing triple Bs because they're scared of executes. Cadian's coming in with the AWP. We have Twist and Skulls on this crossfire mid. They haven't done anything. They have, like they haven't. Twist gets zero kills when he's being set up for Skulls there. Nothing yeah. has happened on the A site for Liquid. I mean, Twist is super frustrated, right? Like, we've seen it in the player cams. You've, you've seen him have some uncharacteristic whiffs here, and they're ones that, that really matter. As we've gone down the stretch, he's not been like this super dependable piece over in top mid. And as you pointed out, when you're so often left, your device is there to hold in a, nice. in a kind of two-man setup. You you need those re that, the reliable output. That's very Cadian. Hit OT, different game. You've got the breathing room. You can make a play. And he runs through the mid smoke to find a five on four. You can't even bottom banana. This is the first time we saw this at the America's RMR, but I, I hope there'll be better results. Oh, he sees them leave. That's perfect. Nav can give it a check, but he needs to run a rotation as well. It's, it should seem clear to Liquid right now. This is definitely an A play. He can, it doesn't need to rush the flank. He can activate on the mid contact. Yeah, if anything, just him having the info is enough, right? That's the whole point of him in this round. He doesn't even need to look for a kill. It's what it's allowed them to do, a four-man lean over towards this A site, and Kadian with a second kill in the round. Good flash up through short, and for Saw, they are boxed in here. They are trapped, backs against the wall. Awkward timing for Nafly. So that's that fourth player that rotated over, now removed from the round. Roman in the site, but Twists will bail them out. Arostos out through the apartments, oh! wrestling with the AK. Surely not again. Surely it's not Arostos. Another masterclass here. Two quick kills on the back of that spray, but Kadian silences him, finally able to lock down Arostos in those clutch moments. It's not just spray transfers, it's running spray transfers. It's exactly what he did at Coffins in that ace round. He's running and transferring across the, you know, 90 degree turns. That is unbelievably skilled. That is great mechanics. Keeping track of that spray so well. Kadian, risky Hapik, he had to do it. He was getting stuck. What a nice try for Arastos, but still, Liquid, I love the change. Aggression down mid. Yakinda takes Banana with that deep smoke. Oh, this time it gets punished, though. Nade onto the molly with the spam. Mwah. So with a 5 on 4 Kadian's oh, here with a response. Trying so hard to be the difference maker. I feel like this is a bird in the... Kadia never truly gets to escape, does he? It's like heroic in playoffs, yeah. you know? Always the guy who feels that pressure to have to be the hero. But it's working here. Three kills from him in the last round. An opener, or at least, you know, the, the equalizer down through Banana. And then taken one step further by Nafly. Liquid are looking for the recovery in OT. I mean, you literally saw this Kadian for... In, in the big matches where, you know, Stown went quiet when Yavi couldn't do anything. Kadian felt like he had to make plays and you s I've seen so many Inferno games where Kadian is sending himself for opening kills just to give you breathing room, just to give you control of the map. A five on four. This is not unknown territory. He's at least got some players performing. Nav's had a good game. Yakinda definitely slowed down, but numbers wise is good. It was more a strong start, 12 and 5. So they're smoked out, but they look like they want to go. This is their only volley of util. They've got to win it. Back on the side for Kadian, and his aim has been true on this AWP thus far. No reason to think that changes now. Teasing them with the cross out through the smoke, and he's ready to go. Kadian, another one on the tally, another one on the score sheet. Captain looks to send Saw packing. They've got it boxed in. Back of the site and Twists stands tall and delivers. Great recovery from Twists as well. You very much saw frustration setting in for this guy. And you saw him having some of those awkward moments over in top mid. But as we've hit OT, some critical kills and key moments here from Twists. And so it might all be fine for Liquid. It might have taken the kind of levity, the freedom that comes with overtime. The ability to no longer play with that pressure the, uh, of a game that's getting out of your hands, right? You're no longer kind of at the behest of this sore T side. They're, they're making a lot more moves. They're being a lot more proactive here. Yeah. It was one of the things you touched upon, how often they were just playing from within the bomb sites. Well, that has not been the case now that we've hit OT. I, I, I want Liquid to feel like they can make those plays short. It, it takes until overtime till they feel free enough to do so. But I want this team to be confident and believe in 
you know, making plays. They have playmakers on the team. Sure, it may have come very late in the day, but if it's going to save their Inferno, take us to Ancient, it's better than going out with a whimper, playing passive CS, playing scared. So I think they're lining up a mid banana smoke. Top mid smoke from Spawn. Skulls with an orc, go on. In the apartment, it's very close, but he's got that viable one-shot headshot and twist is by his side with the second AW. Double apps for Liquid. Cadian playing rotation. Walking into the unknown. Aristos has the bomb. Uh-oh. You don't want to lose it here, not to this double apartment setup. I don't think Liquid have to necessarily hang around and keep fighting for this control, but a missed oh. shot from Twist. And Arostos, oh, once dead. again, bro, like this is insane. Whenever he's on our screens, you know he's good for something. He's delivering these doubles, but now he's cut down. They've got to do it without Arostos. Oh, he is blind, holds off shooting. That allows them to cross on in. No heroics from the captain this time. It's got to be a kinder. 1v4 laid out ahead of him. He deals with Mutiris to thin out the herd a little. He's still got so much more to do. They know where he is. The swing for Moto is instantly punished. Roman locks him out of it, and so Saw at least manage one round here on their T side. Yeah, Liquid figure out that B hold, but they, they've never looked good on these double A setups with Twists and Skulls. Both players just missing, man. It, you know, the, the positions are fine. The setups are fine. They're running a variety of setups. But when shit hits the fan, they don't hit anything. Twist stepping, missing, missing his shot. Skulls, I mean, that's an impossible position. At that point, Arasdos is lights out. And he is just winning rounds on this T side. It's going to get harder, though. Oh my goodness. No, that's the bomb. That's the bomb. Whoa, that's Whoa. the bomb. And so Kadian oh. has maybe given them the ultimate gift. That's the thing, right? You say Kadian feels that pressure to be involved. He feels that pressure to be the hero. You kind of live and die by it, right? That really yeah. is the, the the state of these moments. What? It was Kadian yeah. led squads. He, he wanted to take an early fight, but has the bomb. Sign sealed and delivered. It's dropped on Banana now. I mean, he's pulled off some of the most incredible plays and clutches and uh, unwinnable rounds, but we've also seen that being young doing. We all remember yeah. Paris and on this very map that Coffin's push in the three on three. It doesn't always work. And when it doesn't, boy, do you look silly. This whole round is now a recovery mission. Saw aren't playing for the bomb. And so while Liquid are being a bit cautious, they'll figure it out soon enough and their options open up again, but playing solo B enforces this stack. Look what are going into it. We sound a Tom here, the rest of the gang in behind him. Arostos, pit player. They try and swing out now, one kill. Tries his hand for even more, but is punished for it. Story's all will deliver. And so the man advantage falls in Saw's favor, convincingly so. The backstab out of Mutiris is in, and it's a tie game all over again. Liquid had their second win here coming in oh. to overtime. Only one round mustered from the Saw squad in that first half of OT, but now we hit tie territory. And Liquid, that pressure that they were feeling towards the end of regulation, where we saw it, you know, get boiled down to the very basics. They were playing almost, you know, it felt like not to lose. Very passive back within the sights. And I mean, that round, it's not made or broken by losing the bomb over towards Banana, but that, that's something that might even stifle this aggressive look that we've had thus far. And they are, they are just playing to win right now. Sora throwing themselves into these early fights. Down middle, he can't see him inside of the smoke. I think Kadian got a whiff. I think he knows, but he's firing off and he still hits the shot. Dink comes through, it's not enough. Liquid have been lit up in this round though. Two players down low on their last legs. They need this one desperately. Saw two rounds away from eliminating Liquid, but they've got to do it from the back foot. Pushed into a corner. Liquid slow it down. They wait for the re-aggro. Story's giving it. 
I mean, you know, if you're sore, you, you've lost your front man, right? You've lost Aristos, so it's got it's, it's down to the rest of the gang in, in kind of dire straits here in a 3v5. There's a lot of damage done to Kadian and Affly, but that might never come to matter if you lose this site decisively. If you're locked out by the util, if this AWP doesn't deliver here and now, this one should be done for Saw. And so all that early damage no looking. won't mean a thing. No one's looking. Right now, Util's out oh. on the angle right there. Story. He sees an arm. Oh. I don't take your leg. You Kindar dead lining up Util. That's one piece removed. And now it's down to these lower players to try and move in. Twists will deliver. Roman dead. And so, so much damage done to Liquid here. But it might never matter. Oh. That fly dead as he doesn't catch them in rotation. Story has back. the bomb right here. They're divided, oh. but Kadian delivers oh. a critical kill. And it comes down to the 2v1. Mutira is moving in. We say this guy is so often good for a multi-kill. So often stands and delivers when he really has to. We've seen him be a turret, but now he's going to be a clutcher. With an open sight line for that AWP, Kadian will not let him in. A huge round from Kadian on the AWP. And what a recovery from kind of falling down in that last one. The play looks a little silly up through Banana. But boy, does he make up for it now. If anything, Naf dying was a good thing for Liquid because Kadian was about to go back with the bomb. That's what it felt like. He you know, retreated back through Banana. They realized they lost story. And thank goodness he pulls the pistol in time. Naf dies on his luck and no clutch today for Saw. That's a, a very stressful round, but that was a three on five. Keep in mind that they almost clutch out Liquid with map points, trying to take us to Ancient. Here in the first overtime, Saw want to double it, uh, run it back. Three of B, they're going to re aggro. Kadian's fourth line. Util's done great damage here. Yakindar, that molly's not burning him. Will this go unchecked? If it does... Oh, that's unlucky. That would have been a double opener, but instead, back to spawn. Kadian's got a lot of Util there to pick yeah. up. A Kadian classic, you know he loves it. It's a nice move, especially on that like Inferno, when you're just cycling nades, you're trying to essentially have more than the other team. Be able to double exec, perhaps. And they've gotten a good bit out of Saw with that top banana re-aggression, but there was no commitment. There's only a smoke and a Molotov left on Saw's defense at 50 seconds. It's not ideal. Arrows Doss smoked off, doesn't want to spam, can't really do anything about Oh, interesting about this to here. know. He's leaning over towards Long, so I think he wants to be at the, the, the center of these rotates. He's going through the smoke on Long. My god, this guy does not care. He hears them drop out of apartments. And he gives the kill to Skulls, a crucial five on four. Liquid have to close this map. Yeah, this is the best chance you're going to get. There. Bombs going back, going to rejoin up with these eight players. And Store is scrambling the rotates in. Mutiris, it's just the one and done. Story in the pit. Orp on his back. 15 seconds. Time is of the essence. This Orp can still do this, but a missed shot. Oh. And Kadium runs him down. Time. The bomb just makes it in with seconds to spare. Nafly punches in those numbers. And for Saw, this one might end in OT. And the score settled on Ancient as Kadian continues to find success. Locks wow. them out with three to close as Kadian emerges a keen hero for Liquid to carry them through to that third map of Ancient.
Well, map two is done. Liquid take it in overtime, and you can see the results. Sad, forlorn, distraught Saw players as they let a chance to close out the series 2-0 slip away. They almost they almost fought themselves back into it. Um, but it's kind of like uh, exactly what we sort of expected in a way, Bubski, where, yeah, Liquid win it. We know it's a good map they like to play. We know it's a decent map for them. Uh, but it really wasn't wasn't pretty in any, in any sense no, of the word. No, but I can work. understand where the Saw players are coming from, right? They get so many emotions running through their game, all these clubs. Uh, these mid-round situations really stressful in many of those um, and it's a unique feeling you spend all that energy and just to to miss out at the end yeah you come back from seven to twelve you come back five rounds in a row to to force overtime where you could have been eliminated in regulation you get so close and even towards the end even almost forcing a double overtime um and then just not able to close it out and i mean that's got to feel like a missed opportunity right you have a team like liquid that's already a little bit broken from their loss of the rmr you feel like you can put them away to zero uh and you've and you've let them let them get a new life a new lease on life going into the yeah and i think one thing they can talk about is that one guy called Aris Dosha, like we're gonna try Try to pronounce it in the Portuguese way. Yeah, <laughs> Aristotle. Uh, yeah. What a player. Like, what a freaking player they found in Portugal. He is um, such a unique player because he's like the lurker. Like, he's kind of a rubs with the Portuguese type of way. He has been the main point of why Saw has been able to improve so much. I know Story and Ujox is also um, joining on when it comes to the kill department, but he's like so good on the lurks and in the clutch situations. He was the main reason why they even got to the overtime here. Yeah, I mean, even in the second half, uh, his T side from from Palace at the eight bomb site, the amount of double kills he was getting on, on skulls, on twists, uh, like it was it was happening round and round again. So he did some heavy lifting this ace as well uh, to keep propelling them forward. Yeah, he he had a fantastic map and uh, he did everything he possibly could to win it and still falls short. But he is certainly one of the bright spots. Yeah, and I think uh, that's what they can build on, right? If you can already have a player like him so early in his career playing on this level, it's only going to be better for them going forward. But uh, but another player that I'm more disappointed with is is Yekindar, right? He gets such a good start and I feel like finally we talked about it before the game that Yekindar on that Inferno he's like often pretty good. He gets those opening kills. He was really impactful in the start of the game and then he just falls completely flat after getting that good start. It's a weird situation with him. He was one of the best riflers in the world at one point but now he's uh, yeah he's is he even average at this point. Yeah, he's, he's had a little bit of a drop off. And I mean, that's been the conversation is can can you kinder get some of his, his swagger back from his, you know, experiment as an as an IGL? Can he get the fragging, you know, back that mindset? Yeah. It's sometimes hard to kind of turn off that switch to thinking about the big picture to then just focusing, uh, focusing on your own play. But uh, it's always, of course, Inferno being a home map for him. Maybe this is part of the reason why Liquid enjoy yeah. picking it is because your kinder still has some game here in Banana. We saw it in the first half and it was nice, you know, in overtime as well. They kind of went back to it and he wasn't getting the same kind of kills the same kind of opening but they were letting him kind of be the point man in banana to let them establish that top banana control and build off of that in the mid round so even without some frags he was finding ways to have impact for, for the team overall I, i'm just always so amazed i mentioned it to you when we were watching the overtime is just like everything seems difficult for liquid every single situation seems hard for them to find the solutions where it feels like it should be a little bit easier yeah. you know they have a five on three they get the opening kills things slow down and then it turns eventually into a two-on-two -two that they're that they're fortunate yeah, to I mean, win. I'm not sure if there's um, too many cooks in the kitchen. I'm not sure if like the initiatives from Yekinda and Twist with the bigger personality and Kadian with his leadership, like is that causing a lot of stress in mid rounds? Because as you said, it like a lot of these rounds is just one plus one, and it should like be a round win, right? But they make it so complicated, trying to divide minus and all these sorts of things, and it just makes it so hard to watch Liquid play and feel like they actually have a, a structured way of approaching the games. Yeah, Liquid fans still, still, still riding that emotional roller coaster that that they always have, <laughs> which is unfortunate for them. Um, now we head into the third map. Let's touch a little bit on Ancient before we head off to a break and get that underway. The series is going to be decided on this final map. Um, for it's a good win rate for Liquid. For Saw, they played it at the RMR twice. They they lost a VP pretty big. They they beat NIP pretty handedly on it. Um, so not a whole lot to go off of. But um, still, this is another map as we've gotten deeper into kind of this best of three map pool that feels like both these last two maps are kind of favoring and leaning. Yeah, I mean Liquid. the the map itself is like been become really uti utility dependent after like those changes 
changes where they moved up the spawns a little bit and moved them back on the CT side. It's all about those timings. Are you molotoving the right spots? Are you throwing that spawn uh, smoke down deep middle and able to lock it down? That's really where it's uh, all doing. And I think we are watching a player like Nerd who has actually specialized in this role down at the, the elbow area trying to get those timings. So I'm really going to be interesting to see is it going to be Twist or Yekinda playing in that position trying to get those kills in the middle area. Well, it's also a little bit interesting if you if you remember back to the America's RMR, the 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 players and the teams actually voted on which patch to use in the yeah. RMR. And, and Twist gave an interview where he was pretty outspoken about wanting to use the current patch that had some of these spawn changes because there's not a whole lot of time for them to to now adjust. As Cadian said, he got he got to his apartment at 8 p.m. last night. It's not like you get to sit there and kind of tinker with some of the new timings that you might have. So. I, they could. Uh, it, it's, there's a world where Liquid gets really caught off guard. Yeah, and that's by the that. unfortunate reality of uh, us playing a game that is mostly designed for casual players, right? They don't give a damn when there's a tournament. So that's the reality of, yeah, of being a player. And I've tried it myself. Um, I remember those um, bugs back in the day where you could like look down and then you could hold ramp, and then at the top of your screen the smoke yep. would literally disappear. So people would just keep smoking ramp, and then will look under the smoke and just say, "Hey guys, ramp is clear." Like it was pretty absurd at this point, but uh, obviously not any game breaking changes so far in CS2. Yeah, not not quite yet, but there's still plenty of time for yeah. some game breaking changes. I'm, I mean, I'm Big is also playing, um, so they're I, I, probably going to find something at, uh, at one point, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, live up to their live up to their reputation. Um, I guess we come down to this pretty pretty utility dependent, but on the other hand, on some level, you know, utility don't matter if you've got Ares Dolce just banging off headshots every time you see someone on a screen. So so where does this one lie in your mind if we go into this third map? Are you going to lean towards um, you know Saw, where the individuals seem a little bit more focused, a little bit switched on? Are you going to trust in Liquid with with some of the individuals being able to to hit some of those levels we know they have in them, um, and to show like a little bit more of a organized front. I mean, this so is that. surely where we should see the individuals of coming in from Liquid, right? Uh, I would not be surprised if Twist gets all the entire salary combined of Saw plus a little bit more on his side. So he, they really need to prove why they have spent so much money on this roster and really show that there is a future for this roster. Because right now, I don't think we can pinpoint many points in this new Liquid lineup where you've been like, damn, that's been pretty good. It's been really mediocre so far. And I think Twist is actually the only player where I feel like, okay, I'm comfortable that this guy is actually living up to the expectations. But the rest of the guys, they really need to, to participate more. I don't know. I put Naf in that category too. Mm. Naf is, uh, he's old reliable. You can always trust Naf to keep fragging. Uh, yeah. But it, yeah, it's, it's the rest of this team cohesion that we've got to see step it up. So third map, um, Liquid have, have uh, kind of bought themselves with that Inferno win, a chance to keep competing in this series, a chance to keep competing for a spot in London at the Blast Premier Spring Finals. We'll see if they're going to do it. It's Ancient up next. It's Harry and Hugo to close out this series. We've got Liquid, we've got Saw. One of them's going home, baby.
Well, Kadian takes them to the cleaners, man. That was uh, one hell of an inferno put forth from Liquid. It's very back and forth. I mean, I, I'm, I'm in kind of two minds about that second yeah. map, if I'm honest. On one hand, I'm like, it's great that Liquid are able to kind of roll with the punches here, pull it back in OT, that Kadian's still able to do this kind of, you know, heroic play yeah. style of his. And uh, on the other side, I feel kind of bad for Saw. I felt like they, 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 they really pushed Liquid's buttons there. Uh, Arostos is playing out of his mind right now across this series. Uh, had some really nice moments from him. Mutirius and Story kind of just keeping up appearances as well there. Um, you know, I, I don't know where this leaves us, Hugo, as we get ready to head to Ancient. How are you feeling about it? Liquid have to win this series now, I think. E either they were going to come in, they were going to bomb out, and we were going to go, ah, yeah, well, they lost the RMR. They just flew here. Fair enough. They're in a bad state. Well, now they've proven they can actually hold on to a game and, and if anything, you know, stop the comeback, right? I, I, I don't want that to be for nothing. I think if they're going to, you know, take that map away in the fashion that they did and, you know, shut down a red hot Aristose, I, th I would like them to close the series now on, on what is another comfortable map. I would say it's probably their second best map right now. Inferno is their home choice. The only issue with Ancient is like, similarly to Inferno, oh, they're playing in NA, they're wrecking everyone. They have actually fielded a couple of losses to North American squads on this map. So they are not unbeatable by any means. Uh, and even if Saw don't have a huge amount of official experience on this one either, well, they didn't on Inferno and they still showed a great face. So yeah, I, I think it would be even more disappointing for Liquid to take that map in that fashion and still get eliminated in the first round. So. Let's see if they can keep it up. There are definitely questions in mind though, right? You can do with a hot start, got very cold in the middle of the game, didn't really do much until OT at the end of the match. Uh, twists and skulls, man, like it would, I'd say it's less on skulls. I kind of have higher expectations of twists to be yeah. honest uh, in, inside of this team. And hey, the odds are flipped back for GG Bet. Liquid now favorites, I think that's fair. But to count out Saw after what they've shown us this afternoon would be crazy. Yeah, I feel I feel all right of uh, for Saw coming into this one. If I'm honest, I think yeah. you are pretty comfortable with knowing that like you you push Liquid to their very limits on a map that you're not like super keen on playing yourselves. And on top of that, you know when you look at their ancient runs, only team they've lost to is VP. Uh, and I think you know yeah. that's it's fair, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Smash them um, on it at the uh, RMR. Yeah. So you know I, I don't know. I, I still have a very good feeling for for Saw here, and uh, you know I, I hope. For Liquid on the other side, I've seen Twists just look a bit out of it in this series and yeah. look a little bit like mad as a result, you know? I think he knows he's underperforming and he's someone who puts a lot of weight on himself in that regard, as he should. Um, and so, you know, that frustration that's coming out, I, I think it is just because he knows he's he's kind of dropped the ball in a few of these rounds. And I, I'm curious if that's going to make or break him here in, uh, in this series with everything on the line. You know, you're heading to a third map. It's do or die. You either keep on progressing or, uh, or you're done and you never even stand a chance of making it to London. Yeah, uh, and like we kind of said coming into the start of the day, like if Liquid were going to be Saw, they were certainly never going to be Cloud9 or, you know, Complexity again in their uh, in, in their bracket as well. They were never going to make it to London. So, yeah, they, they, had to, they had to show good face and they did at the start of Inferno. It got a little hairy in the middle, but I think, uh, I think this is, well, it's obviously a must win for Liquid, but the same time I am enjoying the story that Saw are giving us, not just across the RMR, but keeping up uh, impressive form into more competitions. I hope we see them uh, in this circuit, you know, a lot this year. I hope we see Saw get some good chances to showcase their recent improvements outside of the major. And there would be a great place to do that, but I also won't get ahead of myself. This is only the first round here for the showdown winner going on to take on Cloud9. Red hot against Rare Atom. Let's get on to the third map. Ancient Liquid on the T side start and Acadian cooking a pistol. It's quiet off the rip. Sneaking their way up towards Cave. Acadian even gets deep. I think he realizes he slipped the net here. Yoink. The Jiggles just missed him. Crossing in a red. That's. That's kind of crazy. You don't get this position in this way a hell of a lot. Acadian does decide to go back down and try and fight for Donut. Now that they've seen him here, that's going to keep the double stack there. Push down the ramp in the meantime for Store. Nothing found on the Story side. Instead, it's Ujerks lighting them up. Damage done to Acadian. Even bringing him down to 20 points of health. And so a great start in the pistol from Ujerks. Someone who struggled at the 
beginning of this series. Good work here in the third to kickstart it strong for the Saw squad. And with Roman yeah. there to back him up, it is a convincing look in the pistol round. And with Twist being a big talking point coming into this third map, while well, he team kills Naf in the pistol, that does not make things any better uh, in this redemption arc the third map of the series. So. Canadian on Canadian violence. Yeah, very it's rare. Truly getting out of hand. Don't see that every day. Ooh, Ooh hey. but. Ooh, your team killed me, bud. You're not my bud anymore, eh? <laughs> Connor Launder's coming up later. Oh, yes. And look at this. Straight up through the ramp. New jerks. Another one. None for Roman. But a bit more from this Famous over at Long, and that's at least stemming the bleeding here for Saw. Sure, Liquid are going to get themselves a bomb plant. But you're approaching this four on three, and no one's looking at Cage, so that's a freebie for Story. Who just runs in with this MP9. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the fights. Yeah, yeah, we'll just move past it. Nice, easy anti. Liquid puts some money in. They get a bomb plant again, but not really enough damage that you feel satisfied with that round. It, and, you know, even if you're going to B rush and you get the entry, get the plant, it can be so hard to hold on to B post plants. Because think about it, where do you really have to play if you're planting default? in the site towards dark or ramp are really your only options. That's why you see teams tend to take long. But you often want that smoked off early so you can actually get into the bomb site. They cut off you jerks as famous. Liquid. A little less to play with here. Some time to chat about that upcoming gun round. Sora even got the orb in early, so very keen. I mean, Saw come into this with the points proved. They feel like they were robbed. Back on Inferno. They're taking this one all the way to the Ombudsman. They've got issues to level against this Liquid squad. And so just the pistols in this round. Liquid hoping they can eye up another plant here. Bit of armor to go behind them, but no util. So you are just relying on aim. Couple of tech knives, couple of deagles. Very expensive, as I recall. And contact up ramp. Perfect position here for Roman. Oh, not oversending it for the fam. As he lets Roman finish the job, and he makes it look lovely. Luscious behold. Licks, lips licked, rather. You're right, man. Not really. And Liquid. Going through red, but as Twist, hit, Twist hits a banger. Stop looking at me. This round's over, know. Harry. Yeah. No, good good observation there. Cadian, you can't do that. You can't. Well, <laughs> and you won't. Didn't even get to finish it. Aristos ruins it. Ruins the moment. Ruins the round. And so Saw move up 3-0. They're pretty content with this so far. Skulls looked very smiley at the start of this series, but that, that look is kind of toned on down now. It's a bit more of a lip-biting stance because he's focused, he's channeled in. Oh, yeah. Crash Bandicoot on the wall. There was a poster. Yeah. Classic game, really. Liquid come crashing down to finish the series. Do they have something to say in their first rifle round? Orp on Cadian, outside of A. The Akinda coming in towards the heaven. But they actually have no mid info, so as far as he's aware, they could be climbing up already. So he'll just have to stay contained. We have a ramp info gained, yeah. but no overcommitment. No, I mean, you don't really have the resources to commit to some super aggressive push down the ramp. It's just kind of a little prod for the info. A is completely empty right now. That's because Sora instead looking to take real estate away over here in middle. But as soon as Liquid make noise, if they throw nades, if they drop off this boost, those donor players will hear and they'll be able to rotate. Late mid take perhaps, but your kid's got a lot of work to do because Twist can't overcommit with the bomb. Drops it though. Yeah, over in mid, Sora yeah. just... Skulls. Ready and able to deal with it. 
great position. He doesn't overdo it either. Bring the bomb in and he can cover the plant. No idea. They find out the hard way. There's a nice trade, but Kadeen takes the angle and responds well. Big flank. Oh, Materials is quick here. Now fly trigger discipline. I think that might be one of the ones that comes back to haunt you. He should have this kill dead to rights over here in mid. Lost him. Oh, hang on. There we go. He sees him. And that fly going to collect that one for free. Twists with the double. Wow. And that will cement the round for Liquid. A nice set of protocols there. They just kind of go through the motion, swapping angles with the opposition until eventually they find a way in. I'm surprised he let him go there as well, right? If, uh, if Roman ran to Donut and Nap has to walk, there's a world he doesn't even get that kill. But... Nice protocols for Liquid. Kadian doing exactly what he had to, take him that angle after Skulls finds his freebie and Donut. And even though Liquid used to lose Yakinda early in heaven, they had so much space in A and well used. Mid taken back again. Liquid aren't playing spawn based at all. You can do poking ramp for a pick, but orps may clash on A. Mm, this A territory just kind of filled with the liquid players in Sodden. Story tagged up by the AWP, but only words exchanged there as he is brought down low. It's not the killing blow. They back off from the AMA in fight for now. Smoke up over towards red, puts a bit more pressure on middle. Roman wants to get involved in some of these lane fights. His teammate, Arostos, leaps on up. And they push down the ramp in the meantime. A good crunch onto the lane, and that's going to send the bomb away. Kadian leaves. He can't fight for that control. Waiting in the fade as well. Arostos stayed up there. He'd be dead. Instead, the timing is very nice for Liquid. They get to flank out on middle. Right as Sora stopped looking, they make a gamble on A because of this aggressive B position. And this is a deep CT smoke on the right side, if I'm correct. So it should allow them to flank through. Go for it. Kadian struggling to make up his mind here. It's going to be an A hit after all, but as we said, it's fully stacked up right now. Saw 15 seconds, they're in the right place. Yeah, stacked up and ready to deal with this. Arastos, first point of contact. It's just the dink. While he's going to stop the peek out of Mutir, his story smoked off back at the spawn. Fires off on that AWP, but won't find a thing. And he actually gets found through the smoke. Oh, Mutir is. There's that double kill. The multi kill prowess that Mutir brings to the table shines through again. No way he's going round. This is mad, Skulls. This is mad. The kit. kit picked up. They're going to stick that bomb, and now he's on the clock. He won't get there in time. There's no stopping this defuse. They're just holding down E, and it's easy for Saw. Yeah, it's a, you know, you're hoping for the best there. You're hoping they over-rotate, or, or, or overthink it, rather. I thought Temple was... Over-rotate. Yeah, they go B. They go B. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Temple would have been the, the safer option, but Saw just get a spot. They clear Temple. They can see deep CT. They just know, like, either he's overthinking it himself or he's flanking at that point. Let's just defuse. Well played from Sword. They make the right stack on A. And it pays off, even though it gets very close. We have a liquid challenge for mid. It seems like we do. Late pop through the mid smoke. Look at the room. Oh, it twists. It's already red side. Solo B right now. They've drawn everyone back to crunch mid together. They're going to group in Donut as well. I do like how Sora moving on the map right now in some of these rounds. Their mid round adjustments. Making sure they can always trade. They're just floating around the CT spawn. But Liquid, this is all yeah, a ruse. Liquid is trying to remain like fluid that, as well, yeah. right? They also want to try and get Psych. ahead around some of these mid round moves. The whole time, uh, as now Liquid hit B, Saw will be paranoid about a lurker deep mid, so they've got to clear it. And I feel like they're making that happen. This is big info gaining in red. Oh, a lovely opener for Roman. Yakinda doesn't know what hit him. And an idea cooked up here, but the proof's in the pudding. Will it be a nice pudding? Let's see. Will it be rice pudding as Aristos is on a big flank out through mid? 
Mutira is up close. The bomb now getting planted. A man down in this retake, but Mutira is pretty committed. That nade finds a kill over at long. Spam damage brings Nafly down low, but there's more players on the long side ready to swing. At a moment's notice, both these players at CT could be getting double swung. And neither one of them is considering that right now. This could be the downfall of this retake. Story on the orb. First man in and is fed to twists over on the long side. Aros Doss arrives. Oh, yes. His nade rings out with a kill. No Two quick kills from him. Smoke on the bomb. Katie, and you've got to stop him, and he won't get there in time. The oh. round is stolen by Aros Doss. And a deep look into Kadian. That is painful. It felt like Liquid had done everything they needed to to win the round, but it's the second nade up long. They got two kills with nades on long in that round. And the whole time, by the way, Liquid could swing long and kill both players, but they just, they, they don't want to risk it. They know an orb's there. They think they're being held. Saw were never even looking. They were never even planning on holding long. So Liquid make, on paper, the right play, but it, there were kills for the taking. This is nice. This is a bit of a reaction out of Kadian. He's recognized how much they're fighting for this mid control. And in doing so, their resources can't be pulled over towards A. And so the call is just go fast. We're going to have all the real estate, all the control. Nafly and Twists make it happen. And this is a save immediately just on position alone with how nice. you started the round. So what that's going to do there, Kadian kind of throws the, the hammer down with that call and Likely now, Saw have got to start paying more mind towards A early. And what that, what's that, what, blah, 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 what that is going to do here yeah. is that, you know, Saw won't be able to go for some of these early mid fights, these crunches onto the lane. They might have to be a little more passive over towards this B side of the map to free up the resources, just to just to worry about A main early. Yeah, that's now in the back of your mind at the start of every round. Okay, are we getting A rushed? And where will the concessions be made? They've been pretty lax towards B, though, Terrorists in win. general. So we'll see. Let's see how Saw start the next round after Kadian catches him sleeping. It's a nice aggressive move after losing a clutch. All right, Liquid, break the mold. Saw trying to make the adjustment get ahead of it. Yeah, timeout called in. I don't want to solve this. I mean, we've seen in some of these rounds, Aristos getting aggressive over towards main. They might look to go for something like that. Maybe two best spawns look for a bit of early A main control, try and stifle the, uh, the attempt to take that. I mean, you've already seen that Kadian has been more than willing to throw himself into fights there. He took the AWP there early on. So let's see what the decision is for Saw. Even their money's on the chopping block right now. Three MP9s. You can also, you know, you can also call their bluff a bit here and just say, well, they're not going to do it again. But no, it looks like they do want to come in with a bit more presence of mind over towards A. And this is what we talk about, right? The extra resources demanded over towards A really do stem your options over here in mid and B. And so it's far more passive in this round from Saw. They just don't even play B. They've been fine retaking it anyway. And so this is a really nice setup. Double on the boost. And Arrows does get a kill. He can commit here. He can die. He should die. But he'll take a couple with him before he falls. I'll never consider this. New jerks up and above. Puts them down six feet. And Kadian needs another clutch for Team Liquid. 1v4 when it started. Spam through the smoke. He'll never get a chance. Great read from Saw that they would go back to A. And it's not just two on the boost, but it's one in red. It's another in Donut. They are all over the site. You have to feel like your tactical timeout was just the perfect reaction there. They had one player at B, and he was, he'd already left within the first 20 seconds. Liquid must feel silly now. I mean, you know, for, for Kadian, that's like a big roadblock kind of put his way, right? Like he felt like he'd found a bit of a golden goose in terms of how he wanted to approach this one. Vitsira is dead out in middle. Roman awkward as he comes through the smoke, but he gets out with a kill. Aristos falls in the meantime. Nice. Smoke break for Story. Nets him a kill down in middle. Now he's fast on the rotate, back and towards A. Ujerks here as well. 
Point still committed to a solo lurk over in mid, and he's not going to find anyone on this path to rotate. They know where they all are. They know they have to be trapped. Oh, no. They're cut off. They're stuck in the site, and Story is not missing a beat. He's had a phenomenal steer series, and he's crept into the third map with an outstanding start. Twist was late from B. And that's a good spam. Oh, they didn't, clutch cooking. Oh, didn't get again. him right away. They didn't get him right away. That's a alarm bell sounding now oh. for Saw, but Story steps up. Four kills in the round. Stellar on the AWP, and you were dead on. He didn't miss a beat throughout that entire thing. The smoke break over in red. The fast rotate back in towards A. Gets the donut player, and then his teammate comms about the man trapped in the site. And he's even there to deliver in the 1v1 versus a twist that has hot hands at that point, right? Yeah. Two kills on the smoke spam. It's hard to put a stop to him there. Oh, pushing him as well. Like, that's the last thing you want, but Story makes it look so easy. And he's been, you know, that's his best round of the series, no doubt. But he's just been reliable, it's felt like. On Inferno, he was never getting picked. He was, you know, often getting one out of his positions and falling back, rotating. Just a safe player, a safe pair of hands in this game today has sort yeah. of been. And if we're going to have him pop off in map three, that's a problem for Liquid. And he's a very mobile AWPer as well, right? Yeah. He always keeps you guessing. I mean, most AWPs are, but, but he takes that very literally. You see him, he'll fire off a shot, and that's it. He's gone. Other side of the map is the next time you see him next. And so he's kind of hitting his groove right now on this third map. Going to be a bit of a guessing game for Liquid if they did want to try and avoid that AWP. This is a, an interesting game because it's like, it's not how we've seen Saw play on CT sides this series. What an alliteration. Uh, oh, I'll get back to it. They're exploding out mid. Muterius wins that. Timing play for Twist, just trying to get in Saw's face. But they are so mobile, is the point I'm making. Think about how passive they were on Inferno, how fine they were to wait to the final seconds of the round and, and not do anything on CT side. They are constantly staying dynamic, moving, regaining info, making good gamble stacks. This is a very mobile saw, and that is causing a lot of problems for Liquid. Looking for a dominant half here, ahead of the molly. You just can just swing. That's ugly. Story's kind of pulling the attention away with that AWP. Liquid just want to avoid it altogether. They say, you know what? We do not want to go into that AWP. Ooh. They deal with Materia's over in middle, but there's the AWP now arriving. Missed shot from Story. Here he is, mobile Back as ever. Me. One shot out through red, and that's it. He's gone. That's a good read as well. And as Cadian's trying to get ahead of the AWP, he might just play right into its hands. Low HP on Story. Arastos, yeah, good mid-round decision here to start re-aggressing through main. Or he's got his work cut out for him. There's no doubt about it. As good as he's been, 11 HP. You're asking for a hell of a lot here from this orb, but they don't get the trade. Oh, dear. Story gets out on the AWP. Oh, no, Nafly starting oh, to pressure no. him, but Roman's watching his back, and so Naf walks to his death. This Story orb is tearing through Liquid, and now it's just Kadian left to beat. Fell down in the last clutch over here towards B to Kadian. But a name synonymous with clutching. And if there ever was a time for him to stand and deliver, it's now. Liquid need a lifeline. They need something. And Kadian's going to try be the guy to provide it. Can he survive the story orb? It holds him. It's got him trapped in. And if it nails this shot, it locks Kadian out of the clutch. Only given a jiggle, not given a clean fight. And Story locks it down. No kit on Arastos but full faith in that AWP. And how can you not, right? When he says, I got you, you trusted him. He's not missing a beat. And you put it perfectly, Harry. As they come up ramp, he gets a kill. He gets out. How does he survive after, after that first shot? There's no way. He's in the open. He's not playing a, a tight gap. Liquid need that trade on the B here. And this is a disastrous game right now. And I, I can't even really blame Liquid to a certain degree because this is a saw playing with gumption we haven't seen this series. They are full confident right now. They are destroying middle. They are running at Liquid. And they're I mean, making man, all the right gambles. Cool story, Forest Gumption. If he's going anywhere, he <laughs> is running. Be sure about it. <laughs> Out towards the site, they managed to get in. Twist is going to go hunting for this man in the cave. The cave man. Oh. And he fights fire with fire, but it will be a spam either which way, leaving this in a four on four. Low HP on Nafly. Oh. Spam connects to Twist. U Jerks doesn't need the vision. Arastos holds for the rotate back through middle and does deal with the first man in.
Ikindar's trapped here and there will be story six oh. minutes all, but a first miss that we've really seen from the oh. orb, but he makes up for it, doesn't he? No scope through the smoke. This is madness. What? Story's got homing bullets for crying out loud. 16 and 4. And he sends Liquid packing, running for the hills, his skulls. Sticks, stones, and now broken bones for Liquid. This is unbelievable. How does he find a no-scope there? And of course, Twist going back for the bomb just gets spammed. I mean, just unlucky, I guess, for Liquid, but some fantastic play for Saw in this map. Their best look yet, and you might right not think at the it, end, but Story's going to get this kill. They've seen it's him. actually Story's kill. They, seen there's, so other, there's so many other players on the line, but it's the Orbs kill. Thank Story, you, Chef. right place, right time. Excellent. What a game he's having. I, he is unstoppable. Like, Arrows Doss looks sick on Inferno. Yeah. This is like, this is something else. I want to see the nose game. I hope we have it. Yeah. Oh, you bet we do. Bam. Well, not much to see, I guess. <sighs> yeah, that's just twist getting spam there. It's just unfortunate. 92. Oh, wow. This is almost over. Liquid's T-side with nothing to show for it. Two separated rounds and barely a foot in the door with the exception of Twist's near 1v3. Late mid-take, haven't seen this position before. Story's got his nade ready as well to help. Oh, okay, that is a big opener. Mutira is so often good for a multi-kill. This guy's like a turret Don't and he's gonna dare. let them cross. Don't you me. absolute Psycho. goblin, look at this. One kill found, end of the line. They will deal with him, but there's Aros Dos. You're not shy of players that can just steal rounds away here if you're sore. All the stars have aligned, and even Ujax with a rough start to this series. Now looking good, lights out, a 10-2 half, a sore dominate Liquid. We're live? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's only mid, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can rush short and they can't go abs. Let's go. Flashing now. Boom. Blind. I flashed long, I'm going to library. I oh, cannot. <laughs> he picked short or? Yeah, he picked. He went back, I think. I'm coming too. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to play on uh, apartments. One came back short since I saw him. Taking short. Maybe I'm they won't. Uh, yeah, I'm going to. They flash. Flash short. Maybe he's picking. Going up short, going up short. They smoke side. Hold the flash for speed. In the back. I'm not picking. I'm gonna drop it. Yeah. Don't want to bike, don't want to bike. Yeah, just wait, just wait. I'm going closer. I'm trying to full slaughter for you. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Bro, let's move long and short and go to apps. <laughs> okay. Well, one time he like put a my short. One time he like put out the molly. So. Bless. Flashing. I'm going, bro. I'm being shot. Not coming. Dead. Maybe bike. I don't see him side. Okay. Uh, apps. In apps. He's not tired. Was it blind? No, he went in front of us. Maybe he catch him a little bit. Uh, bye? Yeah, yeah? I think yeah. it's last round maybe for the win or not? I think it's match point after this. I'm peeking short. One dash right. One, uh, one more mid, one more mid.
Still smoke from mid. I, it's one way for me, I'm playing. Nice. Easy. He went, he tried going fast long. Saw's so story here has been a mad one. He's having one hell of a game. Is the Saw AWP player just constantly in the right place at the right time and never missing a beat. That's after Arostar shows up in brilliant form on Inferno. He's kept that ticking over well into this third map. And for Team Liquid, they have capitulated here on their T side of Ancient. Barely able to get their foot in the door. Certainly had a couple of chances there, but never long for this world, it felt like. And so with the usual clutches not coming through with Open is not being secured and never able to stop the beating heart of story. This one feels like it's out of their hands. Liquid need a miracle here if they want to pull it back. Well, the Magician is in position towards the cave. They won't actually chase him down through the Molotov. He escapes before it dissipates and Ujux gets up ramp. They find the room. They know at least one player is here. They're about to find out the hard way. Yakida comes swinging and Liquid take a five on three before Saw give it up. Around Liquid have to do good on and must close if they're going to have anything here to say in the final map of the series. Story still in the crosshair, creeping out mid. Naf is tasked with watching the flank, but Story will regroup and they're just going to hit the B bomb site together. This double setup for Twist and Yakinda should be enough, but Ramp will be the goal instead. for a way in oh, and story so will provide it cleanly hard. done on the p250 that's the opener they were looking for one man still to worry about back in the cave nafly challenges from long but only gets away with a lick of damage it's twists playing next all left on arastos and he is run down so a far better look from liquid in the pistol it is a long road to recovery here they lost sight of Twist there for a moment. They found your Kinder on default, but just stopped considering that cave player from earlier. They knew the Julies were there, but still going to be a liquid coming through with, well, safe to say, a must win round. But a bomb park, you already know Saw going to come through with the guns. Expecting Galil's in the second round and an explosive start, trying to put liquid down before they can even wake up. 10-3 scoreline, you certainly have the breathing room to do this. Five Galils, two, three bits of util. Worth it for the firepower alone. Oh my god, he goes through the smoke, finds a gap, and he even oh, gets out. Oh, that's crazy. And if you're Twist, you're kicking yourself. You really needed that trade, but it just eludes you. And uh -oh. so now you just have to sit back in a 4v5, wait for Saw to make the next move. Oh. Already up in the sight. It's one from Nafly, but that's not enough. He's run down by Roman, and Ikindar's trapped back in the cave. There's a fast flank on the cards out of Twists, who's quickly taken up position in cave. Skulls looks to move through as well, and Twists will make that first incision. Backstab from Mutir is he's still a ways away. Inside of the sight, Skulls finds Arostos, but they're all waiting for this flank out of Mutiris. Story is just trying to buy a bit of time. Mutiris is the next man to make a move. And here he is arriving. They've got no idea. They walk right into wow. him. And so that is all set up for Mutiris to win. And he does it. He opens the round with that kill in mid. And then he continues being the elusive man. They can't find him all the way through. And has a massive effect on the round. And they're not forgetting he exists. They were looking everywhere. Skulls is holding long, waiting for a swing. They double clear cave. Liquid are checking everything but the flank. And that is a perfect walk play to set up a round for Saw. Soaring high in the sky right now as it's Liquid stuck on the ground. 11 to 3. The force by find to win. And Liquid may never begin on this third map. Aggression through the cave. The molly traps him. Roman just free damage with the HE. But he doesn't need to take this fight. Pistols can be problematic. Ooh. It's a good flank, but as good as Julie's are, three players here. 
this is, at least he's got the ammo. He's going to walk all the way behind. I don't full know. This, rotation. Is, this is wild. He might have the whole round here, actually. This could be everything for Twist. There's one. Util out, but he can't quite strike while the iron's hot here. Twist's nice. onto the M4. He is really trying to be the difference maker here on Ancient. But his teammates are cut down. That opens up a path into the B play. There's still one man here floating around. Saw staying mobile, but one step ahead is now Fly tucked in, lying in wait, still at the back of B, and that first kill is free. It's a 50-50 angle as they move in, and Naf deals with both of them. Liquid will stumble back to their feet there, responding with a force buy, and it's all from twists. Felt like they had good timing there. That's why they're going so quick. They didn't expect Naf in the bomb site, but after he hears double cave, he knows he can push in. And even though they throw that smoke, there's a CT player spamming the smoke, so they're looking the wrong way. If they let the smoke bloom, they could have cleared that. A little mistake. And Liquid will take that. They'll take anything they can get right now. 11 to 4. Fighting back with a force by their own. Saw. They don't want to let that build into anything problematic. Close it clean and go on to play Cloud9. And Harry, what do you think? We saw Cloud9 yesterday. If Saw were to close this game now, you think they have a shot? I think they do. I think there's, there's certainly a match for, for Cloud9, man. You know, I, I think even just the amount of output you would look to get from someone like Story. I don't get me wrong. I know Boomich was good yesterday on the AWP, but that was versus Rare Atom, right? Kind of a different level of gameplay there. I, I think Story would win in that department. And then I think some of the calls that Saw have, how fluid their game plan is. You know, Cloud9, I think, sometimes have to relish in just the, the, the grouped style of Counter-Strike, right? Keep it yeah. pretty simple, whereas Saw have a great understanding of how each player on this roster likes to play. And it feels like they, they, they really do play off of each other well. Now fly with aggression as an attempt to respond to that early death from Yakindar. Yeah, uh, they boosted in the mid smoke and the Akinda climbs heaven. It just couldn't have gone worse for Liquid, to be honest. It's a nice call to make when you don't have the util to, you know, molly the box and fight and stop that heaven climb up. You just get a five on four. But I, this is still a very difficult round for Saw. Couple of pistols, one molly, one flash. You can't block anything right now. Naf has his smoke ready. You're hoping maybe this A main Lurk can find room, but there's two eyes on the A side. Boost up. It's only going to force Naf smoke. Oh, what? He got caught a little bit too wide. Kadian running into the site. This is desperate. There's no oh. way. They're going to stop him in his tracks. Twist here behind the long side. Bomb is trapped by the Molotov. It will go round so it doesn't have to path past Twist. And Roman... Oh, he changes his mind. He wanted to go back for mid, but there's no trade allowed. That's the bomb loose. They've got a big flank. They're gonna wait for it. Ooh. Skulls is mollied. Not deep enough, though. He's allowed to hang out in this corner. Skulls left in this one all alone, and Aristos will chase it down. That one nearly gets wild. It nearly gets weird. Yeah. And Skulls catches them in rotation back around, but he had to be a one-man army there. He had to essentially, you know, 1v4 the entirety of... Uh, of the Saw squad, and that's just not going to happen. Yeah, and he didn't know that there was a red flank either, right? Uh, you see Roman just leaving, you're thinking it's a gamble, and then he gets blocked in by Molotov. Would have not picked that position if he was ready for red. Disaster I mean, even at the, liquid. the peace of mind, like if they're rotating back with the bomb like that, he's anticipating that someone's already cleared out A. He was watching Donut for that exact reason, but yeah, you don't expect that they're just going to model you and box you into that corner. You imagine you're going to get a kind of clean fight there. This is it, man. This is a done deal. It feels like Saw with fantastic form with an unbelievably strong CT side on Ancient and Liquid lacking. I mean, it's just so exciting, isn't it? You know, the fact that you've got Mutira is putting up performances where he's like a turret, man. It feels like he's always good for kills in these anchor positions. Aros Doss has been oh. lights out. Ujax has been one hell of a recovery story. And a story, well, he kind of writes his own tales here. He is the main character of Ancient. Bomb dropped outside of the doors, but Ujax is given the route to go back and get it. Oh, no! 5-7 the range, can't let you down. Good Molotov. Won't play off of it? Yes, they will. Kadian forced out, and Liquid lit up. 
That's just how many more heartbreaks can Liquid take. They they need the time to go back and uh, recover, recoup, try and build back stronger because this is not it. Saw run them down here. A dominant victory on Ancient, spearheaded by Story. Arastos lights out on the extremities, always pushing, always pressuring, and a fantastic game put forward from Saw. Sees Liquid's time here at Blast Showdown, brought to an ab abrupt close. Yeah, incredible game from Saw. Definitely a team to keep our eyes on, facing Cloud9 in the competition now, and Liquid lacking lands. London is not calling them. They didn't mind the gap. Well, there it is. It's a little long. It's a little drawn out. Well, not the third map. Third map wasn't long at all. But the series overall saw let it get all the way to the end. But Ancient, uh, no issues whatsoever. Other two maps, there was a fight. There was an argument from Liquid. This one saw start to finish. Uh, Bobski, that's that's a pretty emphatic way to close out the Yeah, and I mean, it, it kind of shows that the Amar maybe wasn't too random at all, right? Um, that Liquid maybe didn't deserve so much better of a seeding that they, what they got today was a disaster. Let's just be honest, losing to, to Saul. I know they're a very capable ancient team, but um, getting four rounds against the likes of Saul uh, on, on online Counter-Strike when you're in the comfort of your home and your usual setup, that's uh, that's not good enough. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I was just mentioning to you, like, it felt like that first half wasn't actually, like, nope. terrible from Liquid. They just couldn't close any of those rounds. We saw, like, the list of diffuses, the, the retakes, the clutch situations. Liquid couldn't come out on top of any of them. But um, I, I think through I think through a lot of this series, we've talked a lot about the struggles of Liquid and how underwhelming they've been, both individually and as a team. So um, I want to take this opportunity to kind of focus more on, on mm -hmm. the Saw side of things, because now this is an impressive RMR in which they've qualified. Um, a series in which they, they came in and handled business. They put away a struggle team, um, even if it was a little bit of a 50-50 coming into this. Uh, th this is a team that you're starting to see them flesh out and really show some of the strengths that has gotten them these good results. If you had to pick like one or two two strengths mm. to really highlight for Saw, like what, what would you say I mean, say I think it is? it's the, the momentum coming in from Ar Arash Dash. Uh, I think he's really interesting. Um, the yeah that he's not the star player and actually able to deliver against the likes of Liquid to this extent is super impressive because it gives a little bit of room to the other guys not to perform to the same extent and he's also so young in this team like he's not had a, a long career in this whole lineup so it's really interesting to see what can he build upon this surely there's going to be international teams right now looking at Aradosh and be like hmm, maybe we could use a guy like him because right now he's killing it yeah, it might be hard to pry him away from a from a national team that's starting to find success. I, I mean, this Saw team like continually just impressive with the way I feel like their their teamwork. They make so many good information plays, so many good reads. Um, you know, trading kills on the T side is super impressive. Uh, just just down the line, I think there's there's so many positives to take away for uh, watching Saw. You know, both at the RMR and and here in the showdown so far in this one match, um, they'll be taking on Cloud Nine. Is is who they move on to play in the bracket. Um, so that'll be a really cool test for this team, but. I mean, all signs continue to be positive. I mean, it also just looks like a team who have a lot of pl fun playing together, right? Um, when we look at Liquid, it feels like pretty pressured. Many players are almost on the edge of like hitting their yeah. table every other round they lose. And on the side of um, Seoul, obviously also winning a lot of rounds, but they look happy, they look on, on par. And we also saw when they qualified for that armor, what it meant to these guys. They didn't expect potentially to do it, but they did it and they've run on a on, on high note since. Yeah, and you can see the brackets that we brought up here. So Saw is going to move on, and that's our first quarterfinal decided. Cloud9 taking on Saw. Uh, Heroic and Metasport uh, waiting to see who their opponents are going to be. And obviously, we haven't even touched that upper left side of the bracket, so uh, that'll be coming in hot. Um, but still, things shaping up quite nicely. A quarterfinal finish, one match away from from the from the qualifying match to London for Saw. Two more best of threes, and, and we'll be seeing them in London. Yeah, I mean, the, the match against Cloud9 is very doable, right? If you can push Liquid, I'm not saying they are closely related in terms of what they're bringing to the table, but if you can win against Liquid in this fashion and what we saw at the Amar, surely they should be able to put up a good fight against Cloud9, who's also been seen struggling at times. Well, I think I think the parallel to draw there would be, you know, Cloud9 is a team that just recently we were talking about towards the end of last year looked yeah. disorganized, looked like nobody really knew what they were supposed to be doing, really struggling to get on the same page. And now all of a sudden they're here. They qualified to the major pretty convincingly um, and, and they're waiting in the quarterfinals now to qualify for London as well. So um, I guess I guess that's that is the parallel. If you're liquid, you look to Cloud9, you're like, we can turn the ship around. We can we can make this yeah, all I mean, work. It's also two big organizations in the likes of Cloud9 and potentially meeting liquid, but liquid 
Liquid not being able to show enough level to get into that quarter kind of says a lot about what the North American organizations is doing at the moment, right? They're trying to, to get out of the scene because the, the, the talent pool is simply not great enough, so they're going with these European, uh, East Europe rosters. So it's it's not going to be fun for many of them. It's going to be interesting to see if, if Cloud9 can hold on the pressure because they're going to be heavy favorites in that matchup. Yeah. Really will. That's going to be fun to watch. I'm excited to see what Saw can bring out. And speaking of Saw, we've got Muterus for an interview after the big win. He's sitting with James Banks. Muterus, congratulations on a very important win here to start off. I, I want to look at the first map of Nuke, though. It did feel like you had full control when you got into the second half, but especially after you got that uh, second round win on your CT side. How much was that needed for you guys? Because it was looking a bit rough until yeah, then. Yeah, we, we, we really, really need a... That round, it was really important for us because we lost that round as a ST. They forced and they and they break us. So five rounds as, as a T, and after that without pistol. Uh, well, the 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 good thing is that we 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 forced and we win the round. So it was really important to to win the game. And then coming on to Inferno, you guys at the beginning, it took you a while on your CT side to understand how to deal with Yakinda. You gave him a lot of space on Banana. Then the turning point, I think you were down 12-7. It gets taken into overtime, but it still wasn't enough. How did you feel as a team after that map? Did you feel like you should have won it? Well, it's a bit difficult to say that. I think uh, they played really well on, on Banana. And uh, we tried to fight at the, at the beginning. And after that, after the pause, uh, one thing that we said on, on TeamSpeak was to not fighting so much Banana because they they were uh, playing every round against four, four guys. So what we what we talked about was let's not fight, let's play more with uh, utility. And I think it was a, a good thing to do, uh, especially after those rounds. And uh, but uh, I don't think we have a, a really good inferno. I think we did some good things, but uh, they deserve to win that uh, that map. But uh, it is what it is. We we tried our best. Now, ancient, you certainly did deserve to win, and you did it in style. This was insane and full of confidence from you guys. Why was it so easy? Was there a specific plan that you had for Liquid, or were you just that much more better? Uh, explain this to me, because I can't work it out. Well, uh, Ancient, it's a map that we are really, really comfortable. Uh, they are too. So I think we, when Story is controlling the game, it's really hard to for the other team. So I think he, he just uh, found the way to, to, to break them. And I think he did a really good game. And when he's playing his game and uh, having the, the nice reads, I think it's much easier for us to, to win the game. So it was a, a great ancient from him and from the team. That was Muterus talking after the victory. This is the bracket one yep. one more time. Uh, Saw moving on to face Cloud9. We're going to start looking towards the upper side of this right side of the bracket. Complexity and OG facing off next. That's for a chance to play heroic in the quarterfinal. We're going to figure that one out next. Uh, initial thoughts? I mean, we're kind of we're kind of bouncing to the other side of the America's RMR from depression uh, to happiness as Complexity left the uh, Monterey, Mexico with a win in their hands and a ticket booked to Copenhagen for the major. And they take on OG, which is an organization whose team is always it feels in a i don't know like a, a weird a weird place. yeah i mean i think the complexity players surely have had a better flight than the liquid ones right maybe they are a little bit jet lagged and all these yeah. sorts of things but they can know in the back of the mind the worst thing that they can do today is they're going to go out but they're still going to sit in copenhagen in the next couple of weeks um, I think we have one talking point when it really comes to complexity is that uh, the guy with the same hair as yours, Elish, he is the, the difference maker <laughs> at this point. He has been an absolutely incredible... I thought oh, you were yeah, going for Grim. Grim. I forgot Grim, he joined the, the team as well. Maybe <laughs> I'm also going for you guys yeah. at one point. Floppy is surely also starting to just sneaking into the roster of that. <laughs> but uh, you also coached an NA team before. It would be an incredible roster, I am sure. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, your point about Alicia, I mean, clearly, clearly levels above uh, so much of the competition. An incredibly strong rifler, especially in CS2. He's been he's been absolutely crazy. Um, a big part of the reason, actually, probably the main main reason why they're in Copenhagen for the major is the reliability of Alicia's performances over these last few months. Obviously, Grim kind of hopped up in that series against Liquid to qualify and had a had a, a fantastic couple of maps as well. Um, but but this team, I don't know. It's it's always it's always weird. Like, it's great qualification, but against international competition, we haven't quite seen them reach the heights of what they did in the early events of CS2. Yeah. Remember, they reached that final out in Sydney, um, but they haven't been able to match that level. No, ever and since I think then. it comes down to when we're looking at um, Floppy and also Grim and Halsuk, these guys really need to take a, a level up if they want to get back to that level, especially Halsuk. When you talk about an AWP having finding impact, yeah. I think Halsuk is definitely on the lower end of what the, the current tier one AWP brings to the table right now. Yeah, I think that's fair too, because I think also, um, I think also, like Halzerk, when he when he finds games where he's having that impact, you can just see it's like a, it's like a different level of complexity. Um, they're going to be facing off against OG, and before we dive too deep into that, we've got an interview with Keto ready to go with James Banks. Now, if we look at blast groups at the start of the year, then we see you guys not qualifying for the major. It's been looking really rough for you guys. So, what have you been doing? since the rmr in order to to change to improve did you have a break did you just keep playing what is this og gonna look like here yeah we had a small break like a couple of days uh to reset basically everyone was like sad obviously uh we missed our main goal like what we've been working like really hard for uh like the last couple of months and uh it sucks for everyone uh of course so we had to take a small break but now we're back to practice practicing and yeah we just want to play as much as possible and hope we can uh, beat complexity today uh, so we can continue to play officials and blast and yeah other than that like we try to play uh, like online cups now because we have no lands to play mm -hmm. and yeah do you feel like you guys are still trying to find out how you want to play and and still also for you finding out how you want to lead yeah of course like we are still a young team like not only age wise but also like how long we've been playing together and i think you saw at the major like that some teams who play like um, a longer time together like they upset the bigger names on paper i would say uh, yeah. i think it's really important to have like good team chemistry and also for me like to uh, to uh, yeah to feel comfortable on every map and how i want to call and uh, like of course we tried uh, to have this at the major and it felt like good mm -hmm. in a lot of maps, but maybe not on all. But you can't force it, right? You have to just play. And like sadly, the major was uh, two weeks ago, and not not now or like even later. So we didn't have so much time. But yeah, um, we are still learning, but I think we are improving. And yeah. Do you feel like you've improved enough to be able to take down complexity today? Do you feel like you can actually give them a chance because? So obviously, in some of your games, you're, you're losing to teams that are a lot worse than, than what complexity Yeah, uh, I think uh, we can can beat them. Uh, I think we have to have a good day, uh, and I think we have a good chance of beating them. Um, but yeah, obviously, like they're the favorites, and we will see what's going to happen. We will see indeed. Well, Kido, thank you very much for your time, and good luck. Thank you. Lineup for OG, that was Keto there. Obviously, you have uh, Fiku, Regali, Nexius, and Heavy God coming in. I guess the two big names that you'd want to point out on this team, Heavy God and Regali, uh, Bubski, as, as two players who can who can really turn the tides and turn the fortunes of this organization Yeah, I mean, it's, it's my job, right, as the analyst, to provide uh, valuable insights into a team and try to find the positive notes, <laughs> but it's been a dreadful job for me to find anything interesting about this team at some point. We're going to have to be realistic and just be like, OG at these types of tournaments, they have been irrelevant. They're going to have to step it up a notch. They've tried with the younger approach, getting Nexus from Mouse, like the Academy project, going with the FICO, like they're going back to that grassroots type of level. But one guy that I actually find a little bit interesting is Heavy God. I think even though they've got annihilated mm -hmm. in most of their games, he's actually been performing to a, a pretty good level. I think he brings something to the table. But the thing is that they need more players like him to be able to attract the talent that is needed in OG. OG got some money to, to spend on players right obviously there's so many organizations right now fishing in the same pond of players when it comes to international rosters and i can understand why og ends up with a roster like this but heavy god he's the one for the future 
Yeah, it feels like they're still, uh, as an organization, waiting for that like one big tournament run or that one big success that will allow them to kind of bring a few more a few more top tier players in, right? Like to kind of really flesh out this roster from top to bottom where you can finally attract someone who sees some promise in the project. And um, at the moment, it feels like Heavy God is, is probably the best chance of actually producing that, that kind of a win and that kind of a run. And, and maybe it happens here, but I don't know if I'm like reading too much into it, but even just like listening to that interview from Keto, listening to Katie and earlier, you can kind of like hear how dejected it is when when you miss out on the major both these teams failing to qualify for copenhagen and keto even opened up with it like we, we failed mm. to reach our goal in our in our dream of, of qualifying for this major um and you can hear how hard mentally it is for players to kind of move past that level of a failure uh not to mention as well this team missing their longtime coach yeah. as well Ruga, who's um who's going to be moving on to astralis as well so you know it's, it's a tough time in the og in the OG yeah i mean now. it's it's always been tough for og right unless we go all the way back to the first adding rust i think it was actually pretty interesting but um from from a player's point of view i think it's good to have a, an initial one or two good players because it's going to be more attractive for other pl players in the future to potentially join but because let's be realistic like these five players is not going to make a major semi-final right there's going to be maybe one or two yeah. so if they're able to build off those players and do the right scouting now i also think it was fine to let Rocker go i don't know if he's a good coach or not but he's been in that roster for as you said five or f four years i think and i think it was time for a change like try something new try to get some new energy into sure. the team also on an organization level i think they had um to change uh, at the plan well, from, from, from changes here in OG to a team that really hasn't changed a lot, especially since Elise yeah. joined, like Complexity, Keto even admitting straight up, we're going to be the underdogs in this. Complexity um, still have a pretty high high opinion uh, around them, especially with, with the qualification just recently. It's uh, it's going to be Inferno, it's going to be Anubis, it's going to be Ancient as the maps. Is is there any pitfalls in this kind of veto process that you see for... for Not really. I think they have actually structured their ways of playing to have a, a pretty good map pool right now. I think also the guy in the picture, JT, is a guy who's been not really talked about too much. I think he is the main reason, together with Elise, of why this Rust has actually become such a dominant force, especially in the North American scene, right? I think we can both argue that they're currently the, the best North American squad, if you exclude Furia from that conversation yep. at all. Um, so it's interesting to see how he's developed into this character. He also, just from talking him, with him personally, he seems like a really calm and just a great leader overall, uh, a guy you really would want to follow, especially considering he left his home in South America. And this guy never complains about anything. Like we know these players, they travel a lot, but I've never heard JT go out in an interview and say, oh, my life is miserable because I, I travel this much, right? He, he said that <laughs> from day one. Okay, I'm leaving South America. I'm going to North America to pursue my dream. And he's made it all the way. Yeah, he absolutely has. And I think I think you, you hit on a, a pretty good note there because he's kind of had to grow into this role. I think there was a time when his leadership kind of looked a little bit ineffective, you know, early on and earlier on in his career and, um, you know, kind of questioning if there's not a better in-game leader around the America scene. I know I've, I've done that in the past with him. And at some point, um, he really started to turn a corner and you started seeing this complexity team and some of the rosters he's been part of play smart Counter-Strike, have some creative moves, some creative utility um, and some ways to pinch into the bomb site. And you both that with the experience of knowledge of of someone like a liege and all of a sudden you're cooking with gas and that's kind of what we're seeing out of complexity right now is, is a complexity in the right path in the right direction uh and now it's about seeing if they can uh, you know one more chance to make london and they've got a pretty good route for it i mean og here uh heroics not some unbeatable squad who they'd play next in the quarterfinals if they are to, to to win this matchup um and then all of a sudden you see what you can get after yeah, that i also think the um, one player we haven't really spoken about too much uh, grim actually uh, i think at said in an interview the other day that um, he's gonna have to stop yapping as much and just start playing his game right yeah exactly. Grim. and i yeah. think it's a really fun way of saying what grim is good at he's such a good aim on his good days uh especially after leaving that team liquid back in the day where uh, you were the coach if i remember correctly right um he's been yeah. on an upward trajectory when it comes to the individual level at least you feel like when you watch him on the server sometimes he just takes over games and especially before at least joining he was also a monster so he has it in him but he just needs to find it more regularly. 
and that's been i think the big criticism around complexity i mean grim's got all the skills in the world uh, you know i saw it in liquid as you mentioned and just it's not there consistently enough so then the the, the criticism level that complexity is like who's going to be there next to a liege more often than not is it supposed to be grim is it supposed to be floppy we've even seen jt pop off in some tournaments and have incredible runs is it supposed to be holzerk and it feels like complexity hasn't found that consistency at their second start but they better get it right now they've got og starting right now elimination game as they all are at the blast spring showdown to try and qualify for london we're going to send it over to harry and hugo to get this series started ah uh, yes complexity and of course og who have been a little disappointing as of late but have made roster changes bringing in another israeli endpoint talent we've seen many of them come through yeah. cole just coming off the rmr qualification to the major looking good but how do you feel about og harry I mean, here's kind of my elevator pitch for this game as a whole, right? Because I don't think uh, this is one that has necessarily the same majesty as uh, as like the Falcons game or the Liquid matchup that we've seen. But OG, uh, just down on the GG bet odds, complexity coming in as the favorites. I, I very much agree with that. But I think the way I would pitch this to you, the, the reason you should watch this with good intrigue, OG kind of a, a gatekeeping team for tier two. When you look at like their, their runs versus tier two, tier three opposition, teams that are on the up and up, they actually have a pretty good track record it's when they get to the tier ones it's when they get to the big names that's where og fall down so as a result they kind of fall into this realm of gatekeepers on the other side complexity sure they beat liquid out in na they managed to make the run to the major but whenever you look at their time actually spent in europe this year it's not been phenomenal we saw them fall down back at the blast spring gr uh, groups there they lose to navi fair enough they also lose to nip no one loses to nip wow. don't know how they manage that then when we get to katavica they're one of the first squads to get kind of cannibalized by spirit and get chewed out there and then they have a close loss to falcons so for me this is like a spirit level matchup i want to see complexity are they the favorites they should be or will they get stifled by this gatekeeper og squad yeah if anything if cold don't make quick work of this game it, it makes us question their form coming into the major right uh we haven't seen cole make deep runs since sydney last year so being liquid is good but how good is that really now that we've just seen liquid fall in the first round cole wants to at least improve upon that as a north american representation here for showdown boot camping in the uk as well getting ready for that london yeah morning. they said we're already in london yeah, mate. come on we better make it well og waltzing into apartments into this heavy setup and they lose some faces three four players in the apartments and all the kills come in so not a bad start yeah very very good look here for complexity lovely way to open and it's only Rigali left. There's always been a lot of hype around this guy, but yeah. expecting him to show up here in a 1v4 in the pistol is wishful thinking. Let's see how interesting he can make it. He's seen Grim tucked in. That's one. Now he gets the upgrade to the dual Berettas, but he's got a lot more left to do. Damage done on a Hauserk earlier on could be worth its weight in gold if he finds anything else here. He gets the info where two of these players are. Now there's only one unknown quantity, Ooh. and Rigali has more to oh. say. The dual Berettas can't quite finish floppy. They can't stop that flop. And so the pistol round will get locked in by complexity to open up. And I love this camera angle. Yeah, Jason, insane. you should have your camera like that, bro. That's <laughs> oh, great. You can't even respond. See, Ali, true, true professional. Yeah, he's got a bit of distance. From, uh, ultra zoom. Nice shooting for floppy. Side by side with his captain in apps. And is able to finish the job. But complexity forcing OG to full eco now in round two. Just a flash to explode. It's OG's map pick. It's one they've only played three times with this roster. With the latest acquisition of Heavy God, who has drawn a lot of attention. But they've lost it every time they've played it. So we're going to need to see OG's best game yet. If they want a single chance here. And, uh, you know, another team that hadn't made it through the RMR. They went from the open qual all the way through to the RMR. So easier said than done with how difficult those online qualifiers can be in BO1s. OG did it, but when it came to, of course, qualifying to the major, just falling a little bit short. So this event is of hyper importance to this squad. There is no slow start in showdown. MP9 picked up for Heavy God. Gonna go back to B. 
They had a nice double set up here between Hauser and Grimm. And it will just chew through OG nice and easy. There's Halzerk. Love his hair, man, in case yeah, you can't tell. Yeah, it's like you. you kind Modeled of... my whole life around him. Yeah. There's a lot of hair-based conversations to be had around complexity. I think they've got some lovely locks and lack of. It's a good look. I like yeah. it. I've done the whole, you know, shaved yeah, you head shaved your stance. Head just it's for good, the, man. Just for it's the vibe. Nice. Just for the feeling. Honestly, nothing beats waking up in the morning and you're already ready for the day. That's one thing I'll say. In terms of, like, time maxing, it's... There's nothing quite like it. Oh. Bit of a skirmish for alt mid to open up wow. this round. Floppy and Grim kill a piece, and they'll keep this even in a three-on-three. Trade three. locked in by Floppy. I want to see Floppy go hard today. I want to see him be rock solid, give them a piping. He's one of my favorite players uh, in NA. And when he's, when he's having a good day, Harry, he's having a great day. Floppy looking very confident to start this game. Big 3K pistol. It's a crucial trade in alt mid. And now he's set up back a pit. Hauserg can get info on that. He also might get caught in between positions. Keto with a kill. It's now all on the flop down in pit side. Molly goes in. He's still got a good position. That's a great shot for Keto. Three on one. Old Elige. Reliable. But a bridge too far here. Double smoked. And no kit. OG seeming like they've gotten on the board nice and early in this game. Yeah, Lee's just going to be left saving. And so a good start here from OG. Nice for Keto as well. He gets on the board early. Regali even going to finish a liege off there right at the close. And so we don't have to wait long to see a bit of promise shine through from OG. I think Keto is a very interesting player to look at here within this OG squad because, you know, you, you think about the kind of life and times of a player like Keto. He went from, you know, being a part of that starting five on the big roster. You saw him have a stint in their academy squad. You saw him then reappear, uh, and now he finds himself over here on OG with a whole new set of challenges uh, ahead of him. And so I'm always curious, you know, can he kind of rebuild his image here within this OG squad? Because he did have a couple of hard knocks there. Yeah. It, you know, I kind of agree with Bubsky in the sense of, like, it's just not been much to enjoy about this OG team for a while. The last, you know, real run, they, or they, they're just all, they're almost making it. Every time, like Rio last year, even the major in Rio a few months prior to that. Some really solid games out of obviously a different squad. But having a couple of pieces that draw your attention like Heavy God, like Regali, I think that is the draw for OG. Hoping that yeah. this can be the next big thing. You know, I mean, there's part of me that almost looks at this OG squad as kind of a, a shop window team, if you yeah. would, right? Like, it's more about players potentially coming out of it in the long run. And don't get me wrong, I don't think that's exactly what the the folks over at OG want for their Sorry. team, but yeah, not every team is the best team in the world. Sadly, that's really just one of them. Elige up close, going to get spammed out. Nexius finds him, and Grimm's followed up onto as well. That's Fiku chiming in. So low. A lot of damage done, but if nothing's found on the spam here, it might just have to be the save for complexity. Heavy God's even lurking around in alt mid, trying to punish players on the extremities. That re-smoke seals it. Not even an avenue for JT to fight. So Heavy God on damage duty at the end. Get these guns out of here and get OG off to a solid start on this T side. That's nice. This guy's got very strong mechanics. Just the one kill for now, and he'll duck out, giving OG their second round. Terrorists win. I, I still like that, yeah, OG aren't buying like the big tier one names, but they are trying to 
build something from the ground up, right? Like going for these younger players, you know, like getting Nexius out of Mal's NXT. Well, if yeah. you see, if you say, you know, good academy teams, good young players, Mal's NXT is kind of the place to start. Yeah. Of course. I mean, even looking past that, you know, you've got Regali, someone who was always hyped up yeah. and, and very familiar within that academy circuit exactly. there as well. And I think he has been solid. Then you have Fiku as like a piece remaining from the original OG roster, someone who I think has always actually been a very good and capable clutcher. I think he's very underrated in that regard. Very cool head on his shoulders for kind of clutch moments is Fiku. And then you have Kito, who might not have the same allure, but he's someone looking to kind of rebuild his reputation. And so he's going to be hungry, or at least that's what you're hoping. And I think with the challenges that have been laid out ahead of him, having to try and take a bit of uh, ownership, a bit of leadership. You you hope that that's going to be uh, the, the push to ignite a bit of a fire under him. So OG, primed and ready for a, a third round here. As the rest is just a formality. You know, you know, let's just bear in mind this idea of this being the kind of temperature check yeah. for complexity. How excited should we be? And OG are off to a hot start. Yeah, I guess potential is the word, right? Like, oh, close. Yeah, the Zeus, maybe. Uh, potential for OG. Unfulfilled, certainly. But potential nonetheless. And we're patient. We'll sit back. We'll wait. We won't wait forever. At a certain point, you have to ask yourself, you know, do you want to be one of the best teams in the world? Good start to this game, though. Complexity, fresh off of a plane, fresh out of Mexico. Beans still in their stomachs. And joy, jubilation from a qualification to the Copenhagen Major. Like said, I'm sure a far better time on the flight over here than Liquid had. And I think maybe it's not what Liquid want, but them being eliminated early and just getting the chance to go back and reset and mm. go back to the drawing board is probably for the best anyway. I mean, you just know for the second time they would have consumed some liquids there, but on the flight, having a grand old time, work complexity. Floppy opens up this round, Fiku kicked to the wayside. So OG left a man down as they try to break away and towards Top Banana, JT will repel that initial push in. So now OG go back to the drawing board, going to look to group up over here in middle. Middle. In the mill? In the mill. They're in mill. Heavy guard. That would be a time to show it. He's lurking on short side. They're going to take the bomb out long. As it gets a spot, but he finds out the hard way. Kito right now is hitting heads. He is entering A. He is kicking up dust in Complexity's face. We've got a Liege and Floppy on a crossfire. Floppy can't really move anyway. Can't really help a Liege because of this long control. And we've already seen Kito deck him in this position before. Oh, tap is close. Kito needs it. He finds it. Elige dead as well. And some great shooting from OG on this A side. Couple of rounds here to show for it. Four now on the T side. Kito. More of that, please. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm expecting big things from Kito in this game. Uh, whenever I get the chance, I always put him in a fantasy team. And I put him in neither of mine. And so he will have one of his best performances he's had in months. Just to spite me. Yeah. Well, I love that for him. Even if not for you. This is good, though, on their map pick, right? Kind of establishing themselves early. They dig themselves out of a, a real hole in this round, right? They get put on the back foot. They get locked out of banana. They don't get the real estate they were looking for. Complexity kind of had all the advantages there. And still, it's an OG round win with Kito opening it up. Some clinical shooting over here towards Long and then finished off by Regali. Seeing some just very slow, cool, you know, walking around the map, finding the gaps. I also like these new OG jerseys. Big fan of that. Looking very good.
I'm trying to work out where Complexity are boot camping, because to my knowledge is in the UK, but I don't know what facility. I have to pay, pay them a visit, Harry. Pop in for a cuppa. I don't want to see you, Hugo. Oh. I can assure you of that. They got bigger fish to fry. It's true. Just make sure you have some battered chips with that, you know. Yeah, maybe get some chips and like curry sauce, pour it all over. Very British meal. Yeah. Beans on the side. Cheese that hasn't melted on top. Mushy peas, why not? The full nine yards for complexity. Mm, pie and mash. <laughs> so here Collart trying to break away. Out towards the uh, the top of Banana, they want this to be their way in, and they yeah. do have a player to deal with here, but the rest of OG are kind of teed up for this A play. It's just Nexius waiting on the extremities. Complexity get this real estate over towards top Banana. Nexius moves in, nice. it's into that AWP from Hal Zerg. So OG have just lost their lurker. Suddenly it's like, okay, all we have is this real estate over towards A. They have to follow through on it. Three players in the apartments. Floppy to get past, which is easier said than done. His Famous delivers. Alij back inside of the site, you never doubt him. And with a bit of help from JT, Alij will keep OG on a leash. Damn, they got that dog in them, Harry. Great double for Floppy. And I like how the adjustment they make there at B, they try and re-aggress, JT's holding a flash, but they don't need the flash. They contact in, and so they don't actually give the warning to OG that they've retaken car. And so that's why this kill is so easy for Halzerg. Nexus, Nexus doesn't know there's an AWP on the angle. And yeah, they just have to commit. And the slow start to the round here for the OG squad. They just sort of fan out and look to take away control over the apartments, control over alt mid. They're not worried about Banana right now. They don't want to run in to that Halzer KWP, but they might not have a choice because he's switched it up, starting over towards A this time. Floppy and a Famous in the apartments. We've seen this one before. He even gets a spot. He sees a couple of players. Don't think he would have caught the bomb there, but enough info on the intention for OG to again go back to these apartment hits. A has been the game plan without a doubt for OG. Oh, he's annoying. Oh, Halzak still finds a pixel and takes Fiku out of the picture. Gonna rotate one back to B, even though it's blocked for now. Collar about to retake all of middle with Liege behind this smoke. A nice block at 40 seconds as well. Pressure's on OG there. Gonna have to go as this fades. Well, boost up could be nice. Hello, catching a jump for JT. He still gets a double. That is despicable. I mean, that's something you always like about JT, right? Is uh, he's not afraid to be very involved himself. And uh, he's showing time and time again that he is capable of it. It's a big fragger. Yeah. In game leader. He's a, he's a great clutcher. Probably pulled off one of the coolest clutches last, last year, I want to say, uh, against Imperial. I can't remember exactly where it was, but... Overpass, like 1v4 at match point. I think they went on to win the game, so. Yeah, very, uh, very cool player to watch. He should not be getting away with the double there, though. That's outstanding from JT. Just seeing a lot of. Very, we haven't seen an execute for OG. Every round they've won has been contact, like walking around on A flanks. Keto getting some kills. But I'd like to see what a B execute looks like. They're getting a lot of banana control. Sure, they've got to get rid of some util, but. Let's see something loud for OG. Nearing the end of their T side. Yeah, I mean, you know, thus far it has been pretty. Uh pretty measured, we'll say, from the OG squad. And I think they've looked to take many a risk. It's been quite easy does it in a lot of these rounds, trying to keep it slower. And it was it was working out for them early on, but yeah, I think now is probably the time for a bit of a pace change here. 
right? Because complexity, they've also been holding on to Util. They don't want to throw it all out early. They know these takes have been coming later in the rounds. And so you can look to offset that a little bit. If you pick up the pace here and now, how's Zerk run boosted across over in middle? Not given a fight early. And Rigali just sneaks under his crosshair. Oh, the boost up, JT was not ready for that. It's a good grenade, but it's a costly opener for complexity. They force a rotation. OG, perfect time to execute right now, but there's so many nades on this B bomb site. There's even a third coming over. Halzerk here to support with the orb. OG lining up a full exec. Call of Red this one. They trust and floppy the solo anchor. It's going to be announced. In comes the rush. Ugly spray for Grim. Someone Ooh. needs to save the day and maybe Halzer. That was nearly a collateral, but instead it's Fiku to run out and deal with him. A liege around the smokes. He'll only get one. It's spammed out after the fact. It's down to Grim at the back of the site. Big Grim. Big job. Can he do it? Here's the first step, they're closing in. The flashes are raining out from Spawn, but it's a little late from Floppy, and they're already clotheslining Grim, so he's dealt with Floppy left up in this one all alone. 1v3 required from the Flopster. As he rounds the corner, Fiku is just homed in on the angle, and so it's cleanly done out of OG. Nothing crazy, nothing convoluted, but just... The site takes done well from the OG squad. Yeah, and that was risky because they throw the wall smoke in on B. And they, it's because they want to take CT sport. They don't actually smoke it. And Hauser, he has a great position with the orb, but look at that shot from Fiku. It's a very quick trade on a pre-fire. Hauser never has a chance to get more than one. That's a suffocating B hit there where Grim whiffs and then can't get anything from backside. And Lee just gets spammed with the smoke by Heavy God. So OG competing right now very well. Neck and neck, taking the lead. And winning this round would break Cole's money at the end of the half. That would be a disaster. Yeah, there's been some big util damage done early on here, though, right? Keto is immediately brought down at 12 health. So once again, it's just this kind of group style. They don't have any presence of mind elsewhere on the map. Instead, they are just all in on going for this B play. Is there a smoke that will come down in time? We've got two ready. JT holding his, Grim on the jiggles. And here comes the rush. And it's jiggle piggle for Grim, but JT is the one who finds himself in the night garden here up close. They sneak in under cover of darkness, under cover of this smoke. Grim dealing with the wrap through ruins. First kill found. JT back at the site. The teammates move in up through Banana. Just needed to stay alive, buy them some time, and he's done that. Now they move oh. in. There's Fiku ready to deal with it. Him and Regali lock out the Banana play. And with just Halzerk left standing, I mean, we've seen them attempt these 1v3s, but you can't justify this one. Back to the drawing board for complexity as their money runs out here. That AWP is the big ticket item they're going to have in the next round. That's what OG wanted to do last round, right? The the full wrap through ruins. I love that play. You don't see that very often. And with so many players, usually it's just done to get a lurker and spawn. But they just guarantee the trade round coffin side. And the whole time, the backside player can't do anything because... He's getting held by Fiku, who knows where he is. That's why they swing out coffins, just staring. I think it was Grim at quad. So nice layers there for OG. And as, as Cole come in with a very fast flank because they were playing double boiler on Banana, uh, this smoke fades. It's a really awkward timing for a lead of Poppy. That smoke stays up. Maybe they can sneak in and stop the bomb. But OG, giving us something to root for right now on this T side, breaking the money as well in round number 11. So the chance for an 8-4 is definitely presented. Just a saved orb, the hero. I mean, with Halzek holding the line down mid, it gives confidence to the pistols to try and move in. Oh, you did all that on lining up just to miss it. Ugh. Alzerk. Ah. 
Okay. So well, in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. There, there was potential for this one to get exciting. But it should be gone now. I mean, everyone stacked up over here towards A, Ooh. with the exception of Grim. Heavy God waiting up close should just get rewarded for his patience eventually. He's doing a nerds impression with the MP7. Yeah, that's the one. Don't see this very often. Good gun, though. Great range. Oh, uh, Liege. And he's probably dead. Oh! oh. <laughs> Liege, I'm talking about. <laughs> Damn, all right. The Deagles didn't do well by complexity here. And honestly, I hope they keep the pressure on, mate. That AWP is trapped down in the pit. You know it's there. Heavy God has done all the info gathering for you. They want to try and take these guns out of play. They want to remove everything. And now it is just that big ticket item left. Ah! Alzerk falls as Heavy God it drops down from above. Nice. Ran past him there for a second, but he gets it done. Heavy God looking good. Uh, to me, Keto re really set this map off on a great start with some fantastic shooting. Killing Floppy in the pit, getting those... Arch flanks going. And now Regali's finally been given an AWP, hasn't felt the need for it, but it's right there for the taking. So if Cole want to go take some banana space, how's it got the orb? He might run into another opposing. Regali's setting up flashes from Ram so they can take banana and a fantastic grenade. Three players here, Cole want to fight this. Oh. A missed shot from Halzerg's orb. Grim attempts to make up for it, but Kito will not let them through, and he locks down Banana. He's opened up the route to the B play now. Complexity's best bet is that they can catch someone in rotation, and even then, it's, it's got to be multiple players caught in rotation. Oh! Fiku burns alive. So now they're going to try to get ahead of this on the rotates over towards B. Heavy God is still yeah. late lurking over towards the apartments. This is dangerous. He's going to join up, though. They spot two players. Ah, oh, Resmoke. Already gone through, though. Oh, good shot for Regali. Putting this orb to use. And last round of the half here, Elige. Nothing to lose but his life. And Regali will give him that. Eight rounds on the T side of Inferno. Oh, gee, they have not won this map with this roster, but they are looking to break tradition as we come into their showdown.
King Keto leading OG up against Complexity here in their first map of the series. It's Inferno, it's OG's map pick, and Keto, not just call him, but kill him, man. He's hitting headshots, some nice little BXX towards the end for OG, and some cool ideas in there as well. Uh, as Complexity, fresh off a flight, back from Mexico with a smile, have immediately been given a reality check. Yeah, they really have, man. Oh, <laughs> Keto getting a little too excited, it would seem. As uh, that's yeah, the one nailed it, man. Perfect. Nailed it, perfect. <laughs> and this is the guy leading them, right? <laughs> <laughs> we flipped oh. it on our end. Don't worry. Absolutely love that for him. Hundred ADR. Yeah, I mean, dude, he's, leader, by the he's, way. he's been playing fantastically, right? I, I think uh, you know you've you've seen a good look of Keto here. On the other side of things, for complexity, they've had a bit of a strugglesome go at it, right? For the most part, you've you've seen. I don't want to pretend like it's been anything out of this world. It's just kind of been, you know, nice exex done well from OG. And oftentimes they, they found the kills necessary to kind of give themselves the leg up. I mean, we so often say on Inferno, if you get kills in the right place, the round is basically over. You can end a round in two kills over towards B. And, uh, and OG have certainly been footing the bill for that thus far. Oh, there we go. Dolvaret is in a dream, a tiny little choke point. But it's Regali alongside him that ends up giving up that man advantage. Tries to go for the trade and is locked out of it. Nexius, they are in it. They are out through the apartments, but they're not looking at him yet. Grim will turn on a dime and deal with that site player. All in all, a great 3v5 and Kolob won it. <laughs> you can't lose this unless JT comes swinging. Oh, goodness. Okay. Well, he'll give it up after a bit of damage. Just staying alive is enough. It's going to distract them. Chase him down the wrong way. You got to break that window. And Fiku will finish the job. Okay. No kit, but nothing to lose in giving it a go. They got to smoke for the bomb. They need to kill quick. Halzak hits his. And Grim back in pit will not overpeak. The bomb is for him. And the round is as well. Complexity come through with a pistol. But they took the first Harry. And what did that mean? Nothing. True. I like how, like, Keto's camera just looks, like, weirder than it did before because of the, uh, the hit off. But yeah, tech pause. We're actually giving Keto time to fix it. Last CEO on the line, ringing him. Fix your camera. Yep. People want to see him, man. Keto's really tall. First time I saw him in person, I was like, damn. He's really tall. <laughs> you tall, bro. <laughs> it's like 6'6". Six, six. Okay, that is pretty, that is, I was gonna say pretty tall, no, that's really tall, I can't. He's not actually 6'6". Six, six. Oh, pretend. he might be. So he, what's the point in this? I don't know the actual height. How tall height. is he? It doesn't say on his Wikipedia, does it? He was towering. And I'm not, I'm not a short guy. Okay, James Banks is tall. Yeah, Taller okay. than James Banks. Ooh. Yeah, I'd say so. Damn. Yeah, he's tall. Damn, that there. is tall. I think James is 6'3 or 6'4. Really? Yeah. I'll believe it. Yeah, and if he's wearing stilts, he's even taller. He does like stilts. He does always have his stilts on, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. I don't know how to follow that up. No, you don't need to. I don't have any Let other like height-based stories. Floppy is rather average-sized. I don't think he's like... And he's like 5'10 or something, so... Yeah. As well. Interesting you know that. Top 10... You, oh, you like tall players? Yeah. Give me... Name the three top, of the, the tallest top, players. The top five in order. Uh, who's the tallest pro player? I'd say Keto's probably up there. Um, literally. Rain's quite tall. Rain is pretty tall. And he's pretty built as well. James. James in top five. Really? I'm trying to think. Is Jame that tall? Jame is quite tall. I'd say Keto's taller than Jame. Is he crouching down in that YouTube thumbnail with your Kindar? Must be. Is that the only way you know Jame? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. I, I measure from two I, years I, ago. I, I'm like, I'm like, uh, yeah, how like, how like Americans will do anything but use like proper measurement systems. I oh, measure yeah. all height in your Kindars. So it's yeah. like, yeah, it's about one and a half your Kindars. <laughs> one and a half your Kindars on, uh, on Keto. Uh, who am I? Am I missing anyone? I mean, you've named what? Two people? I've named three, <laughs> three people. people. Okay. You asked my top three. I know, is... Right now, it's my top three. What about Gade? Can we count him? He was pretty tall. No, he wasn't that tall. 
Wasn't he? I said pro players, bro. All right, come on. They don't do them like that. All right. Still better than you've Active. ever been. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's not a... <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> you got me there. Ooh. Whose stuff's broken? Let's figure yeah, it out. Come on, JT. He's just had enough. He's leaving. No, or is he going to go help? He's going to his hotel fix. room. He's, he's done. Yeah. This was his resignation. Jason Lake something. Goodbye, in. JT. I'll be like, what? <laughs> really? I like this. I like it being a little more free flowing. Like, you know, we can talk about the game as the game's ready. This is kind of nice. Oh, I like yeah. I like the slice of life view that we get into how everyone's set up. Obviously, you know, being on boot camp, you're kind of more so just looking at the at the facilities, but yeah. I like it. You got some sound dampening on the wall. That's good. So you don't have the echo. Elise loves it. Clearly. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. He's just enjoying himself, isn't he? Grim. Grim, best camera angle of the day? I do like Grim's camera angle. It is good. I like his facial hair, too. I know he's been trying... Look, he just cracked a smile because I said that. He, uh, he's been trying to grow, like, a, a nice beard as yeah. Grim. Yeah. Like, he, he's getting into the... Um, what's it called? Where you take care of yourself. Grooming? Yeah. Getting into that. He messaged me about it. Okay. But I don't know why. It's not like I'm like the reigning authority no, on a good, good beard. beard. No, you bro. Because yeah, like, if, if I shave my beard myself, it looks horrible. The, the key is you find someone else. You yeah. find someone who's really good at cutting beard hair and you go to them. Like right now, I cut my own beard hair. Oh, that's why it looks. And like it that. looks, yeah, it looks scuffed. I have like a little <laughs> round face going. Well, I think we're getting back in, folks. JT sat back down. He just said floppy, bro. You got to plug your mouse in. Here's how you do it. And hopefully. Manscaping, that's the word. Oh, okay. Although, isn't that also other hairs? I don't know. Hey. We'll find out. Stay groomed. We'll get Grim's bush up later. But here we are. Complexity. Guns are out. No money for OG. If you're just tuning in, OG put up a good first half, but Complexity have hit the ground running here in the second with a pistol under their belt. They're now looking to play catch up. See? And that's all the kind of contextualizing you needed, really. And we got to talk about other stuff. How exciting. Unfortunately, though, Harry, this round is a little hairy right now. And no barber will save it for OG. They've stacked the wrong site. Bomb's going into B. And that'll be a nice clean ante. But keep in mind, this is how the first half started. Cold pistol and full ante. And they've done the same here. They lose a Galil. It's a nice little save, but don't get too worried. Gonna be eight to six. And coming off the back of the America's Armour, I don't think Cole were ready for kind of pace that OG brought into this uh, this T side. Anyway, it was very slow. There wasn't no rushes, no explosive rounds. Yeah, nothing telegraphed. You were so. just out in NA playing like versus the likes of you know Furia. Yeah, you're getting run at. So, a different vibe now. For JT getting to lead T half. This is what I'm ready for. They get some guns. They remove OGs. And now the true test of the T side for JT. James has actually weighed in. This is the only oh, time I'm going to okay, revisit I, the height I, thing. This is like the last to. time we're bringing it up. It won't get mentioned again. But James did say Keto is either the same size as me or a bit taller. Hey, he's so honorable. he's giving him that. He's honorable. 193 centimeters. Don't know what that is in any other unit of measurement. Use a conversion. Everyone's got it. It's just in Google. So here we are. Keto is a tall guy and a tall order needed here as OG embark on their first rifle round on this CT side. I'm 185, so I'm like, you know, 9 tenths of the Keto. <laughs> Something like that. The maths may vary. Apps pop, cheeky. Heavy God's down and pit. These are the two stars of OG, but they're full blind. And Heavy God's got nothing. He gets a kill on the swing, but there's too many T's to trade. And Cole, just win the round like that. What a slap in the face. Regali never even got to see. And complexity, that's a nice, confident display in the first gun. Yeah, I think, you know, this is a very nice moment for complexity, right? Because in that first half, as you say, they were kind of playing at the, at the pace that OG were playing at, which was pretty slow. And I think complexity are a team that do quite well in the chaos. Um, 
And so here, where they get to set the pace a little bit more, I think you're going to see a far greater variety of paces out of the complexity squad, right? They certainly have that ability to slow it right down, give a bit more room to players on the extremities. There wasn't a whole lot of lurking out of OG in that first half. Heavy God did it a good deal, but it's not like he ever had like crazy rounds. It was really the exec that would win them the round. And so I think complexity, yeah, we're going to have a bit more of a varied game, a bit more of a roller coaster going on. Up until now, it's been kind of a... Uh, I was going to say a drag race because that's in a straight line, so it's the same pace, but then that's too quick. So it's like more of a, I don't know, what's like a slow race in a straight line? As the snail crawls, as they say. Yeah. Kind of like as the crow flies. Wait, a snail or a crow? <laughs> well, so like the rabbit I the think the crow would just Wait. eat the snail. This is your first problem. Pretty tasty. These crows ain't loyal, I'll tell you that. So, <laughs> <laughs> Nexi is peeking down through mid. Gets involved early on. As complexity take away apartments control heavily. You're on fire today. Eagle angle. Can he get it though? Body is not what you want. You want the head. Oh, a lead gives him. Epi God. Oh my, that's three. Despicable. Oh my goodness. He has shattered complexity. That is absolutely mad. That is absolutely insane. A heavy god indeed, a heavy hand. Liberal digs out through the apartments. And he's got bullets for everyone. JT is cowering in a corner. Terrified at the presence of a big deity, a heavy god. And hot hands now, he's on for the ace. He should get this. They should give him this. JT, a dead man, as Heavy God gives Ooh. us an absolutely beautiful ace round. That was the cleanest Deeg 4K I may have ever seen. That's, I mean. Look at it. Look at the angle he's got. Look at what he's got to play with, man. And then he just follows it up with this. And then down a short as well. Oh. Oh, we're all Deeg fans. It's the one gun that everyone loves unanimously. And so when you get to witness a play like that, that's special, beautiful from Heavy God. Speechless. And that's why people are talking about this guy. If you were doubting... Well, you're not anymore. Bloody hell. And that will pump you up right when... OG were ready to roll over on an eco round. Now they've got wind in their sails, sending down B with an entry from the AWP. Tito follows up. Heavy God still here in the bomb site. Haircuts to hand out. Nexius behind the box. He can swing on his teammates' contact. They're all coming here. Heavy God lies in wait, and the rest of his team here are around him, but they start to fall like flies. Heavy God's gonna have to stand and deliver again. Keto dead in rotation. Heavy God can't control the spray. And so they wrestle past this three-man holdover towards the A site. Regali hot on the heels with a backstab. He would love to make an incision now. Get rid of this crossfire between pit and site. It's a strong position for Halzerk and Elige. Bomb now getting planted. Fiku makes noise, trying to bait the peak out of this nice. pit player. And Regali will deliver. It's all on Halzerk now. Two kills to the good already. But he's got to finish this with four. He's got to finish this in four. The orb oh, will do it oh. as Halzerk rises to the occasion. Woo. And so from Heavy God running wild in the last round, Hauser gives us a taste of it now. This is heroics from either team to try and regain control of this game. What a display of individual ability in this game. This is a, a frag movie of a map right now on Inferno. Great shooting for Hauser. Gets that crucial trade to Heavy God. And man, Hauser closing clutches with an AWP. We've been seeing it all week long. And it's gonna be a long week. Another camera drop for OG. That one hurts to lose, man. Felt like they did everything they needed to with that double kill down banana. But Cole find a way to break in. JT on his last legs. Keeper's going to clear this, but it doesn't matter. JT, outstanding kill. 
flash play ready. They've got to wait the smoke out. Here it comes. Miku surely calling for it. There it goes. Oh, it's not clean. He had to get that and get out. Instead, Cole, hold the man advantage and get ready to explode out apps yet again. Halsek Hero in the last round looks to be a difference maker again, but a this shot from him. His teammates trying to get out through the apartments and they will deal with this double setup on the short side. That's ugly spray right there. And Heavy God, he knew what was going on when they saw the old mid. He realized they were probably walking him out. He had his teammates cover, but they both just get dropped on short. Information play for OG punished. And everyone low, but it just doesn't matter. Complexity level out with nine apiece. A tie game, but not for long. Complexity on the back of this round, on the back of four alive, they start to make a bit of money. They start to build up a bit of cash. Just a little bit residual, still knocking around in their pockets. For OG, they're broken. And so partial buy here at the very best, and that one M4 to play around. This is where Complexity can look to grind this game out and put a stop to OG's reign of terror. Put a stop to a team that you felt like would have been inspired after the heavy yeah. got ace round, like everything was going their way. They yeah, immediately got a 5v3 after that, and they still lose it. I mean, uh, it's crashing back down to reality on OG. No time to celebrate their success. And Heavy God, since that Deagle round, Heart must be racing. He's had two pretty ugly wins. Yeah, I, I think they need this pause. I think after a, after a round like that, the adrenaline is going to be sky high. You know, you, you're you kind of having an out-of-body experience. And you tell everyone, no, I don't need a pause. I'm fine. No, you need a pause. Yeah. You're not fine. Catch your breath. You probably think you're fine. You're not. And you're not going to ride that momentum. You're shaking. Your hands are sweaty. You sound like you're talking to yourself right now. I am. This yeah. is for me more than anything. But as a Deeg enjoyer, I understand it. We're right there with him. But OG, it might be all for naught here on their map pick. Complexity are creeping back into control of this game. Oh, a bit of an aggressive round. They're gonna come through the smoke though. Nexus, you're not ready for that one. They come running through the utility. Not a Deagle round, surely not. Regali hits his, and that's the M4 lost in mid. Dangerous, considering there was almost no support behind the play. But, like I said, you're not expecting Complexity to run through your deep mid smoke with no flash. I love that. Break the smoke, they check out Banana. Fiku's nowhere to be seen, he's got one to block. As OG can afford to gamble 3A. Complexity will put the pressure on Fiku. Rotate is nice, needed even. Fiku can't die with nothing here. He needs to really get his smoke off, forget the Deagle. Yeah, and he gets a spot. He won't take any more damage. Stalling the smoke, but he's only going to buy a few more seconds. All of the team here right now in the dark. Good grenade from Kito. Taxi going into the Lion's Den. Yeah, they are going into the stack right through the smoke in at top of Banana, in fact, but JT makes it work. Entry King. Heavy got dead and dealt with, and Kito left up in this one all alone. I mean, no harm in giving it a look in, I guess, but... Not long for this world. Complexity move up on the double digits. They deal with this partial buy. Ooh. I was gonna say they deal with it cleanly, but maybe that's not the case. It's just the one from the Yermin Yig. Powerful, but not enough to withstand the complexity who now face double digits. And it's nice to see OG, despite a very strong start, still complexity, come back into their own and show us the form that we'd want out of this team because if you're going to take that spot over Liquid at the Major, you need to continue in that stride. You need to show good form here in Showdown. A, a side of the bracket, they could make it to London in. And a major with expectation from complexity. There's a lot on the horizon for this roster. 
And right now they're holding strong. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I'm so happy about here is seeing Complexity remain, you know, resilient. I don't want to keep bringing it up, but after that heavy guard round, like yeah. literally we've seen teams, think about it, with Elise Gribbin, capitulate in the back of one hell of a play suddenly coming out of the opposition, right? But they keep their head screwed on. They don't let that one round define this game here on Inferno. Feels like it even, you know, pushed Halzerk a little harder. Yeah, had that big 1v2 right after. He's playing solid. J2 top fracking for complexity right now. That's kind of like the RMR, man. He he was having some really, really strong games, and especially on T-sides. You know, you often talk about in-game leaders entering so they can go in first. They can not only piece together where people are, but just sometimes just be traded because your in-game leader is typically one of your weaker, if not your weakest player mechanically. But JT sometimes throws that to the wind. He definitely has quiet games, but when he's just unleashed and getting difficult entries, yeah. It's I even remember those games. To watch. I even remember those games where he would be playing on like 200 ping and he would be going in first and he was still making it work back yeah. and go. Magali and Kito open up this round, so maybe there's something for OG here, right? If they don't win the five on three, they're not meant to win this game. Oh. Kill through the smoke out of Regali, and it's worth its weight uh -oh. in gold. Uh -oh. Floppy, hello, where's this come from? Oh. Low HP on oh. both of them, but it might not matter. Floppy's drop three. And this falls to a 2v2 now. Halzerk, he's already dealt with OG in rounds like this one. And he gets these long sight lines on the AWP. They're putting a lot of stock in this flank out of Fiku. So slow. They're putting a lot of faith in Fiku to come in on this backstab and open up the round. But to get past it, to get through this, you've got to get through Floppy and you can't stop him. You can't stop the flop here. Keto runs for the hills as Floppy, one shy of the ace, recovers that round. It, what was it? What a 2v4? 2v5. Fully 2v5. Locked out. They should not be winning that, but Floppy goes absolute ham on the OG defense. All poised for that first flash for Halzerk, and it gives him the perfect pathing. And it really is the perfect pathing. Not just clearing pit, he knows it's a crossfire, clears sight, gets into graveyard, cuts a rotate, who is not even trying to deep peek yet, just trying to get set up. And that that breaks you. Cole didn't break after heavy yeah, guns degrad, yeah. but that will kill OG. Yeah. No, you're dead on. And, and you know, this is considering, you know, my whole elevator pitch for this matchup was kind of the spirit level the judge complexity against. This is fantastic. They're, they're experienced in these regards. They, they they can't afford to get offset by having a, a crazy round go against them, and they haven't yet. Hey, five and they're the ones offering up the big moments now. They're the ones offering up the clutches. And 2v5 again, Alzerk and JT left up in it. Surely there's a limit to how many of these you can win. <laughs> yes, but surely you can't win all of them. Smoke down, would you like to say so? JT, no! no! It's not meant to happen like this. This wasn't in the script. Molly's go down, Palm will be allowed. We've got a flank down cop inside, but that oh. smoke has a few more seconds on it. And Halzerk, you stay a long sight line, you stay a big green. Well, he has to do it all on his own. Captain goes a step too far. Halzerk goes for the deep peak. Trying to cut this orb off. regardless has got to reposition eventually. They once again await a flank. This shot from the orb. That oh. gives Halzerk a chance. He's been able to reposition. He's been able to tuck himself in, but the pistol oh. brings him down. And Nexius finishes it with the deeg. Man, that was so winnable, to be honest. Like, if, if he pulled his pistol out after the first tag, gets that kill, suddenly he's, if anything, favored with that position. Nice try. Great entries from JT. Formidable round for Cole. You can never count them out. That's what OG are learning. Yeah, and, and, and that's scary for OG, right? You, it's not nice to be in a 5v2 and you're constantly worried that you're going to lose that. That's not how the game should work. It's not sustainable, surely. So at least they put a stop to this one. At least they lock this one down and put it in a box. I, this is a close game. Like the, it's, it's felt not as close because Complexity have had such a solid T side here on this comeback, but they had both pistols. They converted on both times 4-0 and at the start of the halves, and Complexity are only one round ahead. So, OG just doing their best to remain in this map. <laughs> Six chicken kills, damn. Guys are savage. 
Has he killed so many, man? That's that pretty, he only has eight orb kills. He's like killed nearly as many chickens as he has bad guys. How do you know the chickens aren't the bad guys? True. Compelling argument. I mean, there was no argument made. It was just kind of a statement, but yeah. interesting mean, at least. Yeah. Interesting at least. <laughs> Nextius. Haven't really had to say his name a hell of a lot. Yeah. Kind of been a bit of a non-factor here for OG. And he will get tested in mid. I like that change in setup. Last time, Cole ran through the mid smoke, so oh, he dear. throws it, and then he just gets flashed to peak mid, making sure they have Heavy him. God's back up on the balcony again. He's not got a deagle, though, Harry. He's got something even better. Basically, the full auto deagle, Hugo. AK in hand. Okay. Show me what you've got. He's been knocked down across these last few rounds. He's going to have to rise again on a Sunday. But a liege. Oh, you're not ready for that. Heavy God gone, and the Liege does it solo. No three on five antics needed now for Cole. They just break through with two, and that's got to be a save. Well, yeah, when you have the star-studded roster the complexity provide, those rounds come more often than they should. Yeah, I think, you know, for complexity, this one's kind of reassuring because while it's been cool that they've won so many, like, crazy man disadvantage yeah. rounds, that's not that's not really the way you want to be playing the game. You love it when you just get two and then the round is over. So that's exactly what happens here. Something a lot cleaner for complexity, and that's important in the long run, right? They were starting to run out of money. They were starting to have their backs put against the wall, and so this round puts a, a bit of a buffer between them and OG. They move on a map point, and they can even withstand a loss. So, Saving guns is fine here for Cole. They don't need to die on this fight. It's not very favorable, and they don't have the money anyway, so just play for that quick closer. Two chances to do it here in regulation. Awkward for Nexius, like you just mentioned, he's not really been a factor, and then he just waltz in, and Ali just walked all the way up short. It's a gap that you've got to consider. Yeah, and, and you know, that's one where you wonder, like, has that been come to cross? I think it's one thing for, for him to, you know, give up the opener like that, but if he's never aware that that's kind of a, a possibility, that Heavy God is back at the apartments holding only for the walkout. Yeah. It's a little more forgivable, but still, yeah, these are things that need to be going through your head because when Elise finds a gap like that, he's got the intuition, he's got the experience to know when he's further ahead than the opponents are ready for. I like this. And he tries to deal with Heavy Got up in the apartments, but locked out on that first peak. He's still floating around Ooh. here, but not needed. Heavy God takes matters into his own hands. Okay, three on five, back to me. They could break their way through. Grim needed that kill. Maybe they can block now. Smoke is in the face. Complexity still going to give it a go. They know they've got a three on two right now in the sight, but the entry is denied. Grim again over the top. Keto just needs one kill. Just make this look easy. And so he shall. Halzerk in a clutch. Never count him out. But odds against him right now. Even the plant will be tenuous at best. He'll stick it. And as that molly fades, position taken. One foot in the door to Valhalla already for Halzerk, and as he rounds the corner here, Regali sends him there. Locked out of that. Halzerk never given the chance in the 1v3, and, and so OG breathe a, a big sigh of relief. They, they contain another one of these 5v2s, and it's crazy that we have to track it, but we do. That one yeah. certainly had legs on it for a moment, right? When they break in, when they kind of recover, they get the bomb planted. That could have got out of hand. And so OG keep their cool here. In spite of this like clean double opener from, from Heavy got over in the apartments, that one could have got out of hand. And so they regain control. Now one round away from OT. Please, yeah. Uh, not, oh my God, Grim. Oh, <laughs> just got, yeah, got, oh, two ball, ball guys. Yeah. It's hard. Grim, he just full pogged. He thought they were going to win that. Can't blame him. But it. just shy of it. Yeah, JT okay. always looks so cool. Yeah? Why? I don't know. It's just like good face, good symmetry, nice hair. Very charming guy. True. But that's not really relevant to the game, is it? Right. And so we're one round away from OT. Right. OG going to yeah. try and bring us there kicking and screaming. They really, the fact they're in this is commendable right now. Like this has been an, um, like the eagle round was sick, but nothing built off of it. Oh my God, running at the Viku. 
almost gets that kill, but spraying from the bottom of Banana is grim. He gets that entry kill and will die right after that. They weren't able to trade the nade and the molly combo has blocked complexity at the top of B. I bet Grim feels like it should have been traded there. But Liege didn't go wide. Four on four here. Cole can still reignite this B site. Keto, is he just going to go for it? Holding a block. Trading smokes. You'll see the lurking bomb in apartments right now with two Ts. Trying to take on Regali. And heavy god, heavy hitters here on A. As Elijah attempts to sell a fake, he's only got one Molotov to do so. And they've just blocked an apartment. So this is not going to be easy for complexity. Help from Regali is big. JT dead over in middle. Elijah's trying to late lurk out towards B, but he goes oh walking into Nexius, who gets a nice easy kill there. And that's going to leave you with this two-man push out in towards A. Time is of the essence. There's under 30 seconds left. And so they've got to get past this Regali Orb. They've got to get past Heavy God. And then they've got to get set up in a post plant to withstand this. And that's easier to said than done. Regali dealt with. But Heavy God playing the long con, tucked in, back of the site. They don't clear him. He gets out with the first. Can't get past Floppy. And so Floppy has got to stand and deliver now. We've seen a great play from the flop on this A site with the bomb planted. It was a huge 4K round. He's got to deliver that again or else this is run back in OT and OG group together floppy tucked in at the boxes peeking up doesn't get the vision on them the first time around oh. and he can't recover the spray Keto deals with him and overtime is locked in as OG battle back and drag us into extra time yeah I, I, nothing but commendable nothing short of commendable uh, commendable here for OG to be in this game considering they don't have a pistol round they lost both ecos and complexity have pulled out a myriad of clutch rounds but as a squad, OG dangling still in this matchup, hanging on by a thread. Some excellent rounds coming out of Keto on the T sides. And Heavy Golden Regali locking down short side. 12 apiece. We restart the clock. We saw what happens when we hit overtime on Inferno in that liquid game. Suddenly. More risks are taken, liberties even. Banana fights, perhaps. Oh, brutal nades in over. And he jumps. Are they ready for Fiku, who flies it way up close, at least going to provide an equalizer here for OG? I mean, really, you know, this is a map that OG feel like they have to win. With Anubis waiting yeah. in the wings next, it's a good map for complexity. It's one that we haven't seen this roster play from the OG side. And, you know, that that leaves some wild card elements to it, sure. But they will be lacking that practice in officials. Oh, they lost the angle. Free peeking back in dry. You get what you pay for. Halzo looking for a head. Won't connect it. Fiku with a chance to fight for this round. It might be better call than playing a retake, but they are all patiently waiting for that reswing. And even if you waited, it would have been a man down. And it will remain the same for OG. They've got to give it up. Not what you want to be doing in overtime either, but that's how the cookie crumbles on Inferno. Do OG want to live and die by this banana fight? Especially when they're only starting 2B. Feels very high risk. We've seen a lot of teams lean away from actually doing anything towards banana in the current meta. Maybe dumping nades and going back to your bomb site and just playing that third player dropping nades or rotating or you leave Molly smoking spawn. You don't often see CTs teams do what they used to do in banana like old deep takes and i think the spawns in this latest change have also
ATs get way more comfortable up towards the half wall in the early stages. JT does it again, solo this time. Pre-smoke down for a Molotov. And yeah, OG actually opt to give it up completely. So JT, this is actually great for him. He can sell something before his team set up for an A hit. Even just him lobbing this util in, it keeps both those players there and it forced his util out of the B-hold. So that means, you know, they're gonna have that much less to work with. I think he missed the smoke. In this retake. Flash out towards the apartments and Fox gets the immediate trade. Regalis in hot water. Him and Nexius try to challenge for this top mid control. Try to give themselves a bit of a safe haven here behind enemy lines. Alzerk's not able to trade this after teammates Molly that denied any peek out through the boiler. OG trying to come through the short smoke, but Floppy is just too fast. He really is a bit of a master over here towards the A site. Put him in over towards Day with a bomb plant to play around, and he just looks like a beast, doesn't he? Smoke is going to let them get in, but the time is the problem right now, and it's part of a pit, so Halzak will happily keep his head down and wait for Oki to make an appearance. They've got to go for this. Can't save forever and over time, and Grim will shut them down at the first push. Someone needs to get on the bomb and hope for the best. They can't even find it inside of the smoke, and it's going to be complexity converting yet again. They even think there might be someone on. Not today. And the, the one, the only play I don't like that round is, is Nexius comes through that short smoke on his own, way before his team are ready. I don't know if that's his team's flash or his. I don't know if it, he was set up and just you know, following the play, but this swing, no one's prepared to trade. No one's set up on long to put pressure on. And that didn't feel like a play that had any more value with its timing. You could have done that later. Yeah, it's not like he's there on some crazy timing and has the element of surprise, right? They literally know about him over the ward short. He's loud on the approach. There's a lot of info given. And if you're complexity, you really only have two angles you're watching at that point in the round. Moto, which is smoked, and Sean, which is smoked as well. Regali nice. on that orb. Nails the opener and tees up Nexius for another kill. He's been very keen to do this. It's nice to actually see it work for once now because Complexity have been disrespecting Util for the majority of the, their T side. So Regali sets up Nexius. Both hit their shots. And OG fall back into a nice passive setup. They have so much Util. They still have a lot of info. They can opt to play a full retake on B with the advantage, that would be nice. Or waiting, and they're gonna give it to him dry. Molly will stop the mid fight, and Regali give it a second chance. Okay, out of nowhere, Nexius just destroys Grim in the middle. Oh, oh lovely nade, lovely nade at a heavy guard. We saw Keto's utility damage of 400 plus already coming into this round. OG have had some strong nades, and they should be good to close on one on their CT side. Yeah, regardless, he's got this angle locked in. There's players watching the cross, and JT won't be able to survive the night. Keto hounds him down, and so OG at least managed one there over on their CT side. It starts with that Regali Orp getting involved, teeing up Nexius, and when they get into that kind of initial five on three, they they ease back into the sights. They play crossfires. They play around the util. They're not the ones feeling the pressure there, and that was finally like one of these significant man advantages where you never really get that worried og don't give complexity the chances to make that competitive it's a one round game here into the second half of overtime and og's t side was really good Please, AWP down through all mid. Oh, see ya. But yeah, double orb CT. Maybe just feeling like he's struggling with the rifle, 11 and 20. He had a couple of nice T entry rounds, but got a solo orb on A. Risky, especially with his position. Holding deep into boiler, he'll go back to long, and we'll see this triple setup at B. Even a flash primed. After Hauser takes a shot, Grim can be flashed, or why wait? Yeah, he's gonna go in early. Tries to fight for even more, but ends up out in no man's land, and that's where Keto gets the better of him. And he did logs there, easy trade. This shot from the Elysee AWP. Uh -oh. It's getting hot. 
Oh, not normal. <laughs> nice entries for Heavy God. 23 and 17. The real deal right now, Harry. Yeah, I mean, this kind of like trifecta you've got, you know, Regali and Heavy God looking fantastic and then Keto oh, in yeah. alongside them, really trying to carve out a name for himself here. Haven't seen much from the OG OG member of Viku. <laughs> Hasn't been super needed. Nexius, you know, we said a few rounds ago, I haven't had to say his name all too much, but I like the way he's been playing around Regali. I like how he's been trying to, you know, use that as a bit of a leg up to, to give himself options in this game. And it's another round where Regali opening on the AWP is the difference maker. Complexity are frustrated. As far as they're concerned, this game should have been over by now. Regali still making moves in the start of these rounds. He is so keen to, to just ride this high and keep being involved in the early stages. What look do we have? Do they want to go to an execute? They have all of banana. Reset for the bomb. And with banana taking, it does look tempting. House look waits on that contact line. This is often good for a kill. Unless OG consider it, they can jump, they can fake it. Try and bait this shot. First round of Util, buying up a response. Alzo, it's his. That Molly's a problem, it's a double. He's got to run right through it, but no one chases. Grim drops a smoke at the perfect time off Halzak's kill. And even though the Molly certainly works, oh, Cole have a man up. He just misses that timing. Heavy God moves through the smoke as he pulls the pin on the nade. And so that's opened up a route to the A play. OG are not out of this round yet. They're still believing. They've got Heavy God on their side. JT lines up a double. There's the reply out of Regali, and it's left on a Fiku. I said this guy's off in great in clutches. This would be the time to show it, but he can't get past Floppy's USP. And so it's an abrupt close to that round there. Spearheaded by JT up on the short side. What a great position for JT as well. Floppy gets spotted. They're all just tunneled in. Vision on Floppy. And JT just swings out from the short side. Aggressive in the middle. Great tandem playing for complexity, not just Grim and Hauser from B, but these two as well. And this feels like it's slipping through OG's fingers right at the final hurdle. Be a harrowing way to go. Yeah, I think one of the things that's so interesting here is that Halzerk in the first round of this second half of OT, he was, uh, he was locked out of it, right? He never got to be involved early. So he tried to kind of change that in that last round. He gets his opener. He gets yeah. his chance. This is a map that's been kind of dominated in the openers by these orbs. And so both of them are chomping at the bit to be that first man involved. So it's all a question now of who strikes first, who's in the right place at the right time. They are surrounding a lead. He is in bloody water with sharks everywhere. Kito sends a flashback up B, grenade, using smoke. Viku gets his as a leech attempts aggression. He's been getting punished a lot on CT sides, but Cole have done it without him before. And they might have to do it again. Heavy God on an apps lurk. Here's that rotate, so we may see OG shift their focus towards an A hit. How's that? With that AWP scoped up over towards the short side, and he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders here. Have you got up in the apartments? Looking to put even more pressure on that first shot sails on past them. And so now Halzerg just going through the motions. But what can you expect him to do? Five players coming his way. He's got to do everything. Halzerg's got to do everything. And right now he's doing it. Regali will trade. The orbs clash. There's just enough time for the plant. Regali and Heavy God set up top of the board for OG. Left in this two on three. Will it be them? to climb this one through into another overtime or can complexity battle back. Regali's orb doesn't seem to think so. Now down to the 1v1 and Floppy looks to deal with this AWP. 
a missed shot. And oh. now he closes in. Floppy goes for the throw and Complexity snatched this one away. Right at the 11th hour, 16-14. And Complexity take OG's map pick. Excited. The stage is set. Who's gonna lift that trophy? No! What is that? It all comes down to the next three maps of Counter Strike. All right. Okay. And he can't believe it. Oh my god. Well, quite the map on our hands. So close yet so far from double overtime. This is the round that seals it. I thought it was done with, but Halzerk stepped up. He was one of the guys we called out and said had to have impact. And in this round, it's spectacular. But I mean, it feels like down the stretch, you got to give most of the credit for complexity over to Floppy. Bubsky. Floppy played an incredible yeah, game. I mean, he also the is the main character in the last round. Obviously, he does a really good sidestep here towards the end. It shows that he's really calm in this situation. Like, baits out the jiggle here, gets the off to shoot, easy peasy, and goes into the next map. Also means a, a devastating loss for Heavy God. Yeah, devastating loss for OG, devastating loss for Heavy God, who did a lot of the heavy lifting. Uh, he had a, that spectacular Deagle 4K as well. So many situations where individually he kept OG alive and fighting for this game. So um, yeah, losing Inferno in this fashion has got to be a little bit crushing for OG because it felt like they had it in the... Uh, 
they had it close enough to, to really taste yeah, the I mean, win there. Uh, we even see Keto, uh, the in-game leader, who's been on a downtrend when it comes to their like individual level, but he's actually stepping up in this one, and it's still not enough for OG to cross over the winning line. A game like this is a must-win for OG, right? They're gonna go out in the Noobies next, and this was the Inferno, which, in my opinion, is always like the most 50-50 map we see. I don't have any statistics to back it up, but just from initially watching and playing games myself on Inferno, it often feels like it's a map where equally teams can get a, a decent amount of rounds on the CTNT side. You know, this is—it's kind of funny looking at these scoreboards or the scoreboards, just because OG had Regali and Heavy got at the top, the guys you'd expect to be there. They had the extra step up of Keto with his performance with 23 kills. And you go over to Complexity, where you think it's—it's more—it's more like we talk so much about Elise and Grim, and actually those guys are at the bottom yeah. of the scoreboard. They had all the other supporting cast step up. Halzer, JT, and Floppy carried this one through for for the usual stuff. Yeah, but it also shows what type of roster Complexity is when when. Elish is not playing up to his level, right? He's on a 120 type rating for the most part of his complexity career, and it really changes the games. If he's not even remotely living up to that, it's a vastly different team, and we see the outcome here. They're playing a very, very close game to OG. Normally, it's a pretty, I wouldn't say easy game against OG, but they would do it more convincing. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I guess if you're complexity at this point, you know, close doesn't really matter remember they had that long trip over over from mexico after the rmrs um you know playing playing right away probably deal with a little bit of exhaustion a little bit of jet lag and they're just like we're, we're happy to have the win wasn't pretty wasn't wasn't anything to be super excited about isn't any kind of a statement game but let's just get the win and get out of here and yeah i mean for sure they're not gonna rewatch that game and be like that was the the way of the complexity right and it happens sometimes in these online qualifiers there's different stakes for different teams right og has nothing to play really they have to do everything in their power to to prepare for this they've had like a couple of, of days to sit and watch demos of complexity while on the other hand what complexity has been focusing on is probably getting a good night's of sleep and actually being ready to play this game at all so it's a it's a different perspective from each team but uh, the better team managed to win even though they had a, a less preparation yeah, it, uh, for sure. Um, and, and now we go into, as you kind of mentioned earlier, uh, Anubis pick for complexity is going to be the next map in the series. And I mean, interestingly enough, this lineup of OG across the last three months have not played Anubis at all. Yeah. They got nothing on record. So you're sat there and you're scratching your head and you're like, what What exactly is OG going to have for us on Anubis? And it almost feels like in this kind of a situation, you have to lean and rely even more heavily on Heavy God, on Regali, and on mm. Keto potentially to have a yeah, I mean, I think I said before the game that it's hard to be positive about OG because it's been looking so dire for such a long period, right? And, and there's not much data on the team either. And now we even get out to a map where there's zero data. So it's super hard to have even a remotely close answer to what they're going to bring to this game i hope it's going to be that comfort pick and they actually have practiced it a lot because they haven't been playing the armor they haven't been playing the big tournaments so they've had a lot of time on the server so potentially they could have a, a little secret there with their noobies but i'm i'm still thinking that the complexity guys knows what's up yeah, you're really reaching there for, for OG. You're scraping the bottom of the barrel. I, I mean, even if they do have something, you know, maybe, you know, hidden in their back pocket, some kind of a trick, or if they've been practicing it secretly, secretly, you haven't tested it in a live match environment, which is always a different beast, which always kind of changes the nature of yeah, the game. Yeah, but I also well. think we, we mentioned a little bit one positive, right? And I think it was Heavy God before the game, and he actually shows in a couple of rounds what this guy's made of. That 4K with the Deagle and the initial last one with the, yeah. the M4, it just shows you that there's some potential for this at least this guy, right? I'm not going to say this team, because it just shows you that first kill, the lineup there is so hard. That crack is yeah, so also small. So the initial wreck <laughs> that he's going to go on the right side of the smoke and just take that short duel. Not everybody's taking that. Most players without confidence in that situation would like take the first two and then go and sit in head headshot position and just hide and be like, oh, I got two. Let's just stay calm. But he's got a confidence that makes him able to repeak a couple of times and it works out. It's, it's kind of crazy to think about. I mean, Heavy God just kind of popping off like this and, and, and kind of rising through the ranks so quickly to get on OG. When you look, we've been cracking the joke for a while now, but there's like, you know, somehow just out of nowhere, there's like an Israeli yep. super team that you could build among the pro scene that would actually be like really like Sphinx, Flames, Heavy God, Exertion. Like you got you got players out there. You might be missing like an opera or an in-game leader, but I'm sure you could find one of those. And it just coming, uh, incredible talent coming out of uh, yeah, Israel. Yeah, funny right thing now. with the with the endpoint roster, right? They almost feel like they're picking up one or two players and their whole goal is like to get into top 30, maybe do a couple of tournaments well. 
and then sell off their yeah exactly sell like, the players. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a good business. I think also the players is understanding of what the the case of the team is, right? I think many teams could learn yeah. from what they're doing and accepting the the f chain, like the food chain uh, where they are, uh, because sure. many teams are trying to be too smart and all there like i think we had the statement to yesterday there's too many players or too few players for the good amount of teams there is right so people are left up picking these older players because they believe they can rebound but uh, i don't think necessarily that's the case well the it's like the importance of talent development has become such a big thing because if, if we want to tie that into this matchup right here it feels like that's kind of the angle that og has sort of taken is like take some of those potentials and develop that talent and nurture it to a point where either you know the team starts having better results due to the due to the step up of talent that you've brought into the system or um able to kind of sell you know those those more valuable talents off to higher teams and, and get a little bit of return on it but they haven't quite been successful it feels and it really either either guard if you think about it in that in those no, in they're those also terms. in an awkward spot where they're in the big tournaments right so you can expect them to be able to deliver results but um they've got caught in the middle of like the awkwardness of that we have expectations of them but they're still in the tournament so they're often just playing against really good opponents i mean if og would play a lot less tournaments like bleed or any of these sorts of teams it will have a different perspective of it of them but they're obviously a part of the blast system so they're gonna be playing every single season and we're gonna see them fall out once in a in a while or maybe like every time so it changes a little bit of how we view them as well and now they have the tough task of going into Anubis against Complexity, where we know this is a strong map for them. We just saw it. I mean, this is the map they picked in their series against Liquid to qualify for the major. So, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna pick a map in that kind of a match with that kind of a pressure and those kind of stakes, you know, you're gonna be supremely comfortable on it. They they destroyed Liquid on it, 13 to five, just just dominant from start to finish. So, um, this might be, you know, while this first map went into overtime, Anubis looks like it could just be like an easy wrap up for Complexity and settle them into I mean, a two. They, they would hope for that, right? They have gotten along. They have travel to get here and now they are sitting in a position where they probably just want to get it over with the 2-0 and, and just get some sleep and prepare for tomorrow because tomorrow if they manage to win today it's going to be a little bit tougher right so they need that time for preparation I also think it's uh, fair for, for complexity to be playing on day two and not be playing on day one because then it would have been an absolutely mess but it just shows you how packed the scene is nowadays there's tournaments once every other day and uh, it takes a tear on the on the quality that we see on the, from the players sometimes. Sure, that jet, that jet lag and that travel factor is, is always always an X factor in these games of, in terms of not knowing what you're going to get out of the players and the teams who have these long trips. Either way, as you mentioned, if they win tier today against OG, if they win just one more map, um, they move on to play Heroic in the quarterfinals, uh, and, and that that is a big step up. Heroic playing really well. So Complexity trying to wrap this somewhat up. This one up nice and quick is what I'm trying to say. Um, so they can get some rest and start focusing forward onto the matchup against Heroic. We've got map number two. It's Anubis. It's coming up next it's coming up after the break as complexity try and close this series out when we return harry and hugo on the mic to take you through it
Well, Inferno certainly got wet and wild, didn't it, man? Yeah. Complexity uh, able to to long that out and, and take it in, uh, in, I was going to say the full 30 rounds, which I yeah, guess is true, rounds, but yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> weird. Um, yeah, that one ended up being a bit of a barn burner, man. We had some great individual moments. Heavy yeah. Gob with one of the best EEG plays I think I've seen in recent memory, in I'll time. say, in a long while. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, alongside him, you had some great stuff out of the likes of Hauser, Floppy, all throwing their hat in the ring. They're able to close it out, and now we head to Anubis. Now, this is Complexity's map pick, and I've got some pretty bad news. I think these GG bet odds are pretty dead on, honestly. I think OG are going to have their work cut out for them here. Uh, it's not a map we've seen this iteration of the squad play, but even when you look back at the three-man core that's still been maintained in yeah. this OG squad, you're looking at Fiku, Kito, and, uh, and Regali, they never won this map. Oof. Ever. Oof. Yeah, and Oof. that was with... Vasher and Nexa. Yeah, Vasher and Nexa are in there. More experienced team. Yeah. You know, firepower arguably better for Heavy God. So essentially what you're saying is Heavy God has, Heavy to, God be has the, to be the guy, has the to be the difference piece. maker. Yeah. yeah. Basically, that's what has to have unlocked OG's potential that they never had on this map before. And I like the way that Jason framed it on the desk as well, talking about how this is the map the complexity picked to fight Liquid for qualification for the major. So you're damn right. This is going to be one they're comfortable on. Uh, one of their, their favorite maps. Yeah, recently not been playing it uh, as much. They had some trouble towards the end of last year at full final. But if you remember the Sydney run for complexity, yeah, it was a like lot one of it the was, backbone maps. Yeah, it of that was predicated run. off of this map. Four out of five times they played it, they won it. And the one time they lost it to G2, it was in the group stage. They went on, they replayed it in playoffs and they beat them. Dominant, like 13 8 or something. So it was a great map for them in the dawn of CS2. And here we are, you know almost six months later and yeah they're still rocking around and having fun on anubis i knew tc would have like a nice looking bedroom yeah, where's he been i know he has that his cam on yeah hey but look at how nice that is yeah, okay. beds made you got yeah. the decorative pillows on there bears in the middle it's all very put together as you know, TC's whole vibe is he's a very put together guy. He's smiling like we're having like a FaceTime conversation, no, like he understands. He's yeah. Oh, he's got a little water as well. well. Yeah. Just such a nice vibe. Yeah, the, the South Africans are very cool um, on this team. And actually, all the South Africans that we've had, like, you know, mostly over in the NA region, but I, I, there's actually a good amount of representation right now from that region. We have Mistem on Young Ninjas, who yep. played yesterday in place of NIP. Sonic making his return. Exactly. He was at the NA RMR yep. as well, uh, playing on the Stannis Law. So, yeah, we've had a lot of players come through that region. And, uh, yeah, TC and JT, old school here in the complexity camp around for a while now and they're looking to run through this showdown and take on heroic that would be a spicy game but they've got to knock og down a peg first and eliminate them here in two i certainly feel like that should be happening today yeah no i'm inclined to agree with you but like we say heavy god is kind of the the make or break piece it feels like here for og if they did want to long this out Biku, that one's free. Love that. Sitting in pizza, you just wait, and then maybe they give you the kill, and they do. So this one, all the makings of a pistol round for OG. First pistol in the series, it would be. Oh, wood being the key word, because pressure put on before the smoke blooms. They've got to replant. Oh, could have denied it there, Halzerk, but there is a player watching from jail anyway. Yeah, the thing that's weird as well is, like, Halzerk is waiting for his teammates to get set up, but... They start to consider Dark the longer he waits in there. Elysian, Halzerk, do tap out these first few players. Now back in main, Fiku's played his hand. Oh dear, Halzerk has a kill right here on a platter. That's Heavy God whittled down. The only man who can defend this bomb is out towards main. Kito's trying to close the gap now to make it happen, and he will get wrapped on, but gets out of there. And so the pistol round is locked in for OG. Nothing that Halzerk can do. As clean as that shot is, he's got to run for the hills. Yeah, that plant position was still pretty uncomfortable, right? Like, it was just open for long, but yeah, they were waiting on a CT flank. That, that was the original plan. It got denied by a player being behind that smoke. Still well recovered by OG, and I like the fast-paced temple flank pistol with Fiku waiting patiently. Got to clear your corners. And OG come through with a pistol. They're, again, they're on they had eight rounds T side of Burno, despite no pistol. And they're starting T side of Nubis. These are great places to be for OG, I think. It's a play their own game. Keto gets the call. And we saw, you know, I, the firepower is there. It wasn't just heavy, God. 
So, let's see what they can do here. Shotgun denied in middle. And if you run camera now, it's done. What if they don't? Cole have a chance. Albeit a small one, they've lost their dark player. That's just info. OG will just run into the empty site. Complexity are all here very, very quickly, and there's no smokes to cut off the temple rotate. Not down, anyway. There is one on Heavy God, but they'll just take the straight-up gunfights, and Fiku and Nexius are going to close that out. So we have OG sticking the landing on the conversions. They're able to break through the force bite. Shooting so far on a map they have not won. With even the core of this team, as you said, Harry, doesn't scream success, but even their numbers on Inferno weren't great, and they picked it, and they've certainly had some good ideas. So work has been done for OG. They've been in the lab. Yeah, you know, I think if you get performances out of Keto and Regali, even similar to what we had back on Inferno, like, you know, that's a very different story. Usually whenever Keto was in this old version of the team, like he was, yeah. I would say mid at best. Yeah. So, you know, if he's able to, uh, to get off to a rip roaring start, if you've got Regali dropping big numbers, like you want from the guy and hell, if you get a resurgence out of Fiku, it's like one of the, uh, the older faces within this team, there's, there's something cooking. So for what you're saying is everyone needs to play well. If everyone plays well, they, they probably win. That's. Hard hitting and probably true. Oh, denied today. Yeah, I'd say that's probably the best game I've seen from Keto in the OG jersey. Best map. Considering he's called. What would be his well. best game ever? What, what would be? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I can tell you actually. When he played for Big Academy after he got oh, demoted. Oh, yes, true. Dude, he, did he go was, ham. if you're part of my friends, shitting on kids. Like, he was destroying people, dude. He was he was going like 20 and one in the Academy League just every day. He didn't care. Please pardon my French. I was out there. It's been, you know, pardon, right? Is that uh, how they say it? Mercy. Mercy. Mercy, please. No, he was really, really good on that team. And then when he came back, he came back to big after a bit of time in the academy. And he, he actually looked solid. He looked like he'd, I don't want to say like reinvented himself, but he'd come back in with a better mind and better attitude and definitely better performance than he had prior to his benching. And but ever since then, he's been leading, right? He joined this OG team, calling for them. So definitely helped him he even talked in interviews how it helped yeah. him sort of get a better ride for the game doing a bit of leading you know and obviously when he very first joined the og squad he was under nexus so yeah. got to kind of see how it goes different in uh in these international squads all right util over towards this b site and immediately dealt with his jt it's very passive on the setup here and oh, that's brutal wow. like essentially you were hoping that both Grim and JT can win their individual fights and then everything will pan out. But that's a very, you know, idealistic way of viewing that. So Cole, doors are closed on this round, guys. OG are up 4-0. and And Fiku, still yet to die. He's having a great day in the office. Now, on this map. Ignore map one. Better time to show up on a map that complexity are very confident on. I don't think you can necessarily just expect them to have like, oh, they'll the two round CT side, they'll be fine. Like uh, you still need something here out of Cole um, on defense. They are the better team. They are the yeah, better and it, team. you know, this is like one of the worst ways for it to open because this first rifle round is weighted like pretty darn heavily and it kind of shapes how the early, the, you know, like the first half, uh, you know, I'll say the first quarter of the game gets to go, right? Like. You, you lose this one, okay, now you're kind of clutching at straws to cobble up another buy together. You're kind of half in, half out here in the next round with three players surviving. You'll have everything you need, but also not everything you want. So 
there's a limiting factor. And then if you lose that one, suddenly you're really on the back foot. You're playing catch up from like 06 down and, and the game feels like it's already gotten so far away from you. So this is a disastrous start for Cole and a great start for OG. And Let's was... see if they can course correct a little bit here and now, right? This is that buy where, as we say, they'll have everything they need, but not everything they want. They're taken by Nexius. Alongside Ikito. They just have to reset B. And Halzak is just playing for info. Uh, the smoke is a problem. The leech is going to go through. Going to fight with Halzak on his contact and swing. He'll need to. Everyone is here. Four players clearing middle. Oh, that's awkward with nades out. Elise comes in, floppy there as well. It's a massacre in middle. Three on two. In the blink of an eye, and that drop is heard. JT might think he's being walked on, though, so he doesn't go wide swinging. They now know they can hear this bomb. Pitter pattering its way into A. Heavy God has space already. Oh, nades. Yeah, that just gives him the safety to get across with the bomb. And that smoke's got a little deeper than you would have liked. They could try and walk out through it, so Heavy God's got to hold that. But Cole take no such risks. As far as they're concerned, Fiku is immortal right now. Seven and zero. And alongside the immortal man, you've got the heavy god himself. <laughs> the two pieces of Exodia here for OG. And they'll lock in that first oh. kill. Fiku follows up. Still flawless as he puts up a double. They turn that around in a two on three. They managed to get out with the win, and, and that's a heartbreak moment for Complexity. They thought they'd done everything right. They catch them on an awkward timing in mid. They put all their resources in the right place. They swing out. They take that mid control back. But it's that tiny bit of respect that's given by JT to Fiku on that drop down. That no swing, that no punish. And with Heavy God already deep up in the A site, taking space after so many players were spotted in middle, it all comes together. Four OG, five in a row now. I like this call, it's Eco, but they're full rushing with this util. That's a lovely nade and lovely flash as well as they dunk it through the window. Catches Grim getting aggressive. The issue with these kind of plays is it's so telegraphed. As soon as OG see that ace there smoke come down, they know what's going on. They know Lexi are pushing them. And so they come out of rugs and they flood into the canals. The bomb is a little ways away, but the kills will come so easily against pistols. Regal, he's got this one locked in. No. Oh, yeah, that's good cover. Swing and a hit here for OG. Eco is leaned up. Alarm bells are starting to sound, right? One of the things that we sort of talked about was how losing that first rifle can feel like a, a real punch in the gut. And it yeah. does for complexity. They are going to have that that prophesized 0-6 start before the rifles next come out. And, and that pressure never really goes away, never truly goes away on the CT side when you get off to a start like this one, especially not with now flawless rounds coming down the pipeline. A guy who's yet to die, about to hit 16K. Like, OG have got enough cash, really, to keep the buys coming through. Still halftime, it feels like. And Collar constantly going to have their backs against the walls. So, OG have posed complexity a really rough situation here. And, you know, we were kind of commending Cole for for not falling down at the, the heights that Heavy God reached on that first map, not letting it get to them and being able to re respond to the pressure. But this is a whole different beast now. Everyone is aware of just how out of your hands this game has been up until now. And you've got to come up with an answer. They want aggression, this time not over towards middle. They're looking for it over at main. Hauser don't know how he wins that. Regal, he was already on the angle. He even goes out for another. And Zalzerk is the hero here. Elige activated over in middle. And this is much better for complexity. I think it would have been so easy for them to just kind of keep playing back within these sites and having everything dictated to them by OG. But they're very proactive here. They make moves. 
Big money moves at that. And so this is how they're going to get their first on the board. Every god chance to showcase some of that individual prowess again. Goes back to check the flank. Ali just got him locked into this position. Oh my, what? Um, Someone called it for Yeah. What? <laughs> How does not he, only he still, not see him? He still didn't see him the second yeah. time around. That's what makes it like someone said, like, bro, you saw him mid, and he goes right back there. out, and he's like, How did Elise not see him? What's the angle, Elise? What's the angle? What are you What are you aiming at? Heavy God only sees moving objects. That's funny. That's I feel like that's like, Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Elise needs to workshop that angle. Yeah. That's the that's the lesson that learned. No, there. no, it's just bait. It was all on purpose. You just can't hit that head, you know. So you just get forcing the spray. No. Another aggressive smoke. They'll fight from dark. Elise Orping. He's really had enough of rifling today, hasn't he? He's been pulling this out. Yeah, I don't really like it. No, I don't. I can't think of an Elise or Brown ever, personally. I'm trying to think. Like, sure, you know, for the sake of, like, trying to feel like you are more involved in the game, I, maybe the trade-off is worth it there, but I still have yet to see him have delivered anything on the orb whenever he's gone and bought it out. How's Erg, though? Keeps delivering. Yeah. It's a good map for a double orb, I think. Um, on CT. But, yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement. Whatever floats your boat. Elise... Oh, he's giving in to the voices in his head. Yeah. All right, there we go. Heavy guard down and out of the round. Big scalp to find. Jiggle, jiggle. But he folds. You got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. And Keo did not get the memo there. Ooh, the use of all that. Wow. Tyson's the swing out of Regali. How does this get any more exciting than that? 2v4. Right, save. Fiku playing for KD. He was saving a long time ago. He's 9 and 1. That doesn't come along all the time. But of course, in reality, they're just saving so they can keep this AWP in play. They don't stand to make a lot of money. They're only at two stage loss bonus. So what's that? 2,400. So, you know, you're, you're saving more money on these players than you would get by looking for a way back in. That's maths. Win. Quick maths. Does that mean 1400 is zero stage? Wait, did I break your brain there? Yeah. Oh. 19, 24. Yeah, you're right. Three stage. Yeah. Yeah. You tried. Yeah, you're right. That's maths. Yeah, yeah, that's maths. Sometimes you're wrong. He did the maths. Yeah. I didn't do the maths. Well, you did it, just not correctly. Well, you know. You tried. A broken calculator's right once a week or whatever the saying is. <laughs> you get what I meant. Syntax error here. At the end of the day, the point is, they needed the money, Hugo. Yeah, you don't that's have to really the, the, the beans and butter of it. Butter beans. Again, this... 1-2 mid punch for Kito and Nexius, JT Molly back to A. Gonna come his way though. I, yeah, I was gonna say, smoking this is really nice because they just smoked Temple as well. They can't really go anywhere. They're just basically cordoned in middle for the next 20 seconds. Leave a lurker. Ooh, Nexius, that's something they need from the uh, other side. Somehow JT wins that fight, but I, I like the play from OG. How dark they go, and only a dink. That's a problem. Oh, but Elise is posted with the orb. He is an orb, I heard. What have you got? Oh. Nearly hits it, just off by a hair. JT, meanwhile, gonna follow up with the rifle, deals with Fiku, Regali back in main. Double up on the retake here, but it's the rifles making it happen for complexity. They're on the bomb. Elise chimes out with one, and there's Halzerk's AWP to deal the killing blow. Cole, this is a, a great turning point in the game, man. They, they, they were 0-6 down. They were really struggling. They had they were at the full end of just the economic woes of this yeah. CT side when you fall short in those first few rifle rounds, and now they found a way back in.
They seem like they're playing a lot more mobile. We've seen uh, ground starters fighting dark, uh, flashing B-long, but also they're giving up bomb sites to fight middle together. So they're just trying to run around the map and chase OG where the contact comes in. It did leave B open there, but that was a really clean retake for complexity. Nothing complex about it. OG in trouble now. They have this lead, but it's diminishing, as is the momentum. Can they hold on? I mean, they've done well to get six, but a split half is nothing to write home about. No, especially not like, you know, it would be the fashion in which that happened, right? The fact that you were in full control of the game only to let it get away from you and then like your opponent gets this massive leg up to build back in. You kind of had complexity. But they're underbelly exposed, you know, and you didn't take the kill shot while you had it. So, OG, oh don't want to feel like they just gave up on the fight here and let it slip away from them. Still a chance for a good T side if we're honest. So let's see, right? This, this round decides a hell of a lot. They're going to start to approach their limits of the money. All that residual cash starts to run dry for OG with a bit extra on Fiku, who was flawless up until a few rounds ago. And a little more in the coffer for Regali. But it's not like they can withstand these losses anymore, so... OG need this round. JT takes up position in dark. He's going to get mollied off here. Oh, they missed the molly, the second one, meant to Molotov the pillar player out, and that could have given a path to uh, to Kito to at least, yeah. like, feign the idea that he's in dark. He didn't want to take the space. He but... could have gone through the smoke because the, the, the layering of the molly, the yeah. first one's in dark, the second one's outside of dark. That means JT has to leave. He can't play forward. So Kito's just guaranteed to go through the smoke safely, but it's good they called, they failed it, or he might have run into JT there. Oh, okay. He Saved. will recover it. Bit of air time on that flashbang. So there was a chance for Floppy, but Damn. the rest of complexity starting to fall like flies. Halzerk's going to have eyes in the back of his head here. They're out through mid. They're out through main. Halzerk is sandwiched between OG. Oh, and with him dig down low, it's going to come down to this push out through main. Even though JT gets that, it's swiftly traded, swiftly dealt with. And I think the fact that Complexity even go for that round there is wild. They just have really good timing. I feel like Halzerk was going to fall back and hold. And then if they suddenly grab a double kill on main, he can progress and tighten that net. But in all reality, they only play because their timing. An OG trade out well. Halzuk was already saving. Nice work from OG. They just blindside Allegiant middle. And really good flashbangs. That's what I'm noticing in this in these T sides for OG. And they're supporting their mid players a lot from canals by throwing A window nades. Sure that flashbang in A main was not ideal. But even that one to get them out camera to blind Halzuk was perfect. So the util's been solid. Keto, the king of flash assists in this match. OG win the half at worst. Sweeten the deal. You want to break the money of complexity and lock in Ooh. a 9-3 uh, a first half here if you're OG, and that's not a bad way for it to start. Would be brutal. I'd love it if, if you know, Floppy was dropped extra nades here to keep kind of chaining them over, right? OG have loved to sit at the T-stairs and wait to see if they get this fight out through dark. It's free damage. just goes walking right Whoa. in. JT, lightning fast trade, short, straight back. But it's still the advantage with OG, and they're just not moving a muscle. Like, they are set in their ways with where everyone is in this default. Minute on the clock, they're going to try and take middle instead, finding the weak part of the map, and they've read it well. No one's here. Allegia's gone back to reinforce A. 
can yeah, take a main. It's nice, right? This is like yeah. a good setup to have with the AWP and M4 working in tandem. It's a strong site to have that setup on. But and with the aggression from JT, that's really the the big part of the round, right? He's kind of confirmed it's not this play towards B, and so they're ready for the A split. Elige on the AWP deals with that first man in, but his call repositioning, and Floppy can't pick where to look. Smokes off main, tries to help Elige, and ends up falling at the hands of the heavy god. Should save, really. Shouldn't even look at this if you're JT. I mean, there's another round left in the half, and they've not got the money. So, yeah, get out. OG already hunting in the value of this gun. Heavy God in position, and great round out of him. That A main lurk finds great timing through the smoke, and he denies that gun save. There'll still be some rifles, maybe even an AWP if they want to crowdfund it, but we won't have five fully ball players by any means for complexity. OG, uh, this is out of nowhere. They've never won this map with this... Well, they've never played it with this five. They've never won it with the core, with different players. And right now, Complexity's home map getting trounced. Kalsuk has an orb, a couple of MP9s, and a dream here for Complexity. OG, this would be a very dominant T side. It already is, but they want to sweeten the pot. Yeah, I like the Halzerk isn't starting middle. There's not really been a lot of action there from OG, so he's trying to look for other avenues. Uh, they, they do go mid. That's not to say they don't play it, but usually it's later in the rounds, right? And so he's not really got to be involved on this orb whenever we've seen him leaning mid. That kill is given over. Nexius collects it. Halzerk with this orb. This would be the time for a Halzerk moment if you're complexity. You kind of need it. It's just a little... I feel like he gets spammed here. Yeah, it's just a little too shallow. Can't see. Keto's in the corner now. This is a gamble. I'm going to go with the AK. Now I'm definitely going with the AK. So, nice shots. Room's crossed on the left. I get overlooked, Keto. Oh, he doesn't check it. Double kill potential, but he's not ready for heavy guard. Late out from guard. Grim gets a double. Halzerg, we've seen him in these crucial points. Stuck between the rock and a hard place. Picked by the orb. It's floppy in a 1v1 for the half. He's going to go pushing, going to go fighting. And that means that Regali locks in a, a dominant first half there from OG. As they look to long this one out, they want to steal Anubis away. concerning lack of faith in this map in their pool. They've started picking, you know, a map like Train over this at times. This is a big nade. This is spam to follow. Zimax is a genius. Three kills. That is so beautiful. And even gets a fourth. Go for the ace. And you're going to get it. We've had a couple, I mean, that, that, that round from Pit where he gets the triple spray down. Oh, hold the phone. Rain going to be charging right through. Boomich on the other side. The MP9. Oh, it works so well. He even gets the last bullet shot there. Taking down Twist and he's back with a quad kill. That is outrageous. I'm just excited to be watching all of play, actually. 20 seconds and a little bit of a smoke to, to try and create some space. He's going to go for it, but it's low percentage. And it is an ace at the end. Going into phases, coffers. Oh, double smoked. Big mistake. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Although they're coming right through and they're going to shut down Ray. Oh, no. Oh, my Lord. He's just took down four people <laughs> in absolutely no time flat. It's Daps alone on the other side. What an absolutely absurd performance here. Now sneaking through on the other side. Daps is waiting. And one more headshot. That's going to be the most ridiculous ace for quite a while. Would use the Molotov back there. Although if they did, that obviously would be a, a, a godlike decision. We'll see. Here's the fight early on. Flamey's still alive. Simple's waiting, biding his time. There's one good kill. Another follow-up. Big double for him. And the third one to add on top. What a monstrous quad kill. Taking down four people. Back in it. He wants these. Let him have it. He's almost crossed into it. It's just Kenny left. He's a bullet away. And he's right back there. Simple trying to see if he get it done. And he, oh, there it is. The last one is in. The pistol ace comes through. And that must be crushing to G2. It really messes with him. And they're going to pick up the pace. FaZe is not going to slow down. Oh, Naf, the only defender here, the smoke. And he's just in the angle. He's waiting for it. Timing is everything. He's going. Oh! It can't be real. Didn't see anybody landing the triple right to the smoke. I've never seen anything like it. 
And now, at least they're gonna get the bomb plant, but FaZe are being robbed once again. Naf, he's still in play in this round. On the other side is Rain, and he wants more. Naf, have you no mercy? He's gonna pick up an ace in the round. An unbelievable performance. Oh dear, if either Jax or Hunter goes down, that's it. That's a disaster. Jax is on his own, and they know exactly where he is. He's trying to escape, trying to reposition, just to make it a little bit tricky, but he's gonna have to get at least two more kills here before this round is even close, and there's one of them hiding inside the smoke. He oh. might be a genius. He's taken down Masutra, and now the pistol's out. What a godlike play from Jax, and he's still baiting them out, Whoa. continuing on top. What Whoa. a god! That's the ace from Jax. I've never seen anything like it. OG having the time of their lives here on Anubis. They're looking for revenge after Inferno was snatched away. And even though this is not a map that this team have played, not a map that this team historically have ever found a win on, they might get one here and now versus a complexity that have, you know, don't get me wrong, kind of had mixed results here. But this is one of the home maps. This is one of the confidence picks for this complexity yeah. squad. And they're in dire straits, Hugo. Where, where are the complexity that we just had in Inferno, right? Think about some of the flashy rounds that Floppy was giving us, some of the you know, starred clutch orb rounds from Hauser. We need some individual prowess right now because even those odds are closing, even the chances, the door is shutting on complexity yeah, here the, on their pick. The worrying thing is for Call, it's like if you don't win the pistol, you don't win this map. And it's not going to start easily. Double push on A main. There's even a third there. Floppy's got his knife Ooh. out. He wasn't ready for that. Keto was laying up flashes. They're going to have to pop in B. Are they ready for, for, for Regali? No, oh, they might never even see Regali. They might never even find Regali. They don't know about Regali. Ten rounds. OG looking to make this quick and clinical and take us to a third. I did not have that in my prediction sheet for today. No, you certainly didn't. I don't think anyone did. This was meant to be a dead to rights game after Inferno went in the way of complexity. But OG are hungry for it. Double digits secured, pistol round found. I mean, this one, I don't want to say it, but it feels as good as done. Oh, yeah? Huge Byron. You just said it, though. I, well, no, yeah, I know. I, I, acknowledge, I don't want to say it, but I'm saying it. Okay. Bad news. It's like, you know, like a car crash. You just can't help but not look. Wait, no, but... You must look. You must look. <laughs> that's you not like to. a rule or anything. But no, that's... You, the carnage, man. You just can't take your eyes off of it. Heavy God. Heavy God. In the water, on the fountain. Oh, with the scroll wheel. Vito comes swinging, MP9s come winning. And even the Galel, not enough. Great dink, wow, Keto is looking sick. They're all dead in an instant on that A split. 11 to three, just take us to the third. Hell yeah. I mean, it feels like we're destined to get there, doesn't it? Complexity, they, they force ball into that round as well, so. If you were hoping that they could find something in the next, I've got bad news for you. This is definitely a worrying sign for complexity. They've probably had a, a long travel, maybe not the best sleep, and I'm not trying to make excuses, but going into a third map, after getting wrecked, your energy is going to be not in the best place. That's for sure. And OG right now, this is going to be you know the, the, the best win of this team's or this roster's formation. If they can take it, they're getting hyped up. I'm seeing Keto on the cams get loud. Trying to inspire the squad. And he's certainly doing that with his performance. He is still playing great like Inferno. Fiku 12 and 3. Oh, gee, can they end this before it even begins? Another force buy for complexity. Desperation. Yeah, I mean, that's Cole trying to give themselves, like, any sort of lifeline. You know, if they ecoed here and what, then they have to win nine in a row and, and win the game in OT. Like, that's just not going to happen. So, yeah, this is desperate times, calling for desperate measures. And there's a gap over towards B long. OG have found it. Nexius is right behind them. Perfect. Really, there's, like, there's no win in this round if you're Cole. Uh, OG have all the info. This would take a miracle for complexity to find it. They are in the smoke, though, so Nexius walks right by. Thinking it's a very heavy A attack. He's not wrong. Three players here ready to go. 
Ruger flashing this. It's a bit risky because they can just buy time. I'd love to see them try block. They've got a molly. But it's all the way on the other side of the map. So layered heat. Another flash is perfect. Kito gets his kill. His flank is closing in right now. Regali up in the heavens. Live his yeah, death. so they didn't know about the mid players. No one was set up to watch oh. mid. Nexius probably said, like, yeah, I saw no one. And it's true, he didn't. They were hidden in the smoke. Grim left up in the 1v2 in a must-win round, and he's cut down unawares. Nexius is backstabbed. Shaw sure, might have given the wrong impression of where they were. Might have given the idea that there was no one out in middle, but he makes up for it, more than makes up for it, with a double kill on that backstab in through main. Yeah, it does feel like a surprising oversight considering there's the whole doors area. Like anyone can be tucked there at any point. It's what Nexus was doing all half, just taking doors and fighting a liege. Far better map for Nexus as well. Young player off of Mal's NXT. And yeah, a liege is ready for Ancient because <laughs> disaster has struck here on Anubis. We were not ready for this one and neither were complexity. OG have got fight in them yet. Triple B hold and the orb. Starting to rotate out, not a great timing. But they're gonna come. Oh, uh, the main play is open right now and they will come barreling through it. Piku is out on a bit of an island there and he will get Dealt with by a liege. Regali rotates in the orb. Nice. Suddenly brings OG back into the fold. They could end this one right now, right here in this B retake. Gonna try and walk the smoke, but Keto. Second smoke goes in. Said it's Regali to make the next move, and with that shot missing, this one might oh, be the save. Oh, he wasn't ready for that. Just get swung. All right, one down, nine to go. Eight to go. Oh, yeah, math is so easy. I've solved yeah, it immediately. Well, you know, man, I mean... Yeah? You know, man. Math is hard. Here's the Keto. Not denying that. The numbers guy trying to crunch him, but dealt with back at the spawn. Yeah, okay, look, that's one round for, for Cole. You're that's what it, it is. Are you saying that's there's the, a chance? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm saying that's that's really all it should be, right? Like, they're, they're so far removed from this. And honestly, they, they feel a bit just like... A bit out of it. Even when we look at them on the player cams, it's not like the usual kind of determined looking faces. Nothing's worked. I think this is like a, one of those games where you want to get up, go splash some water on your face, go wake up a little. Because you're going to need to if this one ends up on Ancient. OG, really bring the heat here. If you remember that first map, it was a grind for Complexity to close that out. Oh, close. How's that? Oh god, oh, German Deeg. No, not the German oh, Deeg. Oh the, god. The Polish Deeg as well, Harry. Oh god. All the Deegs. Loads of damage done. Floppy is wounded. Uh, and now he's dead at the hands of a USP. Keto's grabbed the gun over in middle. This might end up against the pistols. No. This might end against the pistols. And I think he did he not see the bomb. He didn't turn around. He never turned. He never turned. He never turned around. He doesn't know. They're in B. No bomb, but they're fighting Fiku back at the site. They deal with him. Now they look at the minimap. Okay, where's He's the bomb? Keto the knife out. Here they are. And because Halzerg's going back to get the bomb, Keto's caught unawares. <laughs> Halzerg's B250 with the reply. That's a round where you realize after you've lost it. Oh god, they didn't have the bomb. That's why they're just swinging. They're looking for fights. They're trying to hunt players down together. And so that's awkward for Keto. He looks silly, but he thinks, oh, I have this great flank timing. They've got the kill on B. They're about to part. No, nope. they're just they're just running around. They're looking for you. Nice shooting for Alzerk. But I mean, that was always meant to be a call round. OG just made it interesting with a couple of opening kills. Disappointing, but you can win it right here, right now, OG. Fall by. Even the ace there, smoke the call frequented. Oh my God, He's getting shot in the face. So Keto sends it. He will fall after one. Nexia swings window as well. I like there's layers to this fight for OG. They push A main. They send it dark. They fight middle. Battered and bruised. They still come out with a 3v3. And they don't stop at that. Silence all across the map here is complexity. Hope that... 
They can catch OG getting aggressive, but because of where Heavy God is, there's no more aggression to come through. Floppy should fall for this. Clears him, but Heavy God wins that fight. Favored in the engagement, and now when they learn about him there, they know they're going into a two-man hold over here towards B. They know that both players for OG should be stacked up on this side of the map, and it's all about finding them and dealing with them, and they can't. Regali and Nexius lock it in, and to this one, the scores between OG and Complexity will be settled on Ancient. Welcome back to the Blast Premier Spring Showdown. Happiness out of the OG camp, a surprising uh, upset on the second map, Anubis, that they hadn't even played in three months yet looked sharp on, or, or Bubski, did complexity look a little I mean, bit we, dull? We tried to sell it before the game, right, saying that uh, maybe they had practiced it since they didn't have too many tournaments, and uh, it surely looked like they had a, yeah. a plan, but it's also, again, the German in form of, of Tito, who actually makes a major difference. The guy who's been under, under the most criticism on this roster, if you take it to my side, he's been looking, I would say, a little bit confused in the role of the IGL. He's always been that first guy you send in. He's never really been the, the tactical mindset, but all of a sudden he's the IGL, and it, now he's also performing in OG. Um, that's a, yeah, I mean, that's a good look for the future if uh, he's going to be the IGL, right? Sure, and I mean, I mean, certainly at the very least, a good look for today in the sense that, you know, he's now had back-to-back -back maps where he's put up a solid performance and a solid showing and good impact to get his team this time uh, to a victory on Anubis. And most importantly, obviously, extending the series to, to a third map. But I, I mean, still, this is, this is a surprising win for OG on this map, considering how we've seen Complexity play it in the past after they just demolished Team Liquid back at the Americas RMR. Um, and I think also surprising in the sense that individually still... Uh, 
um, I think I think you can tell to a certain extent this isn't like to to cope or to make an excuse, but I think you can tell they've had a long travel day because the the power wasn't there on this map. Uh, and then then that brings into questions: Can they keep things up throughout a whole three maps? We should also take it into the eyes of, of OG, right? And I understand Complexity had a rough travel day up until this point, but this team probably went out of the Armas or like the qualifier, and they've only have one thing in mind, right? And that was this tournament. They've been practicing out of their minds, likely, and trying to prepare. Sure. Prepare even for all teams here, uh, while the other ones were playing them. Ah, OG were back in the basement playing uh, some face it, like grinding and reel out, because they need this opportunity. So it's also a little bit about who is on a hundred percent right now and who's on fifty percent. And it definitely looked like OG is playing the best Counter Strike we've seen from them in a, I mean, in a long time. I've yeah, I mean, we talk about this frequently. Like when you when you fail to qualify for the major in an event like this, like it kind of becomes your your yeah. major in the sense like this is now like the new RMR trying to qualify for for London. Like this is kind of the biggest thing on your schedule all of a sudden. So yeah, OG certainly has a level of investment where complexity is like, man, we just want to rest. <laughs> Obviously, not thinking about that if you're a player, but you know it is it is an exhausting and grueling thing. It still can't all be contributed to that because it is solid play from OG, and we saw some very cool ideas from them on the map. We saw some very cool. Uh, executions and responses um just just complexity not looking as sharp on anubis as we we would have thought so now we get to move on to to the third and final map of the series of, of ancient um and how og can potentially upset complexity across the whole series now instead of yeah, just i mean one they're map. gonna have to to get their mindset right because regardless now it's gonna be a long day they're gonna use a lot of energy today the preparation if they were to win that third map is probably gone to or at least diminished to a, a small amount so they're gonna have to really get their heads in the game if they have any aspirations of going to London because now the, the energy feels a little bit dead from the outside. We also saw the player camps. It's not the most motivated guys uh, I've ever seen in my life, but uh, we saw the winning reaction on, on OG side on the, on the, um, when they won that first or second map, sorry, compared to the first. Yeah, and I think too, if you're if you're also OG, you're sitting here and you're like, okay, we lost this at the spring groups, thirteen to two yeah. to Falcons. We lost the Apex, thirteen to five. So like, you know, if you have some time off, if you have a break, it's like, let's revisit Ancient. Let's 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 iron some things. Yeah, and out it's also this. an issue for the team of uh, complexity. Let's say they had time to prepare, right? Let's imagine that JT, JTC and JT is is sitting on the plane with their laptop out, trying to download some demos with the shitty Wi-Fi on the on the airplane, right? Trying to get the demos down, get the initial feeling of what they're gonna right. meet. There's almost none on OG. They don't play a lot of officials compared to the other teams, and it just changes the perspective of how a tier one to two team actually prepares for a game. Yeah, and, and I think uh, to, yeah, I think that's that's a good way to put it too, because OG just just gonna just look at so so much different stuff, and I doubt complexity really had a whole whole lot of time for it to to begin with. But um, I mean, ancient, we kind of know everything. We kind of know how this map is played in mm. a general sense. You know, obviously the, the the details of each team are gonna change, but complexity is gonna have to deal with aggressive mid, have gonna deal with that B lane control. Both sides are gonna have to deal with it. And it's gonna come down to kind of who, who executes it better. And I think the nice thing to talk about OG at this point is we don't just have to focus on heavy god and regali like at this point do you kind of expect going into this third map i don't know keto to continue playing with this kind of a performance like such an upswing from what we normally see I mean, out of they should today? hope right because now he's already in the zone but it should really be the other guys like regali and heavy god and also nexus really to step up and and take that initiative of, of making the difference but right now it's the the igl of german um so I'm not actually sure if we're going to see too many more secrets coming in from OG. I would love to see them have more stuff prepared because we spoke about it a couple of times now that they've had a long time to practice for this. And we know that Anubis, sorry, Ancient, is one of the most utility-based maps. They can come out a little secret or two throughout this series that I'm going to be looking for. Yeah, the utility always always going to be an important thing. Although, on the other hand, if you have Heavy God just holding out a spot on the map and shutting down Complexity's access. Although, I mean, if you switch the, if you switch sides of the coin and look at it from Complexity's point of view, um, yeah. Alish can do something very similar. So uh, Grim is, is, is sharp on this map as well. Um, we just need those individuals to show up in a way that we didn't get to see them on Anubis. Go back to that first map where we got Floppy with the impact, Halzerk with the impact. Let's get an America's team a little bit deeper into this tournament. I'll root for it if nobody <laughs> else will. Uh, regardless, winner of this map plays Heroic in the quarterfinals later on elimination on the line one of these teams is going home og complexity third map it's ancient it's harry and hugo they're coming in right when we return from the break so stay tuned
Nikito the King right now, single-handedly saving German CS as he leads OG to a map win on Complexity's pick of Anubis. Kito went crazy, almost 100 ADR, 5-0 in opening duels, all while in-game leading, all while flashing his team in for frags. It's great to see OG playing well, to be honest, it's probably the best game I've seen from them in a while. Yeah, no, this is a very, very good look at OG. And I mean, you know, one of the things that we said coming into this series is kind of our pitch for it, right, was the idea that this is like a, a bit of a spirit level check for, yeah. for complexity. Because whenever we see them come to Europe and play versus top tier EU competition this year, it's been it's been kind of gnarly, right? Uh, OG, meanwhile, kind of exist as like a, a team to gatekeep these on the rise teams from, from ever breaking into the upper echelons and they themselves struggle versus tier one. You know, I've actually really really liked what we've seen out of OG here. You know, Inferno, they, they, they push Cole uh, to their limits. It kind of goes both ways there, and Complexity did end up winning it, but then Anubis was, like, super clean, and that's clearly a map that that uh, OG have been putting in effort on behind the scenes because they never won it with the core of this squad and they hadn't played it with this iteration of the uh, of, of the team. The GG bet odds still in favor of complexity. You're hoping that they kind of went away after that last map. Yeah, reset. Gave themselves, you know, a little... little Slap on the face, a little bit of water on there, wake up a little bit, kind of try bring themselves back into this because their Anubis was super flat and really, you know, it's it was only how Zerg performing. Yeah, it is the question on whether Complexity have the energy to long out this this long day and uh, in a 4-3 map, BO3, after an overtime in the first map, they only just squeezed through on Inferno and then to just get destroyed on, on one of your better maps in the pool is impressive from OG, but Ancient is one where OG have a lot more data on for both sides, right? They themselves play it, they enjoy it. Complexity as well have been, you know, running it regionally. They even uh, beat Falcons on it recently. So yeah, there's some there's some data for Complexity. I, I hope they can reset mentally after that one because they did look very out of it. Elige slumped in his chair and just some frustration showing for complexity. We've already had Liquid lose earlier on today and be eliminated in this single limb format. We don't want to say goodbye to our second North American team, especially when you consider the third North American team. Yeah, the third North American team, Harry, are playing tomorrow. And who are they playing? But Spirit. Yes. It's not going to get any easier. No, it's not going to get any easier. In fact, this one... That might be the hardest game. This one was meant to be the easiest. Yeah, actually, it kind of was. Yeah, Liquid Saw was meant to be kind of second. And the other yeah. one's just impossible. Yeah, uh, it's literally, literally, that's, literally yeah. if I'm elevated and I see that bracket drop, I'm like, well, <laughs> I guess, hey, let's enjoy the flight over. Yeah. Uh, you know? Hey, it's going to be cool to be out there. Yeah, for a couple of hours. <laughs> that's not the game you want in a single limb against Spirit in their current form, especially now that the bracket for Spirit is so open. We don't, I mean, I don't want to overrate Falcons, but like if there was going to be a team that could stop Spirit on their side of the bracket, it was meant to be Falcons. And sure, they lost fair and square. Metasport played the better CS yesterday, but Spirit should have an open qualification to London. So I, so I imagine, Harry. I mean, they've already made it to the world final at the end of the year, uh, just off the back of winning Katowice. Why not throw in a spring final as well? Yeah. See, like, I don't know, OG look very, whenever I see him on the player Vibes. cast, I mean, that's, you know, when, you, when you're like, when you're a Regali here, you're used to a late night grind set. You know, you're used to the uh, the late night pugging. I mean, I think it was him when we were in the Academy League. Yeah. He kind of was like, he was great one season because there was no school, right? Like, so he had loads yeah. of time to keep playing. Yeah. And then like school came back, so he's having to do like the crunch of, education into also being a pro player. What a crunch. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, he's used to the, the long demanding hours. He's used to that. So he's having a great time right now. Yeah, he looks very for, smiley. The, the vibes for OG are good because they were, you know, it's always easier, not easier, but it's always less pressure when you're the underdog, right? You're supposed to be winning. Yeah, I we think we saw that, that into Liquid earlier on, not just every time they play, but especially earlier on, like, Twist is getting frustrated with some death slams, like, because you know, deep down, like, everyone's expecting you to win this game. And so, if you're the underdog, if you're OG in this scenario, man, you're just taking, you're making the most of this opportunity. And yeah. Wow, we just stomped complexity. That feels amazing. Let's go. Let's leave nothing unsaid. Let's close this series right now on Ancient.
what they're going to try and do now. OG across this on their T sides, they've been pretty slow. They've been pretty measured, but these pistol rounds sometimes have a bit of an explosive Ooh. twist. Oh. They try their hand at a fast paced round, but JT puts them in boxes. A double kill from the Red Room and Red Rum smells murder here as JT keeps lighting them up. Three in the round. Can he get any more? One HP. Maybe they've ruined it. Maybe they finished up the job. Give us four. One more for JT, yeah. and there it is. Four in the round. And he gets out with one. You heard that correctly. One HP. That, that, that was good shooting. Those first two kills, very clean. Catching a player midair. And hey, man, if it's got to be JT carrying them over the finish line, then so be it. He was uh, a monster on that first map as well. Look at this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Great shooting from the captain of complexity. And it's great when he plays well, because he's got such a good smile. That smile, that damn smile. Flash over mid, maybe go through the smoke. I don't know why I've just been like low key hitting on JT throughout the You really the whole have, thing. yeah. I you, know, yeah, but. You know, it's good energy though. Oh, Zeus. I don't even think it's low key. JT up close. Oh, yeah, is that what you want it? Oh, hang on. Oh, he didn't even Zeus. I respect it. He just, it's a guaranteed kill. And then four out as well, but no one else to help him in this heroic mission. Two kills. But they have the bomb. Floppy wants nothing to do with it. Oh, King. That's some King stuff right there, Harry. King stuff. King stuff. Job's done. Job is done. Bring the bomb. We love a humble King. Where the hell has Floppy gone, man? I swear. Oh, Zeus in the dream with the MP9. We'll, we'll let him have it. Three kills from Grim and a bit of money made. But Lambert seems happy. Clap of the hands. He likes the damage that's been done there. That's usually what the clap will signify. Positivity. Oh, Grim smiling. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. smiling. Yeah. Come Ooh. on, boys. Oh, it's over. It's yeah, over. it is over. It's I'm sorry. Done. OG, you guys had a great run. There's <laughs> absolutely no denying it. There's no denying it. We were all impressed for a moment there, but there's smiles now there's for no Complex chance, City. Yeah. You got a lead with the big pearly whites. Woo! It's cooked. Grim was just doing like some death stare into the camera on Anubis, like hey. a Dementor. It sucked the soul out of his body. <laughs> That's a Dementor for you. Yep. But now they found the Patronus. Grim. Look at the onus on him here. Oh, never mind. That's fine, we had no expecto on that play. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't that good. Uh, how's the expanse, Keto? It's coming through. Big Halley. Oh, oh Mary. Exodus does trade, and the smoke down in Donut gives him some room. It's a very late flank for Heavy God, but he walks at the right time. This won't have been heard. Turns out Heavy God with light on his feet. Oh. Him with the backstab. And Floppy, a dead man. It's just a liege left standing. Where's he gone? Oh, yes. the timing, the timing. Oh. We all saw it. A liege ain't smiling now. That's it. The smiles are gone. It's... Yeah. 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 There it is. That's sinking feeling. You had a good feeling. run, Paul. You had a good run. <laughs> oh. Nice try. No, they, they, you know, you can, you can afford one. That one was kind of on a knife's edge. It yeah. was awkward the way they lose Grim to open the round. It was a nice flank out of Heavy God. And if you're Halzerg there, you're kind of kicking yourself because you know there could have been so much more. Keeps oh, I got to say, energy, yeah, he yeah. does bring good energy and he's always yeah. hyping them up. I can read them lips and he's always saying, nice boys, or, yes boys, or something along those lines. I've gets, boys. I've gets. Bit of a deagle boosted and pistols pushing Keto. <sighs> Timing. Let me go back to check. It's been hitting some very clean heads. At the forefront of a lot of these opening fights. He won't overstep it. His dick gets out. That's Fiku. Beast. Oh, one more. They're both low up there. Now, yeah, don't fight. If you truly care about the economy, no, no, Nexius, Nexius can. Nexius can fight. Yeah. 
Respect, OG, they're sweaty, dude. They're giving it, they're giving it their all. Oh, they double swung it, yeah. man. Yeah, like that, like I, that. I like what I'm seeing today from this team. And I don't say that a lot about OG. No, Kiyo's keeping everyone in line, but he's bigging yeah. them up. He's giving them the freedom, right? Like, you can see that the people like Heavy God are given a, a good degree yeah, of freedom yeah. to approach how like he wants bro. to be. He does give him that, that kind of... Uh, judgment call on a lot of these plays but then when you get into like the nitty gritty and trying to maximize the damage done to them and the money saved for you they, they keep their head screwed on and that's all coming from keto right now he's very very vocal no orbs early yet take for call and do you want to challenge it by coming through heaven very fast let's eat the flash but no one's here Complexity, double up in a donut. He's going full donk in front of the pillar, and he's going to get a kill with Grim as well. They're out, A, but have the sight. You've got nowhere safe. CT donut both contained. Grim gets caught with nades out. OG fighting back. Oh, how's that dead? Heavy God putting on a show. Two quick kills, and suddenly that offer to have oh. the sight. Yeah, they'll take it. Heavy God will. Three in the round. I don't want to. I want to say it, but maybe we maybe we get another heavy god ace. You keep saying things you don't want to say. I know. Just say him. Here it is. Four in the round. Heavy god won't quite get all five. Regali gets the last man, but what hell of a round out of this guy say on our screens right now. Heavy god is bringing the heat in the third and final map of this series. And that one bit of room that was given, that one area of the map that was gifted to them for free, that complexity were meant to know about, were meant to be able to collapse down upon ends up being their undoing. Their Achilles heel was this push out through main. Yeah, Grim getting caught there is surprising because they're hearing that A-Rush. They should know there's players in the bomb site, but the Molly and Pack of Donut give a game for Plexi not much room. And Grim just gets caught changing positions. OG very methodical in these rounds. We're noticing their util towards B has been really good. Cave smoking every time, smoking the mollies, not letting complexity you know, take full control of B lane every round. OG are fighting them for it. This time they go into the cave and into the crossfire. Yeah, I need that molly. What's it repositioned? Each hits his. Miku should still be going for these fights. They're right there for the taking. Elite with a double. That is lovely. I don't know about the beehive. Gali comes buzzing up the ramp. Oh, oh the aggro, they think it's clear. And now that Elise learns about it the hard way, they're already up the site, man. They're already in. Regali moves on through. And Complexity is still dedicated to the idea that the bomb is going back. Disaster. This is a fourth for OG. Full control. A lead locked in. Guns out in the next round for complexity, but if they don't win it, then suddenly they're broke all over again. And it's a similar situation to what we had on Anubis, where OG have like the, the full brunt of that CT economy to work with. They can start racking up rounds. And suddenly the game is just so far away from you before you even really realize that it's getting out of control. Before you even feel like you had a chance to play. Great flash. Oh! If only the third, but that's lovely shooting from Nexius. Terrorists win. Grim can grab a gun, but all in all, OG are in full control of this game right now. Yeah, lovely done. Lovely stuff. Lovely shooting. Indeed. Not quite that third, but still, he'll take it all day long. OG building on this lead. Or pal for Hauser. He's been the, the kind of one dependable piece here for complexity. I think he's the only positive player for the squad after that second map. And so you wanted to deliver, but mid is not the object of OG's desire. It's another fast A player. I mean, if they keep getting given this space, then hell yeah, they're going to take it. They made open the smoke. It's a good kill from Grim, and it's followed up on from Elige, but not done yet. Not out of the woods yet. A three on three. The smokes won't subside anytime soon. And that's actually a re-smoke from the CTs lobbed in here. No one's getting the bomb. No one wants to. They're scared that 
Flexi are nearby, going to challenge, but time is just being bought. Yeah, when they re-smoke it like that, I think you're very paranoid that their plan is to nade the smoke open again on that bomb plant. So it kind of has to grind to a halt here for OG. Yeah, unfortunately, no kill is going to be presented. The only question is, does Cole start doubting themselves? You see JT checking out the timings. Like, for all you're aware, there could be no one in A right now. Cole don't actually have info, but it's doing them favors at the moment resmoke comes through and eventually you've got to plant so while the last bit of util is being used this would be the best time heavy card is trying to convince fiku to do it and there we go <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, buddy, he mate. spends that whole time talking to him fiku man grab the bomb grab the bomb and then he just throws oh. it to him oh that just sails by I looked on it fiku it's all about the timings. Who goes first, Elige or the donut play? Elige is drawing him in. We're in this corner. Great shot for Elige. Regali in the back of the big box. Hits his. They're coming in. The, to uh, the bomb's already ticking. Half ticked, in fact. Smoke on the bomb. But Heavy God fighting for the round. And he has just been a rock-solid player today. The back of OG. I mean, that's why he gets to tell Fiku to plant the damn bomb, right? Then he gets to swing on out and win it in the clutch. Beautifully done from Heavy God. Regali still delivering on the AWP. That's the thing. I mean, I think when you look at the individuals here for OG, there's no question that in terms of like longevity across the series, they've got complexity beat hands down. Yeah. And sure, like, you don't have Keto popping off anymore here on this third map. He's probably putting a lot more attention on the macro, the micro decisions of this game. But everyone else is looking good. Even Nexius, who started this series off pretty slow. It's looked better. No doubt. And what's the most impressive to me is the T-sides for OG. 8-4 on Inferno, T-side, went over time. And 9-3 on Anubis. And now, again, you know, pistol and conversion for complexity. And OG have just run away with T gun rounds. They've looked like a very formidable squad on the offense. Keto. The big reason for that. Does JT get impatient? He may. Wow. Clean. Even though it's traded by JT, still a ways into this for the OG squad, although they do get thwarted on this attempt to get out main. That's going to force them out late into mid. Are they going to go for the red room control? Okay. They know they've got one fight here. They heard a leash spamming the smoke. If they get this, that opens up a route to one of these bomb sites, but they don't get past him. And so now Regali in kind of a, a dead spot here. Gets out through the red room, but still has more to do. There's going to be a player in either one of these sites, and so he's got to be prepared to fight here. Can't just go straight for that plant, but he will. Molly and Maine is not the right choice. It's kind of a coin toss around there for Regali. And Grim will walk it over the line. So with a, a low buy there, complexity withstand OG. Finally against him, Donald CT. It's the A main aggression. There's a lot of help. And a double setup in cave that trades Keto on his fake out towards B. Complexity with something. We have an orb for Halzog. And they've been very heroic in this series. Mid rush, a double nade kill for Grim. Wow. Where did that come from? OG were not ready. As they smoke the Molotov, they get blown to pieces. And they immediately fill the gap at A because they've seen OG take this space before after spotting them in middle. Awkward spray for JT, but it's only Nexius alone. Ow. Oh. <laughs> the wombo combo. Nade removes the smoke, does damage, and then lines it up for Halzerk. It's a complexity you're trying to rebuild. Good shutdown in the mid play. All those nades raining in. I mean, look at that. Damn. Brutal. Just a barrage of util down in bottom mid. And <laughs> They're loving it. Grim does enjoy that. 
Yeah, you don't see many teams go actually go for mid-rushes anymore because every CT team has insta-smokes in the elbow, and then, you know, you're going to be setting the precedent of doing a molly in front of that, nading oh once or twice. God. Like, look at the assault. so Cole much util. Everything. But they take B lane completely. Oh my god, they're out A. This is all a fake. Cole panic. What have you seen him? This is a mess. Grim still gets two clean kills. Yeah, Grim's alleviated all the pressure, thankfully. Right, that, that fake could have actually worked out quite nicely. Keto's the eagle, good for one, but end of the line now with their trapped in the double doors. Floppy makes quick work of them. Good double from Grim. Yeah. Because, you know, he's that. calling for a rotate at that point in the round. And honestly, I think if they didn't spot that, that first player jiggling over towards B-doors, I don't love that that peak got given over because yeah. then it kept two players there. No, the whole goal is you just don't want to show anything B. And obviously, if you don't get an A kill, the fake won't work. But even the timing of Grim calling for help is going to give you room at B. So just a few seconds of difference there. But either way, all the kills come in for complexity. And it was all about this buy round. Regali's all finely fielded. He could burning somewhere, some place. To the pocket, it sprayed. Nexius pops through the mid smoke. More where that came from, though. The Black City want to fight and die wow. on this hill down in mid, and Elige will lock in that control. Regali and Heavy God still left in the round, and a 2v3 awaits them. Regali does have a good bit of room over here towards B. If he takes this space, ooh, now he knows about JT. That's going to trigger a rotate back around. You can already see Floppy moving over, but Whoa. Regali nails that shot, and he even spots this second man moving in. Even the sort of pace on that rotate gives the hint that there's no one else over here towards B. And so they've just got Floppy left to deal with. If they can find him, they're on their way to a round here, but Floppy won't give them an inch. Instead, he'll take Miles, and that is complexity moving up into the lead now. Yeah, Regali needs to swing and help his teammate. I guess he had faith that Heavy God would get the kill, but he's just standing there in the open holding the swing. And his peak comes too late. Floppy hits bangers. Floppy's looking solid right now in this third map. Standing tall to attention. Yeah, messy spray for Heavy God. Not all we need at this point now is complexity. Steal the lead back after five rounds in a row for OG. They've met their maker, they've met their match. And it is complexity. Trying to win the half of seven. Pacey B round. Yeah, this is a real pace change out of OG. They didn't feel comfortable to call rounds like this early on, but now they do. Just floppy and he can't find a thing. B site crumbles, Elise is hot on their heels with a backstab and he's got the bomb down over towards the double cause. But Elise is trapped, there's a man in the heavens, there's players looking at him a ramp. It's gonna take a miracle for him to get any more than one there. And so the bomb will get recovered. It's left on a Grim who sits over towards the top of the board for complexity, and he threads oh, the needle perfect. here, but they might just bypass him entirely. They're going towards A right now. That bomb is rotating around. Grim wins this fight. Now it's down to the 1v1. Nexius will have the bomb plant and a chance to go toe-to-toe -to -toe for Grim for a tie game. Even that was well read for Heavy God, that he maybe slipped past that player. Grim is so low, though, and Nexius can pick his poison in the open, and Grim just sprays him. He gets the spot on the cross, and Nexius dies in the fight somehow some way complexity hold on to the end of the half seven rounds not bad given how well og started if i could just describe patrick forrest limber in five words it would probably be kind grown up uh, he's kind of a complete dick that kind of thing? No, I, I, I won't do it. Uh, that, that's his thing, and uh, it gives something to the team as well. He's just someone who can pick up a game, and he's going to be good at it immediately. And he's done it. He's one of the few players who's tried to be a professional at multiple games at the same time. Um, and he's just one of those guys naturally gifted at everything. Forrest has always been good at this game, and, and every game, as far as I know, that he's ever touched, which is a little, a little bit annoying in some ways. He also caused us a lot of problems, because whenever we were leading, uh, you, you would know that Forrest would eventually get back uh, into the game and, and uh, sometimes also win the game for, for his team. He's kind of someone that you maybe look up to as a, as a kind of lucky well, father figure.
part of the source of his strength is that he, he, he doesn't he doesn't really need to put in that much work but you always wonder what would happen if he tried like if he really if he really went all in on it if he really sort of you know maybe put in the same amount of hours as everybody else uh, but he's got that loose style and somehow it fits it seems to work for him and obviously he's he's one of the best players that we've ever seen play the game i've been a player that's been playing with him for more than 10 years we believe that someday that when we both have quit playing that the next chapter of the Swedish team would take over and then someone would be the next get right and the next Forrest and so on. Forrest has taken it over and by far he is the player from 1.6 whose skills have translated most easily in, into the new game and he's just been stellar from start to finish. That was it? Yeah. Not even a shout out to myself. Oh, not come even on a, then. Okay, no, no, I'm I leaving. No, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs>
So you have to stick the landing here if you're OG. You don't have the room. You can't make a misstep. And they're just going to contact. I like this play. Walking up ramp, trusting in their aimers. And they have them in spades. A liege overwhelmed. Regali and Keto back at the bomb site. The former of which gets out with a great oh, grenade. That's, that's a problem. That was a glow. He goes swinging and he still wins his fight. But he's all that stands in a 1v2. At this point, you're thinking money. A bomb point could go a long way. But winning this round, that's just coping. Yeah, not going to happen. He's so low on health, he needed the immediate kill there. And even if he gets it, OG were kind of staggered and ready to trade. So first rifle round locked in. That is the the first necessary step to, to bring in this back if you're OG. If you fell down there, it, it felt like it was out of your hands, like you yeah. had nothing left Fourth to play with. But now they've got a bit of staying power. Bomb plant's nice at least, right? You said it yourself. You're thinking about money in that situation there. Extra $800 just helps pad out this next buy for complexity. Let's them keep the pressure on. Walks out, Alza. You mentioned how he's been a little quiet in this game. Not really since Inferno, we've seen Halsberg highlight. And with the round that Cole are playing, he's not going to have many options. He's got to just play bomb at the back. They're going for a mid split. They will pull back eventually and end B, but they want to take some control, get a kill. And JT's done exactly that, fighting the rifles up in red. Halsberg dead on the B aggro. So that will change the game plan for Cole. Next is you don't have time for this. Make your mind up. He still gets a kill. That could have gone way worse. Regali out through the smoke and CT, risking it. Oh, he gets a spray onto Grim. OG is just running into the site. Cole, Cole aren't even here yet, but they'll pop their head around the corner. The bomb little late from B. And Bobby makes it a two on two. Yeah, the Molly in Temple is nice. It's going to allow this bomb plant to come in. OG can't try and rush that down and stop it, but Floppy might need to be the hero here. Grim is in no shape to be the one winning this round. 7 HP, so Floppy is feeling the pressure to win one of these fights. And as he goes looking for that one towards CT, he's locked out of it. Grim, it's down to spam, it's down to chance, and it's just shy. Regali re re responds through that smoke. And so OG pick up another round. Now chaining together two in a row on this CT side. It's another round with a bomb plant for complexity. So that's something at least Keto getting impassioned has stood up. Yeah, you are seeing those. I think Nexus had a way better Anubis. You are seeing those moments of indecision and maybe lack of experience on this young player at times. Like there, not sure which fight to take and whether to pull nades and second guessing it he still gets a kill thank goodness but uh, young team here or at least a green team you know not having the chance to play tier one cs even for heavy god who's touted to be the next big thing what's your what's your temperature check on heavy god Hey, bro, he looks really legit. Yeah, I mean, I think that kind of goes without saying with some of the rounds he's given us across this series. And, I, and it feels like, you know, OG are more than aware of that as well. It, it's clear he's given a lot of room in this roster. He's not having any, like, crazy world-beating performance here in terms of the numbers, but I think he always finds a, good, a great deal of impact. Good nades in this round to soften up the B hit, and it's going to get wow. swiftly shut down. Kito and Fiku lock complexity out of the B site, and this is a, a one round the difference game now. That was quick. And so, considering you, you know, you came into the second half after Cole win the pistol, and they start to stack up some early rounds. You're you're worried for OG. There's absolutely no denying it. They're feeling all the pressure, right? Like one misstep would have been enough to to lose them this series. But they've held on throughout. And now they've closed that gap up to the point where, you know, if you're Cole, you're not 
You're not breaking through on the back of one round win. Rounds like this really help in that regard. Five alive when all is said and done. So the fact that yeah. complexity don't even make this one expensive is a big deal for OG. And they had their longevity and their staying power towards the end of the series. Give some more breathing room, more resources. More problems for complexity that maybe TC will have to solve here in this timeout. This game is right there for the taking for OG. One of the closer opening matchups, right? One of the more 50 50 games. Still had Cole as heavy, not heavy, but notable favorites. I think the most comparable game would be like a game leashed and big, which will be played tomorrow. And of course, we have more CS after this as well with Monty Imperial. Yeah. All right, the complexity, that lead that you once sported, that lead that you were once feeling so good about, it's so quickly getting away from you. And so now's the time to offer up resistance. It's certainly not a bad way to start with Nexius found on, a, on his lonesome over in middle. <laughs> Couldn't find his lineup with the smoke looming very deep. They're just gonna explode, eh? No donut smoke though. I mean, these rounds have been very, very pacey for complexity, but I think often it's to their detriment, right? This time they get churned up by the double donut hold. And so in spite of that early advantage where they set up 5v4, that decision to kind of blast their way out through A, they go running into a, a heavy donut setup. And there's no smoke down to block it off. There's no chance to change their mind. They are dedicated once they get that deep into the site. I kind of just want to see complexity go a lot slower. You know, the, the pace just feels off. They, they feel like these faster rounds are the way to break through, but they're not right now. They're not. And oftentimes, wherever you see them in the first instance, that's where they're looking to end up. And so it's not really a, you know, a guessing game for OG in terms of rotating these players over to the right side of the map. And I think to OG's credit, they've had good rotations to deal with these sorts of rounds. Yeah, frustration starting to show as well. It's been a long day in the office for complexity. Oh, that's a that's a tired eye rub right there. Yeah, they just want to end this right now, and that. And I think that's where the pace yeah. comes from, if I'm honest. Like it feels like they just want to get this game over and done with. That but... eagerness might be their undoing. Another rush through mid, like it's an eco. But at the end of the day, when's that gonna work? Nade stacks and two players spray the pistols down. OG are getting confident. They're getting closer. And complexity, dust in the eyes right now. And desperate times. They just, they have to take the pace out of it because they're, they're going into all the util. And, you know, it, you, you can punish OG with this level of conditioning. The fact that these rounds have been so fast means they're throwing a lot of their util early. And that's going to be brilliant if you slow the round down. Because then you have far less to worry about. Look at mid, right? It's just blanketed in util over towards B. It's blanketed in util. There's already wow. a good deal burnt through from OG. Three mollies you used to be instantly. So yeah, it's all gone in an instant, immediate. And OG try and send it off the back of that. They try and take the lane control. That is denied by the cave smoke. Good spam I, I mean, It's more like it. Yeah, this is that momentum break. This is them now trying to, to change the pace of these rounds. Watch out, Floppy's in a very dangerous position. Oh, they look so much better for it. They've got one smoke and one Molotov left on OG. Oh, that's one way to do it. B player gone. Some misutils still plaguing complexity, but just a group on this bomb site. I like the move OG are making. They're rotating a third. They've read it. They, they feel like this is inevitable. They know a lot of players started here. And with a kill offered up, this is the obvious conclusion. Can OG stop them in their tracks? I mean, we've seen these B site plays get shut down by OG a couple of times now. Do they have the metal this time oh, around? What a beautiful spray. double from JT as he wrestles with the AK back in cave. He's done enough here. Yeah. 
He's done enough to tie this game up, breaking the five round streak that OG were on. I'm even surprised Keto full saves and doesn't like go for a bit of damage. Obviously he can't see the exact finances, but you, you know Cole haven't been winning any rounds. They haven't got anything. So a couple of kills could break them later at 12-11. But for the, on the flip side, OG have everything. So but they're going to group up. They're going to get hunted a little bit. I love, you know, I, I think... I think it's kind of obvious that Cole are a little, a little tired after the travel, and fair enough. But I like that they've stopped. You know, they had that like that forethought to kind of stop going through the motions of like just trying to rush this game over the finish line. They've they've at least cooled that off while there's still time left to win the game, and I think that takes a, a good deal of kind of reflection on yes. what you've been doing over these last few rounds. Because if you're complexity, you're also feeling like we're just better. Like, that, we're, we're, we're the better Yeah, like, team. we we're, should be able we, to win this just yeah. by kind of running at them. Yeah. You don't want to give your opponent too much respect, but there is a point where it, it stops working in complexity. They cool off. They get a nice B hit. That double spray for JT, I don't know what that looked like, but he never stopped shooting, and he gets both kills in cave. It's really unfortunate for OG who have had solid defensive rounds so far in the game, but something more. And, you know, even this now, yeah. like this starts the mind game because suddenly, you know, one of the things we were highlighting there is like at least over the course of those five rounds where they were very, very fast, you'd conditioned OG to use a lot of their util early to punish rushes. Well, now you've just got dealt a slower round. You didn't have the util when you needed it to try and suck the momentum out of that B play. And so this is where the mind game starts, right? So what right? you're saying is complexity should rush. They certainly actually could make a case for it. <laughs> I hope they don't. I hope they don't too. Yeah. I think, you know, give yourself one no, more I round. Think, to... I think OG won't drop five mollies in the first 10 seconds, but I'd still like that lane and ramp molly and just a bit of pressure. So Cole can't get too rush. comfortable. As Three mollies down, Insta, there's a fourth. Regali and Keto, hello! Cole do rush. And to their own demise. Oh, keep your gun out, Floppy, they're right here. And Fiku's waiting for support. Regali's got the orb train down ramp. There is not a lot of room here for complexity. And there's only room for one against Heroic. 21 rounds deep into the third map. OG looking to emerge victorious. Yeah, I think this is a really, really good case made from Keto there and his read of the game, right? Like, he still calls for that same barrage of util to come out. He anticipates something a lot faster there, a uh, kind of return to the pace. He, he has a good read of this game right now. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's been the biggest takeaway other than the Heavy God having great mechanics uh, is, is Keto's calling in this series. The T side's more so. And you can feel this one slipping through Complexity's fingers after a round like that. Everyone shell-shocked in their seats. At least a fire enabled. But a final ditched attempt, you can see they don't even play through the B doors, only JT to yeah. keep control, they're scared. And I mean, just to go back to the, the read of the game, they've, they've not thrown much util at the start of this round. They are ready for something slower and a complexity. This is fantastic, yeah, calling. Very passive in middle. Just jump spotting for Nexius, getting that info. Good damage from Floppy, it'd love an HE, but no way to finish that off. Two smokes. Not even, complexity. not even that Dink has like pulled out the util yet, right? They're like still super measured. There's a minute left. Three mollies, three smokes. Yeah. OG are in a really good spot here, in spite of that Dink on Tafiku. Hmm. Warp. Let's play a pass. Oh, and he does take the damage now. At least they know Elite is on the back line. A re-aggro on the ramp. And it's high risk, high reward. Nexius gets out, battered and bruised. Regali wants to finish off a player in middle. Elige has crossed, and he looks to come back for the kill. Risking it all. Regali gets that spot again. It's going to keep Nexius trapped in red, but Regali frees it up, and he can go back to B where this hit is ending. 25 seconds left. Still util to delay this play if you're, uh, if you're OG. Complexity look to move on out. And Nexius waits with the molly to try and stop this bomb plant. And in the oh. final seconds of the round, that's worth its weight in gold. 
This has been a, a round teed up by great util out of OG. They try to plug in the numbers now, but there's more nades raining on in. Alzerk is dead. Wrecked by the util in his dying breath. He gets the bomb down, but that means JT is going to 1v4 Ooh. and he tries his damnedest, but it's not enough to take the round. And so the mind games between these IGLs, the, the, the battle of the brains here is being won out by Keto and the boys. OG, one round away from eliminating complexity. Yeah, that would be two NA teams or two America's teams removed immediately here in the showdown. <clears throat> Going out on a third map, Bonanza. What a play to go down ramp, to aggro that deep, then to play retake and to have two mollies, two HEs for the bomb. And even though JT starts cooking in a clutch, as he often does, the smoke span for Heavy God denies it. And OG make a statement here. One more round. Head strapped on. And Nexius, four kills as well. The rookie who started so cold in this series is, is putting on a show when it comes to Ancient. Fantastic. I mean, yeah, you, you've got to love what well, Lambert and Keto are cooking on the OG side. And I wonder, are they now expecting a pace change again, right? Yeah, who, who even knows? I think they're going to come in with early Utah. I think they're going to want to take map control. I feel like this is now where they try to do that, like big drive to the finish line. Down ramp in. Yeah, not gonna not gonna sit on their laurels and wait for complexity to bring the fight to them. But let's see. It's an early lean over towards the A side of the map with two players there. Maybe we have a bit of A main aggression, and we do. That's the order of the day. Aggressing up through A main while the util is bought over towards that B site wow. to try and slow down the push. And they've pieced this one together. Elige holding on from the bottom of mid. He's got to win this fight. He can't fall to the oh, heavy no. gun. And he's missed this timing. His teammates get up through ramp. Elige dead in the meantime. And Fiku holds it down with a double. It might be the end of the line for complexity. Hauser with the response, but it's left to Grim. 1v2, and they're hot on his heels. They're closing in. The map is shrinking second by second, and Grim is locked in a cage here. Cole's chances of ever getting near London rest on the shoulders of Grim in a 1v2. Oh, it's planted for him. That was the chance. That was the opportunity, and he won't win it the second time around. It's Heavy God to lock in the win. OG, send complexity packing. And they look fantastic while they do it. A battle of brains and brawn across the series. Some fantastic moments. And Heavy God is showing that he is legit as hell. Well, they've done it. They've completed the complete upset. It wasn't just Anubis, it was all three maps. OG eliminate complexity for contention for the Blast Spring Finals in London. They're gonna move on to the quarterfinals against Heroic. They take down Cole 13 to 10 on Ancient. And that's the series. That's the series all wrapped up. Yeah, okay. It's a disappointing result for NA, especially you, right? Both seeing Liquid and Complexity going home at <laughs> one single day, but... Uh... Why is it always? Why am I always like the main loser when the when the America's team lose? I'm always I'm always yeah, the I mean, target. Uh, I, I had my Danes right, Astralis. We don't even talk about them at, at this tournament, uh, so they are not sure. a major either. Complexity can at least be safe and know that they're going to one of the most important events in the next couple of weeks. On the other right. side, a really good victory from OG, who's finally been looking for a little bit of momentum in this era of of Counter Strike, where they've never really found their footing. Ah, look at that CT side, man. Four defuses, four retakes, but just dominant. After the pistol in second round, Complexity couldn't get anything going. Uh, OG, just clamp it down. Heavy God has another good map top fracking for his team. Regali was solid as well. Uh, I know I heard Harry and Hugo praising the calling out of Keto throughout that third map as well for the T sides today. Um, every, they came in today and everything just seemed to be clicking a lot better. That time off did something for him, yeah, something even good. The crazy part is that we talked about we need a leash and Grim, and we got those on last map. They played well, but it's still wasn't enough um, to win a game against OG and that's impressive but um, it's been looking like that the, the team of OG has finally found a little bit of a, of a base level what we're expecting out of a team who's now had a couple of months together but it's really good to see and maybe Keto actually mm, almost starting to live up to that expectation of an in-game leader he's never really been that type in my mind sure. but over time you can almost become anything right 
Yeah, and I mean, I, I remember the conversation when he was in big, you know, bouncing between the main lineup and, and the academy team as well. And, you know, mentioned his time as like leading the academy team, did him really good when he came back as not as an in-game leader at the top level. And, and I think, you know, eventually all those lessons kind of coalesce and all those experiences kind of come together. Um, and, and yeah, look, that would be that would be something really special. That'd be great for Keto individually for his career if he could become an effective in-game leader. And it'd obviously be great for OG if he was able to actually, you know, continue to develop that skill set and be a solid in-game game leader for this team moving forward um let's not get too far ahead of ourselves this is one series victory um but obviously you know co compared to where we've seen them at previously uh we take the positives away i mean it's a good observation right the entry level of being a, an average rifler nowadays is so high and i think keto kind of was on the bottom level of that and realized hey the most next natural step in me in order to play professional counter-strike would be to move to the igl role i've played my individual good games now i need to take a little bit more responsibility on the side of leading things and I think he done that in this game it's also going to be really interesting to see how he's going to work together with the coach now that it's a new one coming in and it's going to be more interesting to look at long term well, he's in good company. Devices make yeah. the same decision. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't even pull that one off with a straight face. Um, regardless, we've got we got Grim ready. We're gonna get a loser interview. It's good on Grim to to join uh, join James Banks to talk to us after a pretty rough loss. Grim, I know it's an unfortunate run here for the showdown. It's straight out of it as you've landed as well. So give me kind of an understanding of when you guys arrived to London to play and, and how you got there and just how much time you had to even get ready after the Yeah, so we won against Liquid the other day and then we uh, hopped on a plane early next day and we landed yesterday and you know, our schedule's all whack right now, honestly. <laughs> Everyone's a bit tired, so it's just been a little bit crazy for us and it's been hard to fully prepare like we normally do for uh, this game. Yeah, and we, and we could see it on the cameras. We could see you guys not looking too much like yourselves. I want to look at Inferno. You, you won both pistols. Uh, you were still able to get the win, but it was in overtime. What were you struggling with specifically there? Because at least I think that was maybe where you guys had the, the most energy, the most play in you. Um, I'd say we struggled with some of the clutch situations on Inferno. And yeah, I'd say that we fell short in the clutch. Uh, just, you know, some things when you're not fully 100%, uh, especially in the clutch, you're not thinking of all the options properly. And there's like one thing you miss out on or like you think of something too late. So I think that uh, messes up on Inferno. Okay. And then when it comes to Anubis, it, it's your pick. But I remember at the start of CS2, this was like a great tried and tested map pick for you. More recently, it's not been looking so good. What was it that went so wrong and where was the adjustment from you guys in order to, to try and take them on this map? Sorry, hello? The call, it's like lagging really hard. Oh. <laughs> it's lagging so that's, hard. That's, that's typical about UK that. internet. Do <laughs> not worry. I didn't hear you. So. I'll, I will okay. do that again because UK internet is terrible. So Anubis, it's start of CS2. It was fantastic map for you guys. Then we've seen you kind of drop off a little bit from it. So I want to see how did it go so wrong versus a team that's never played it with this five and obviously we didn't expect them to even have a chance yeah i'd say anubis is one of our um, stronger maps recently obviously star cs2 is one of our best maps we kind of fell off on that recently but uh we did a lot of practice on that map and we're very comfortable with it again so um yeah i think we just were messing up a lot of the stuff we normally do good i could probably chalk that up to being tired but you know at the end of the day uh yeah, we just are messing up the things that we're normally good at in practice. So I'd say that was a big reason why we lost Anubis. Yeah, you having some technical issues with the uh, with the old British internet, but uh, you know we'll take it. Grim uh, hopping in and just kind of talking about you know missing a step here and there, and I think that kind of comes a little bit down to what we kind of touched on again. Not not excuses and not cope, but uh, some tough situations with the long travel day that they had to, to play in today. Uh, any any final thoughts on uh, complexity, OG? Before we uh, before I we mean, move on, congrats to OG, right? But I'm not worried about complexity going into the major i think there's a lot of circumstances uh considering this game that made it hard for them to perform and og played a, a good game of counter-strike so i'm gonna be looking forward to see complexity at the major itself and uh gonna be following og following yep. into the tournament yeah let's see how far complexity can go either way congratulations to og here's the bracket that we've got for the spring showdown it's starting to fill out we're starting to flesh out those quarterfinals so og taking on heroic in quarterfinal three quarterfinal four is saw taking on cloud nine we're working our way backwards really um the next match we got is monty versus imperial and the winner of that obviously as you can see uh is going to be playing metasport uh who had that big upset over falcons yesterday um and the rest of today's schedule which is one more series to play it's been 
been a long day. Close affairs, overtimes all over the place, three maps everywhere, bonus rounds, we love it. Imperial taking on Monty, and Imperial coming fresh off their qualification for the major as well. Monty coming in fresh off their elimination. Uh, from the arm. Yeah, and I mean, um, it's kind of interesting to see which type of uh, team Monty is, right? They they fail one mage and the entire project just blows up, right? Uh, a full suicide bomb internally. Uh, Somda Young is obviously still here on today, but he left the team. Bro going to Astral is... It's hard to see where this roster will go now. Are they able to pick themselves up? Because it felt like it was more more of the, the mature players who, who left the squad, like the Somda Young, really impressed me in this squad over the, the long term that they actually stuck together. Yeah, it has been. And, uh, this is this is Monty here. So SDY, Lean, Krasnel, Demka, Waro, all going to be playing today for for Monty against Imperial. And uh, before we dive too deep into the matchup, uh, we got another interview. It was Waro who had a chance to sit down with James Banks and uh, give us his thoughts heading into the matchup versus Imperial. Where is your mindset at coming into the showdown? Because I guess you can't really consider that you're going to be able to do too much damage here, considering you don't have a full team. You're just going to be playing kind of Hug style and how is it for you as a leader? Uh, yeah, it's hard to play like mix. Uh, of course, it's hard for everyone, but we have a mentality we want to win. Like, it doesn't matter what. We have not, uh, like, it's not the best teams who will play versus us. Uh, we have chances to win them, even like a mix. And uh, yeah, we want to win. That's it. So, do you feel like you still have a very good chance against Imperial today? Yeah, yeah I think we have good chances. Like, why not? Why not? Okay. And and are we going to expect a looser style, a more pug style from you guys? Or, or what? Are, what's happening? Vita uh, played with us, you know, a lot. Uh, Lin did... But that that yeah, I understand. But uh, we have Lin. It's academy player. Uh, he didn't play mm -hmm. with us. He don't know anything, kind of. He, like, know your stuff. But I think it will be not hard to explain him fast what he need to do. He have, like, role... Uh, to hold, uh, he don't have anything yeah. special, and uh, I think we can do like some even strats. But yeah, overall we'll play more like pack, like how we can. Okay, so it's not gives me play. No, no, no gives me. So, because we ah. we add Lin uh, two months ago, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, we didn't know this situation can happen and. Uh, uh, we put Lin like substitutes, but uh, unlucky we cannot. Like we have minus two players, uh, Vitaly and uh, Alex, and uh, it's uh, for us a bit hard. Uh, Blast cannot uh, add any player even to have extra one. Yeah. It's very hard for us. Yeah. Obviously, some complications losing Bro to Astralis out of the lineup as well. So bring in Lean, um, and, and we'll see how he does. And obviously, a little bit of a crazy situation. War there just mentioning it's it's going to be a little bit of a pug. They've got some work to do with him. So let's talk a little bit about Imperial because they they qualified through the RMR in the Americas. And I mean, one player who looked absolutely fantastic on Imperial uh, was our old mate Henny who just seems to come into the scene, blow things up, disappear and fade away for like a, for a little bit. And then he comes back into a new roster and he does it all over again. Um, he was a beast at the America's RMR. I think he finished with like a 1.6 or one something rating across the RMR as well. Um, and he seems to be really powering this team forward together with yeah, I mean, we mentioned earlier in the day, right, that recycling old players, I think Brazil has actually been the best in the world at doing that. But for some reason, it actually works out for them uh, quite a, a big amount of time. We see them often do a little upset at the major and the f funny thing thing is with Phillips, he's been playing for such a long time now on this level. It's actually yeah. incredible. Like he's had his periods. He was in that famous SK lineup replacing Fur or Phoenix. I can't remember properly, but uh, he yep. was actually uh, regarded as the biggest talent in Brazil at some point. He never really achieved. And then we saw new players coming in, Lukosi, Insani, all these guys taking the step. But all of a sudden he appears again and actually provides some really good value to Imperial. It actually you got to give him got to give him a lot of credit together with Zach, the coach for this team, because remember they came into this Imperial lineup just before Fallen departed for Furia as well, and they were kind of tasked with the rebuild. So the fact that they've actually been able to pull it off, uh, Vinny, Zach, bringing in Phelps, bringing in Henny, and all this talent, having some young guys as well, um, they've had great things to say about the two young players, decency and no way. Imperial's looking sharp right now, and I guess the question just so as after seeing the first two series of the day, it's like this travel for these teams that are coming from the Americas. We've been 
three Americas teams, all of them coming from Mexico, and all of them struggling to find victories today. So is Imperial really quick, Bubsky? Is Imperial going to break I mean, they're the chain? I they're going to have the biggest advantage of all the teams simply due to the scheduled time of the match, right? They could take a nap, they could have a little bit of preparation. Also, the game took a long time, so it gives the best opportunity yeah. to a team who's pressured on the travel side. All right, well, let's find out. Imperial, Monty, it's coming up next. Scrawny and Launders will take you through the last series of the day. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you guys are tuning in from. It's the Blast Spring Showdown Day 2, Match 3, Scrawny and Launders to take you guys through this one. And uh, Mo, the North Americans haven't been faring any better in the showdown than they did at the America's RMR. But luckily, we've brought in the America's secret weapon. We've got Brazilian <laughs> yeah, up yeah. next. We've got Imperial, the white hot Imperial, I have to say. Uh, absolutely qualified to the major with ease. Every single map they played, dominated 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 yeah all three steps like it was nothing yeah and that that is really genuinely great i would say the only thing i i truly get concerned about is when a team wins something big and then especially the next tournament they play online you consistently see that they're not in the same place like, i don't know if it's the endorphins are all used up or if the motivation was just put all their energy into that you know big event so this will be a real test for Imperial to see how much they still have a really, a really big drive right now to get through this sort of online qualifier when they have just uh, qualified. Whereas Monty, on the other hand, you know, tragic defeat, horrible emotions. They are trying to look for any win. You know, they probably want this more badly, I won't lie. Of course, OG's been sat at home waiting for somebody to knock down. Couldn't 
do it in cleanly 2-0, but still got it over the line. Same with Liquid, Saw taking them out today. So we've had upsets after upsets. Technically Imperial favorites, no way Phelps, headshots in. And that is the A site under wraps. Now, what we learned about Imperial back the America's RMR is that they all hit hard. They had four of the highest rated players at the event uh, were on this team. And then you had Vinny coming in in the top 10 as well, because again, the scoreline was just so damn dominant, as dominant as this pistol ends up being. No kills on the retake, no kills on the hold. You know, this is another squad like Liquid and Imperial who have taken a little journey over to Europe and uh, we heard Grimm in the post-match talking about how they just got in the day before, just set up the computers, etc. You know, yeah. Imperial are facing all the same problems. Let's see if they end up falling to those issues, too. Yeah, yeah that's, that is why, like, I don't know. Like, these, these things are definitely real. Like, it obviously sucks to have to go through them, but some teams suffer more than others. I'll just put it that way. So, uh, I, I think uh, we got to let the CS sort of do the talking. But, um... Looks like Zach's in a good mood. That's good. It's always a nice start. Also, Vinny as an IGL, like that's shaping up really well for the Brazilian scene. Yes, sir. Took a little time. I think the first it event took, we saw it was for sure. Cologne in the last summer. I remember speaking to Vinny there and he just kind of said like, yeah, this is new to me. I said, oh, how, how are you, you going to do it? He said, I don't know yet. Vinny, you're, you're playing at a big land, you know? <laughs> and he like, was smiling. And he was smiling the whole time. <laughs> yeah, and his system was just, oh, we'll figure it out. And here we are, you know? Half a year later, things are starting to shape up. I love that Imperial end up going for some young blood, uh, some unproven entities to go alongside Vinny, Henny, and Phelps. You know, they don't tap back into just nostalgia here, nostalgia there, but a real injection of talent that's paid off. Yep. Absolutely. And we look at this lineup, I mean, it's like such a, such a good core, I, I would say. Like such a good core of potential for the right IGL. Um, and Vinny will end up being probably like a sort of apex type of IGL, I guess, one day. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Comparison. Someone you wouldn't expect, but yet here we are. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Like thinking about that Furia lineup. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> we don't speak Portuguese, so I don't know where the, where, what the reads even coming from. Body language, like role stats or something like that. But it just doesn't feel like Vinny is going to be like the leader that uh, is going to, you know, end up calling if Ark stopped calling on Furia at some point. It would feel like, oh, maybe it would be Yori or like Caserato would make the mistake of like going to IGL or like something like that, you know? <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's great to see it working. Vinny undeniably has the charisma for it, always in a good mood. You need a leader that's always in a good mood they've got one on their hands. Meanwhile, of course, let's let's talk about Monty real quick. This is obviously an unfortunate circumstance. We heard the pregame interview, you know, the news of Bro and SDY departing the team after the RMR debacle, but with yeah. the roster lock at Blast, which was put in place 14 days ago, only 14 days ago, they needed two replacements. Mm -hmm. They're only able to get one because they had Lean signed up as a sub. This is an academy player for Monty as well, trying to get a bit of a debut. Yeah, not, not a terribly fun situation for Monty. They've definitely gone through some stuff. Like, losing SDY is like like heroic losing Kadian or something. Well, I mean, that ended up working out. But something where it's like, you're, you know, your IGL and like the face of your team is like gone at the same time, right? Big ticket player, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. So that was, that was probably like an unforced sort of like, you know, probably didn't end that well, I would guess. Especially coming off of the failure to qualify through the RMR. Yeah. So I don't know how he feels about coming back to play for the team and then you know lean's thrown into the situation i'm sure he's happy to play but uh bro was actually you know i mean he was a pretty quality player like seeing him go to Strauss is kind of interesting i'd say for us i think we followed monty quite a bit yes uh, bro's definitely been like pretty impressive he's not like a blame effort replacement obviously but you can be presently impressive Spooky player is going to make sure waro can't get into anti antics so nice clean conversions out of imperial for the three zero start. SDY is looking a little buff, actually. I like the little emotional poster that he's decided to put on his couch nearby. Life, Life doesn't, get, doesn't easier. get easier. You become you, stronger. That's, a, that's actually what I tell people about Dark Souls. They get like, scared to play Dark Souls. When you get better <laughs> at Dark Souls, the game doesn't get harder. Sure. Whenever you want to remember that. Put down the shield. Start rolling. Paula. We're talking to <laughs> Paula, you. Paula, yeah. Put down the summons, Paula. 
Guns in for Monty. Let's see what this defense has in store for us. Imperial's map pick, first gun round, Demka top. A site with support from main. Fast volleys, but no immediate follow through. Back out into another wave of outer utility. Phelps looking like maybe he wants to play around it. Speaking of individuals that have shown marked improvements, Phelps, baby, level's coming back. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of talk about like, damn, Seized is at a major. And obviously, Phelps with Fluxo. I've done it more recently, but prior to that, that was a name we'd kind of stopped talking about. No doubt. And now within the new Imperial, he's found his groove. World 2K allowed to push deep through ramp with lean by his side. They just kind of walk right into that unsuspectingly. You know, they fell back for that, that volley of outer smokes, but then nobody played behind it. And they had lost lobby because they left. It costs them. No map control mm. for the 45 second mark. Then oh. Vinny decides to get active, <laughs> finding a headshot. Very clean on lean. Poor guy. Long range first bullet to the dome. Three players A site stack, however, up in the rafters. It's not going to be an easy exit. I think this is kind of a bit of a uninspiring crawl out to the bomb site slash outer from Imperial. Mm hmm. Someone again, the dub. you know, forfeiting lobby and then walking back into it, acting as if you had it the whole entire time. Then the final counter to all of our conversations is Power of a Dead team, referencing uh, uh, Tempest. Yes. Of course, yes. Which is, which is a mysterious effect when I guess when all the baggage is removed, you know it's coming to an end. So then you play free and you end up winning more in a way that you couldn't when you were trying harder. Monty is one of those curious ones. Seen them kind of come together in the last couple major cycles. Big result back at Paris. No, oh, big, big result, yeah. Definitely, you know, start securing them invitations to the big lands of the year. Now the team's kind of falling apart. Seriously, and like the story last spring was the amount of games they were playing. Ooh. Whoa! I just for Woro. No way. Spamming through, that's gonna catch SDY and Woro. Looking for his with support. Now Demko's gonna be a little cautious about main in a second. Bullets whizzing oh. by. Woro's grenade will find him. But they don't know about Phelps and Garage. That could be a great chance to return the favor. Decenti's sensing something inside A. And Demko's on his own here, operating as the hut players looking elsewhere. Yeah, let's see if he thinks about this peak. Actually, walking off to... Oh my god, this will be a free one for Decenti, right? But will it be two? No, it won't. Time just falling off the clock as Phelps is roaming around outside, and they are in a spot actually two pounds on out on upper if they get Henny into mini. Really comes down to this ladder moment, and Wara watching this. He's got the perfect off angle to cover that. Felt very stringy there for a moment, like fights could happen in any direction at any time, and in this one, it's Monty to shut down the hell peak. So Henny looking to split it. He's got the bomb. He's got the time. Issue being lean inside of the back of the site. Up top, hard to find. So if Henny doesn't have that extra five seconds to clear all the corners, chances are Bomb doesn't even go down. All assuming he hits the headshot, comes out, can't track it, and Lean's gonna shut it off. So Monty, there's their second. Closed out by Lean. Yeah. Um, good spread outside. There's a lot of lurks that they have to catch and they seem like they're pretty comfortable doing so. So I think that's a good sign for Monty. And this is his first shot from Whoa, wait, he hit an off shot there outside. I think it was through Unbreakable. But that looked like it was about to be crazy. No getting crazy now. Yeah. It's only crazy. Thursday. <laughs> Economy starting to betray Imperial, two Galils. Again, an ambiguous one as the smokes go up. How many have crossed over? Five. 
Get a Vent Rotator in Krasnel, but that's an MP9, right? If there's any weaponry that's a liability in this one. Yes, this is a hard one to come. I mean, they don't have any info outside, so Krasnel is going to go for the spot. Spot works out pretty well. No punish. Nice. They want to run him down. Vent Rotation is not there. The CTs are kind of slow, but they're coming in from ramp. Easy does it with the SMG, just churning through the unarmored players. Last couple guys up for Imperial, hoping maybe somebody oversteps a boundary, but Monty looking pretty disciplined. And it feels like when you do come in with a lesser roster, or a mismatched roster, or a Frankenstein team like it is at the moment, uh -huh. mistakes are always going to be name of the game. It gets closed out nice and easy. Okay. And I suppose that is the benefit of SDY coming back, even if it is only for this one event and his time with Monty is over. At least he knows what Monty were up to just a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah. Two stand ins, arguably. That's true. That's true. And, uh, and just being a caller, of course. Tough guy to live without. Can't live with him, can't live without him. Well, right at the tail end of 2023 as well, right? They end up getting uh, some pretty good LAN performances, and SDY gets his first LAN MVP of his career. So yeah, he was calling, he was fragging, and he was kind of peaking at the same time towards the tail end of last year. Yep. Reinvented himself Leap, yeah. since the Navi days, undeniably. We get a quick sure. follow through from Imperial. A couple players posted outside main to Senti solo lobby. A bomb down secret. They go for the ramp play again. This didn't get caught, but it was successful a couple rounds ago. And I like that Lean doesn't overstep that boundary. Just kind of comes halfway into lobby and then tucks back out. Let's Demka go for the initiative through hut. Monty got eyes on this. The CTs have figured out what kind of map control they're comfortable giving up. They're actually doing a great job of working around that. They punished Imperial quite a few times outside, but they have not given up on the cross. Krasnow, same spot, Galil in hand. Oh, and he gets away with a dink. That's at least nice. It'll slow down Vinny a, a touch. But it is just to drag a second player downstairs. Up, there's it. Looks like it's still going to come. Oh, I mean, this very confusing. Of, yeah, right? And then the sudden, like, a squeeze and a 0 to 100 inside A. Wow, not bad. Yeah, I felt like Monty kind of lulled into a, a false sense of confidence. I think I would have been lulled a bit too. Like I hey. saw, you know, one guy coming out of the vent, another guy downstairs, and then there, no one's actually in the lobby. They're all just holding for the lobby push. So it's a pretty forward thinking here for Imperial. That round really feeling like a flash mob. Do you remember that phenomenon of the early oh, 2000s? Man. Yeah, people show up at Times Square and just like, do a handstand all at the same time. Everybody just, you know, 50 people start dancing. I feel like that's what the A site just felt like. Monty going about their errands. Just had to go right. and buy some eggs. The next thing you know, Decenti's tearing through two up in the lobby on his own. And closing with the third. So Imperial, good answer. Uh, I find that far more inspiring than the last couple rounds, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is great stuff. All right, another... Another full rifle. Oh my god, is this gonna work? Chelsea, oh, you can yeah. hear Demka reloading. And... Oh! Honestly, take your time, go for the headshot, I feel like, in that spot. Either way, 5v3 now. Good reaction time from Krasnow, making sure the a site doesn't falter. Demka banking on him to hold off. You get two getting closer to ramp. Let's see what Lean's made of. Quick one on no way. Little stutter Up step there. won't get him off it. Beautiful hold solo. Down on B, and it's no issue. So Monty right back to a winning round, taking barely any damage. Yeah, you do love that. That was, that was clean from Lean. Nice shots. 
Have you ever watched a lean game? Me personally, I have not. No, I don't know. Because uh, I'm, well, I mean, we didn't cast like the last season of the Academy League. And he is on their Academy team. Wait, where do Academy teams play right now? Do they just avoid their main rosters and just play like just anything else? I would imagine online cups and whatnot. Yeah. But like Monty were also, you know, Monty also played all the online cups. Yeah, but they're big now, you know? They grew out of them. Win. Yeah. Yeah, I guess they're playing less of them. Yeah, I mean, if I take a look for like Young Ninjas, for example, it's just a lot of the CCT tour, uh, some local Swedish stuff, the Red mm -hmm. RES regional series. So yeah, just the, the online European leagues. So it looks like he actually just joined Monty Gen as of two series ago. And he doesn't have a super long history of games, but it goes back to 2021. I mean, he basically played, he's played the most by far in 2023. You know, we're talking like a handful of games, 22 and 21. Right. And, you know, so, to answer the question, what events do they play? Monty Jen has literally played one event. Uh, so okay. <laughs> the answer is not many. It's all very fresh right now. <laughs> yeah. But hey, it would just be another amazing Ukrainian talent, right? Oh, somebody DM me asking if we could do an, you know, an esports sort of like, uh, like a WESG again, essentially. Like where people uh, yeah, yeah. National pick team. national teams. And I was like, you know, because of scheduling, it's hard because of like, it's mostly scheduling, I want to say. Sure. But because of organizations and scheduling, like it's quite difficult. Like even the Olympics has problems trying to get players in regular sports sometimes yep. because of like the NHL, the NFL, stuff like that. So or not the NFL, but uh, the Ukrainian team they, they put together on this list was like so insane. I was like, holy, they would actually probably be in the finals. I'm just going to go pull that up. Moro on the box holding off four players ready to go with the flashes of Vinny. Moro loses his ankle, still in a good spot to fall back if he chooses to. He's also got support here if he wants to hold the line. SDY takes over the responsibility. No, a bit of a messy spray, but Waro continues to clip wings on the descent to the B site. And he ends up splitting No Way and Henny still in ramp. So the CT side, hanging on. And if SDY's absence is going to leave some impact to be taken up by others, then let's see Waro 2k, right? Because the hype was real. But the results, at times, inconsistent. It's got a great head-to-head -head versus Simple. Great head-to-head -head versus Imperial right now. 10-3 and three the start. It's another one of these rounds where Imperial go quiet, but it's not one when they've got big numbers. So we got Demka exposed to the peak. Squeaky door makes him a little nervous. He changes the position of his crosshair. We'll see if that opens it up for Henny. Nope, can't win the duel. And the no scope on the ladder. Why not? Add a, add a ladder emoji for that one. Okay, so we talked about at Paris when, you know, Monty eliminated Navi, right, to get it to top eight. That was like the sourest note for like Simple to go out because losing against Waro when he was like beefing against him was just crazy to watch especially for the last like csgo major of all time but it was actually also sdy beating simple and navi the team that he had to prove that he was you know a better player than they made him look i guess yes, best sir. way to put it and he he did do that as well but okay so get this the best ukrainian team potentially i don't know if there's a the name zontix simple bit wonderful and sdy that is pretty good yeah, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's that almost good. nail there's almost no overlap at, besides simple wonderful but simple rifles now apparently, so apparently. <laughs> Allegedly. You pick a country, I'll give you the team. Bangladesh. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> Look, Macedonia has four players. Can you okay. name them all? Uh, Tatsunito, Kixan. 
You can't name these guys. I don't even know what team they were playing on. I think it was Kicksand's old lineup. Most likely. It's a guy named Zikos and one named Dan One, or Danny, I guess. Shout out the boys one time. For Turkey, it just says Eternal Fire lineup. It doesn't even list a name. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> <It's always laughs> <anything>. Let's go. <laughs> Top eight for sure. Another one of these rounds is pretty quiet for Imperial's approach with the guns. Lighter utility than they're used to, so no wall of smokes to cross, but they're lucky. No one's holding it. All right, they've got Waro 2K this round behind CT Vent. They had SDY in hell, but he was looking at ramp. And so suddenly we get again this just kind of invigorating burst of energy out of Imperial to take over B. Lean pegged by a smoke. And a flash to move out. A little damage here. We're, we're talking a 10 man post plan. And a late lurk from Vinny. Good oh, break control. He gets the headshot. He's had a couple clean kills despite only having a couple kills. But they have been clean ones. And these long range sprays need to be studied. Yeah, what happens here? Yeah, easy USB to the back of the head. But is it all for naught? Because SDY dies in hell and the B site completely under wraps. Poor Waro. He's going to try to go save and spawn with Demka maybe. They'll held off on ramp and that's Imperial getting through because of, I'd say, a lack of presence outer. Mm -hmm. and there's so much there's so much fallen in Vinny's calling you know there's so much like thorough default jiggle peeking map control into like overwhelm afterwards like that's like it's all, always sort of been his style He's, he hasn't really changed from it he's just getting better at it I have a question yeah do we know if I, I, I just it eludes me who was the IGL for Fluxo when they qualified for the last major. Was it Phelps that was trying? Mm, no, it was Woody. Woody, right, okay. Because I was trying to think which IGLs could Vinny base himself off. You know, played with Art, played yeah. with Fallen. Yeah, I'm not really, because I was saying, like, I'm not really seeing Furia. Mm -hmm. Agreed. But I am seeing, I am seeing Fallen. But I'm sure if you ask him, he, you know, he said they both. It's me. Vinny. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> I have no idols. Phelps killed the garage play, so another gun round here where it's just this quick energetic attack outer. Poor SDY is kind of getting outplayed at the moment, getting hit from all sorts of places. He's been trying to change his position, but none of them seem to work. One kill on the half. And Demka just leaning back mm -hmm. in this A site, whether it's along the site wall or here by CT vent, all oh. good for Demka. They've got themselves an anchor that's hitting hard. Henny trying to dance with him, but we're going to get the support from Wara out of heaven. Oh, no support needed. What a superb round out of Demka. That is four on the play. Maybe oh. going to need the ace. 1v1, no way comes out swinging. But Demka's now playing outside. Ooh, getting outside. I mean, it could be, this could be a legible position here for no way. The vent drop is also open, I think, though. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, that's the right play. Because either he went back of putt or he went outside, in which case he wouldn't peek. So Demka actually getting downstairs Fast. quite quickly. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Nearly put the bomb down in the open. He's gonna volley him out, so no way has to take the duel. And he swings in through fire to give Demka not only the ace, but the clutch to boot. Huge yeah. round from the back of that A play. I mean, again, fully exposed to the heaven peak, but importantly, fully prepared crazy man that's not a good duel for him i mean it's not bad he's waiting for it but it's a hard duel but to get three kills from opposite vent i'll be damned this is something where henny i mean henny damn near died to the guy in heaven because he was taking so long to peek him so they needed to swing on that together but you would think there's no way the guy peeking from opposite vent is going to trick three people, right? Like, he has nothing to do except peek the exact same place. He didn't even have utility to work with. No, he did such a good job of isolating the fights, though. Yeah. Gave Henny that crouching wide swing, too, so... Hit him with a few different dance moves. Picks up five kills and a one-round lead for Monty. To try and finish off the half. Waro has been rock solid, 13 kills deep. Kraft now getting a little weird here. Smoke spam, they're caught on the attempt to drop down. And even if they do, damned if you do, damned if you don't. There's knives out, there's players in vent. Uh, hang on, Waro. Oh my god, Whose what? team are you on? And he still gets it. Trying to chase it. Oh. What? <laughs> what <the> <laughs> okay. 
I thought he liked it. Let's all settle down. All right, we get a little zany. We got a little weird. But at the end of the day, it's Monty to come out on top. 7-5 CT side here on Nuke. It's like a gift from, from the gods having this name, like really. <laughs> when he was 14 years old, he wrote to a really famous guy on Steam. I think his name was Device. Like people used to call me Nenza, which is like um, when you're when someone is a kid, you know, and you just give him this like cute nickname, you know. And I was using this one for, for my in-game name. But then like as I was growing up, it was like, you know, just like it felt like uh, people were treating me as a kid because I had like a child's name. So I was thinking like what could make it look cooler or better. And of course, like every name looks better with an accent and so on. I've chosen my nickname because I was a young kid and I had a really bad name, Exitron, like the Transformers. And I was powering up my computer and it says Windows Device Manager. And I was like, uh, sure thing, I'm gonna go with that. The alias means select in Spanish, like it's a verb. And uh, I chose it because uh, it kind of like reminded me of like a player uh, from StarCraft named Select. And uh, I was in like my Spanish class, like taking a test. And uh, one of like the questions was like saying like select, select the following, whatever. And uh, it was written in Spanish underneath it. And uh, I just like made the connection with that. And I wanted a new, na a new name and I thought it looked cool. So uh, that's why I pick it. I picked uh, Angel first. That's my name in Norwegian, Angela. And then I switched it to uh, Heaven Rain with a little thing on the head, like a real, a real gamer name. And then uh, I grew up a little bit. and understood I had to remove some stuff from this nickname. Then I ended up in Rain. I had a different one before, um, which I just like randomly typed keys on my keyboard. And uh, when I was becoming more professional, I decided to just change it to Alex. I think it was lost in esports somehow that players aren't recognized for their names. They're just like known as their nickname. So I think I thought it was better to have my name instead of a nickname. Hell, what do we have here? A decent looking Monty? A situation where Imperial, the team who qualified to the major versus the team who just could not and then lost their IGL, are still are still seeing success. They got seven rounds on CT side on Imperial's map pick. And I think that somehow there is a world where this works out for them on Nuke. Now, of course, when we compare the NARMR to the EU RMR, there is a difference. The teams who lost in EU might have been able to survive in NA, but with how clean it was for Imperial, you would think that's not going to be the case. That wasn't going to be possible in this matchup, but a lot does rest on this pistol. You have Imperial coming in with no nades. All half armor buys. Penny with the first attempt to fight back. And he, he also actually has to do a pretty good job here of trying to scare them. Upstairs, peeking into Squeaky. He has no way on the back of the site ready for the HUD explode. That is inevitable. As you can see, the T's, their faces pressed up against the glass right now, ready to hit the A site. Flash has come out. And they jump out in. Kills and trades go the way of Monty. The plant on the back of the site means it's now a 2v3. Phelps and Vinny join hands, jumping out of the vent. Demka actually tries to get a little funny with it, lurks around into Squeaky, but it's actually Krasno and Lean from the back of the site to find the final trades. And there was no chance for a response. That's actually a very quick one. And I mean, now they might start smiling because 
it's eight rounds. It's your opponent's map pick. I think you don't know how well you're going to play with your Academy player on your roster, but things are going good today. So I think the way they see it, make hay while the sun shines. Yeah, sometimes today is all that matters, Mo. <laughs> I feel like at the showdown, that's really it. Single Elim, one shot, day after day. And Monty making the most of this one. We got a Zeus on the field in the hands of Vinny. We got an easy yard cross from SDY. No way playing with him. Phelps gets spotted down the deep. There's this pack of players from Monty ready to hit A. And limited defenses. Again, just the Zeus. Yeah, not going <laughs> to happen. A little too far. No way's low HP. The Molly will doom him. Event drop. Getting dangerously close to those pistols. Sure enough, <laughs> Phelps hitting him with the drive-by. That's a Galil, if I'm not mistaken, to be picked up. Just got to reach for it. Yeah. The fruit there needs to be a... There needs to be a fraud watcher for Brazil, you know, because I can only do an A. I just, I can even do EU because I watch so many EU games, but I don't know about Brazil until the Armars roll around, you know? Right. Yep, that's fair. I can't really call Imperial frauds because I don't know exactly what the expectations were for them. Well, I think the expectations kind of skyrocket after the RMR performance just because, I mean, again, right, there's this conversation around the format and the, the, the teams that some some competitors were forced up against but when you when you look at the run out of imperial i think it was the nature of the wins that really kind of impressed the most right uh, mm. i think they lo lost at most like six rounds on any map and they got pain in the best of three so that's the only time we saw them play a bo3 cleaned up with that one as well yeah that's true we didn't that's see them, that is that is a big one we didn't see them play against you know the bigger names but at least their wins were convincing. Vinny, not going to be able to stop Demko from at least getting into the corner. Down the vent, he'll go. Out the hunt, come the others. There's players in the site before No Way is able to hold back. Waro swinging from Hut with the bomb carrier right here with him. It's that delayed second wave of lobby players to come out. Phelps trying to sneakily creep up out of the vent. He's done so. Just got past Krasnall. Who's a little more concerned about Lobby, but with the util usage. There it is. Phelps giving himself away. Kraus now cleaning up shop, and Monty on the brink of this 10th round win. Decenti's flank connects quickly, cleanly. Keeps himself at 100 health with Waro low and close. Mm. Oh, caught on the edge of it. Waro gets vision, gets wind of what's up, and posts a 3k on the AK to get those double digits. Yeah, Waro's just playing some quality CS right now, so... I think we saw some a great op shots in the first half. Good rifle work right here. And that's sort of a story you don't really want to see stop because I don't think of any of the players, like, I think, you know, when Boros got into playoffs, that's when people were like, oh, you know, Paris, like, oh, maybe he's not all he's cracked up to be. And then he had a sort of a bad thing on Falcons. I think Boro, I think it's okay to still be hyped up on him. He's still pretty nasty with it when it comes to offers. Pistol situation towards ramp into the AK. Battle of the bottom fraggers right now between SDY and Vinny. Let's go ahead and throw them under the buses. SDY getting a cross frag versus garage that's round. True, true, true. I don't know much about regional fraud watch, but we can always do it on a map by map basis. <laughs> yeah, true. No smoke does get mollied, but the squeaky player is approaching quietly. Vinny yes, yeah, senses what's up. Nice timing on the peak, but SDY coming out from main. And then he gets cleared by Krasnall. Nicely done. It is Monty slicing through the A site setup again because once more, lesser weapons. Imperial's disadvantages don't stop coming. And it's a delayed plant here, no panic. A, sto a story we haven't had yep. is 
the blast showdown saving a relationship like what if monty clear this and they st <laughs> and then they stick together after the showdown ends imagine that that's the we don't get anything like that out of the showdown it's only like heartbreak and tragedy so i thought you meant like you know someone's girlfriend was pissed but then they played well at showdown and <laughs> it's like honey never no, mind. no 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 wrong you're the relationship with your bros okay yeah let me rack my brain we've cast a lot of showdowns But I think you're right. I mean, we did have like pain making it to uh, to play in Lisbon. That was pretty special. Yeah, true. Over Furia. That was, mm -hmm. that was a fun one. Yeah. I think uh, Fluxo making it to Fall Finals once. Yeah, that was pretty hype, actually. I mean, usually South. I mean, we've had a couple instances where like a South American team comes through and qualifies for a season finals. Yeah, that is true. But that was also, to be fair, when the showdowns were divided regionally. And uh, Imperial will have a little international challenge at hand. Which is also kind of good. It's better. It's better. Don't just reward any... Or don't, don't, you know, don't, don't reward regions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, somewhat. I do like having an RMR. Well, that part, sure. But I mean, yeah. you know, for, for showdowns, I come to Europe. Yeah. Do it in Europe. I think when there's only eight teams at the spring finals, I want the best eight. For sure. Senti. A one and done. Off of the angle, he'll fall back. No risk being played on this one. Monty on the brink of that 12th. Look out for those nades, boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The clipping in this game, sometimes it's uh, pretty unforgiving. Everything's so specific because all the angles and textures are so realistic to the shapes. It's gotten a little better. It it's gotten a little better. Get a little better. Actually, zero K has created a thing. You know that clipping problem where you jump up and like you get stuck on walls. Mm -hmm. Zero K has actually solved that completely by himself. And hire him. Works. They could literally hire him. Like that'll probably be sent over for them to look at soon. I'm gonna send it over for sure. But yeah, he, he actually solved that problem. So we're not, we're not gonna have clipping problems soon, at all. Shout out the KZ community one time. Honestly, more than once. More Shout them out every day. No way. Waiting for it, waiting for it. All this rumblings from inside of the vent, but no sir, it's not even Squeaky that hits him. It's the Krasnall main peak that just, again, opens this A site wide for the taking. Krasnall, big multi-frag this round, three frags. And this was, of course, the four versus five. Don't forget it. Another mm -hmm. round where I think Outer gets away from the defending team. Helped Imperial post a couple of those T rounds, and it's been Monty's exploit here, too. Dude, they're actually dirty with it. Uh, Krasnall would end up on the, on, the, on the Polish super team also, by the way, for sure. Because I'm thinking they need an anchor. Polish guys are retiring, so not all of them. We still got, we still got Ents, Snacks, and oh yeah, and Ents, right? You know, Sna I was thinking you... more old school, but yeah, Ents, Ents just they'll sign Snacks and they'll sign Krasnall. That's the next move. Yeah. Well, unless Gave, unless Glaive unless gets his uh... Polish visa in time, exactly. Or Shuhei would be the. Oh, true. Yeah. yeah. Fast one. Look at these rap scallions trying to get down that vent. I don't think so. You want to close this game a little too quick. Mm. You get caught by it, but they did just reclaim a 4v5. Now it need to be the 3v5. And Bomb's not in their possession either. Although Krasnall is over towards control windows. Senti seems on high alert for it. Oh, and the glass is cracked open, so... He can use this to his advantage, but I... I... Oh, okay, he does spot back clock, and they're ready to hit this. Henny's just got to hit his shot, and it's all good. Right to pop up again, actually, but that cost him his life. Was that safe? Whoa. Oh, my God. 
still scarier yeah. for the CTs, I think. Yeah, and he grabbed the bomb. Yeah. If he can put it down for SDY, who's over at ramp right now. You know, these two players could definitely pinch into the B site. Vinny, both in the open. Oh, SDY, nice headshot. Oh Krasnow, yeah. hands busy, doesn't matter. No one's here to stop it. They're gonna dive that vent with both. Monty, ramp plan. fully aware as to what's coming this way. CTs, line it up for Krasnow. Doors closed, SDY far back, slow game, but a good chance to end strong. Phelps is gonna have to play the smoke to get out. Molotov deep as well, trying to just stick this down to two seconds. SDY is gonna be desperate and it's off the mark. Phelps oh. makes the best of a bad situation to keep the game alive. Yeah, that could have been it right there, obviously. It was a little bit too hard to find. The bomb just planted just sort of in front of the door. So, I mean, good play from, from Phelps to say, okay, in control this will be awkward for you to start try to defend this let's just go for it it's going to be hard for him to get sdy out otherwise smoke just half the job there but the 5v3 to start obviously is also a nice touch certainly for imperial it's going to feel like this game could end at any second because the Entry players on Monty have been so good, and now SDY seems to be getting up too. Secret held back for a moment. Waro scouring the battlefield, but doesn't catch the angle. Go smoke main. We saw Warrow looking for the kill outer, so could definitely come back for a second attempt. Senti keeps his head down. Oh, damn, it's a lineup from Warrow that takes his Kebab. teammate out. But a kill's a kill. And outer now fully wrapped up by Monty. 25 seconds. Time's gonna start to become a problem. We've got Phelps down lower. We've got Vinny, the closest player to rotate vent if need be. Phelps, good dink. Falls back, keeps himself alive. But Demka cuts uh -oh. off the rotate, so now Phelps is gonna have to bank on Henny out of those ramp doors yeah. for no. It's the fast, a rotation. They're desperate and they pay that eternal price. Six seconds, Woro can't get this back. They thought maybe that kill out from Squeaky would open A, but another set of feet lock it down. Yes, if they had obviously traded that kill, it was entirely possible. But the dink from Phelps makes a big difference because that's one of the second players coming up the vent. And uh, if he doesn't get that shot when he's holding from control side, well, it's all over. And here, yeah, Descenti dies, but he's, you know, it's also, or, sorry, whoever was in front of Waro dies, but he's also low. <laughs> Not much here to game with. Monty have the op for Waro. That's about it. Easy Hunter, what are the best gloves in CS2? The best gloves? Yeah. I mean, I'm biased, but I'll say the Moto Glove Turtles. No, no, I didn't say what gloves you have. I said, what are the best gloves? I know, I've got the best ones. <laughs> 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 yes, well, I have only the best. <laughs> okay, what's the, the most ver what's the most versatile gloves? I think the superconductors are pretty, are pretty slick for that purpose. Superconductors, okay. It's like the pale gray, yellow light. and black. Oh, oh, pale oh. gray, light blue, rubberized material. <laughs> Ooh, okay, okay. Glock dink. A Glock dink from that range is just—it's actually just more frustrating than missing because it does so little. Or <laughs> never mind. I guess you just never need to. <laughs> you just need to know that that's wild. SDY, top silo, Glock kill outer. All right. All okay. Right. And it's a little scary for Monty. I mean, it's not that scary, but.
Yeah, now time is a huge problem, actually. So we're running to go while Waro just saves, I guess. Yeah, don't lose that off. It's not worth the attempt. We got two players up on A site. They'll be able to lock down main, and there's the eighth out of Imperial. Question around Waro's op save, though. That's good. Decenti takes the route towards Vent. Monty not able to close. Okay, and then what's the best Brazilian lineup that we can make? Caserato. Henny. Yuri. Vinny. And Cello. Cello. Ooh. No, I think this is just another example of me being out of touch with Brazil at the moment, because I think right now, I mean, if the RMRs taught us anything, right? I think that there is this wave it's of like young What happened Brazilian. to Lukowski and stuff, you know what I mean? I don't know. What happened to VSM? Yeah. You miss a major cycle Dude. and everybody forgets about you. That's the that's the rule. That's that's how the game goes. That's why they're crying, you know? It's not money. I'm excited to see more from No Way and Decenti and see if, you know, any of these younger Brazilians have something to do once they get to Copenhagen. A few fresh faces that impressed at the America's RMR. Potential fast one with the smoked out A. Oh, Big Uzera. No, has to be on the team. 100%, right? 100%. Has to be? Big Uzera? Yeah, I mean, pain hasn't been all that as of late. Yeah, but Big Uzera not even has a. As a caller, he could even just be an individual, bro. He's crazy. Descenti, careful. He's locking in. Oh, but he lines up too. Nice second kill on Lean. We get the vent drop. Vinny with him. It's another burst of energy out of Monty. Diving the site off the mark. Bomb is planted, Krasnell's on high alert, and Waro comes off of that plant, op in hand, ready to rock. Vinny's gonna die unsuspectingly, and it feels like Monty have made their way through. It was a grouping inside of the ramp room that overwhelms Decenti. And he gonna swap over to the rifle to try and play this necessary retake. Demanding of the 1v3, one kill team, Waro's op posted, Henny's gonna swing for it, support from up top, Waro's just playing with him, oh, Wait, hold on! A drop into the site, and he gets three kills, but he doesn't have the time, I don't think. Oh my god, because he couldn't find the bomb I on the floor think. because of the lights, and he can't defuse it! Oh. Monty try to throw it, Monty dive him down, and in the end, it is time, their ally. Imperial losing out on Nuke as Monty seek to go further at the showdown. I could.
And welcome back to the Spring Showdown by Blast Premier. That's map one done and dusted. Monty taking out Imperial on Nuke. That's a nice solid win, Bubski, but I, I hesitate. I don't really know what to classify it as. Is this is this an upset because of the stand-in? I, I don't know. I don't really know what this I is. I mean, for a normal team, I would probably say yes, it would affect a, a normal team. But this is Monty. They were built in the, in the mixed team as a puck team, right? And they've kind of gathered yeah. themselves in that environment. So I don't think it's too bad for them to potentially have a Sam Young who's left and then uh, a stand-in. I think they're used to that environment and they did very well considering the circumstances. Yeah, super well. And, and I mean, Waro ends uh, top of the scoreboard. A great job from him leading the way for Monty. Krasnell as well had a good game. Demka had an ace mixed in there. Um, solid performances, but really, I mean, a good defense on Nuke, which we come to know and expect and love, but really the hot start on the T side, rattling off five in a row before Imperial could even get started. Kind of feels like it, it just kind of sealed their fate. 13 to 8 is the ending score in the favor of. Yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to miss this team. Um, this team has proved everybody wrong. They have been inside the top. 10 they've done a lot with very limited resources i think it also shows you with the right combination of players just individually in the meta that we're in right now that you can actually get really good results there's no doubt that this team lacks in certain aspects but considering what they've done with the material they have you can not only be impressed right yeah, and I mean it's been pretty consistent too, right? Like it's it's been it's been what like a, a year of pretty decent results from from Monty as well. So I'm I'm with you. You can't really you can't really mess with uh, with what they've been able to accomplish. Uh, yeah, and I, I love the guy in the picture. Like Waro 2K had such an interesting entrance into the scene. Like many people speculated, oh this guy's an onliner. He was maybe like getting a little bit of cheating accusations, and then all of a sudden he starts a beef with one of the biggest players in the game. Simple him him and yeah. Though I think it started from them playing a qualifier or a mixed tournament together, and the, it was just like a it was like a celebrity yeah, streamer exactly, tournament or something just, like that. And then both of them just <laughs> dreamed that they just hated each other. So it's such a lovely story, especially when they play each other. I mean, um, he can actually play himself into the next round while Simple actually was out in the first. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I mean, for Imperial, this is uh, it's a rough first map to get started on. Again, you know, all the teams that have come over from the Americas have really struggled to get going and, and, and have yeah. any consistency today. And this is just another example of that. We didn't see that firepower out of Henny in this map that he, that he brought at the RMR. Um, and not enough production elsewhere to kind of really overcome overcome what Monty was bringing. No, but today. I also think uh, I see a couple of rounds with Henny, right? He, he doesn't really feel that he's... In the zone, I would say, like, he gets one kill and then he goes for initially sure. stupid repeats that he knows he shouldn't do, but that can be that jet like we're talking about. I'm not saying that's the case for all the teams today, but it's a little bit worrying in some extent that all the teams who actually just flew in completely jet like from the armor is actually performing on a slightly lower level than what we used to. Yeah, and what's crazy about, I mean, what's, what's, uh, maybe not crazy, but this is this is Imperial's yeah. map pick. Like, this has got to spell a little bit of doom and gloom for the rest of the series. Monty just kind of thrashed you on your own map pick where you wanted to take things. Um, and, and now you've now you've got to find a way to bounce back and you're headed you're headed to Mirage yeah. and again it's Monty who's admittedly playing like a pug you just mentioned they were kind of built from the start as a little bit of a pug situation so you're, you're really heading into home territory yeah I mean I also think when we mention pug players right we just talk about those players who's like really strong individually right I think Boris also came out of that team and I think everybody talked yep. about Boris about being the next big thing right but he lacked in other aspects but he worked in that environment because the extent of his uh, responsibilities was so limited like they just needed him to go first and like get the initial kills and yeah go kill, go kill boros go connect yeah. the right and but when you join another team and you get into that tier one space like with proper in-game leaders it's just a different environment and he couldn't adapt but it's going to be interesting to see where all these pieces land are they going to continue together i think they have a pretty strong trio in in the likes of voro demq and, and crash now for the future but the, i'm not sure where the resources is, is in the organization yeah, that, I mean that's kind of a big up in the air question with with how the, the you know bro departing SDY leaving the team and kind of coming back to to, to fill some of the gaps as necessary. But I, I'm with you. I think especially Demka is like a really intriguing piece. Krasnell's growing on me day by day. Woro's obviously strong, but um, there's a pretty solid core there that you could try and rebuild around, um, or a pretty solid core that can get picked apart by yeah. by other teams who are needing some pieces. This this Monty team's got some talent in it. Yeah, I mean sure. I also think it it shows how much a major means nowadays, right? If you're failing one, then you 
basically disband uh, half of the team because if you don't have the the big contracts at the big organizations then it's really uh, all or nothing situation and monty has been able to be uh, that bad news eagles type of team being able to qualify every single time but all of a sudden they miss it and it just uh, causes an earthquake inside the team Obviously, Bro would have left for Astralis regardless, but Sun Dayong doesn't seem to have anything other than the cards for now, right? So it's just going to be looking a little bit yeah. interesting from an outside perspective on how the smaller teams can operate. So before we get into this next map, let's talk a little bit about Imperial and how they can bounce back. Obviously, a map like Mirage, uh, you know, lending itself more to this puggy place that we know it's kind of, you know, taken over years ago, took over Dust2 as kind of like the pug map. But, um, you know, you still have players in this like Phelps. I, you know, historically, I remember he was a, he was a big time player on Mirage. His play style's changed a lot since then, but he loved being aggressive in middle uh, from the T side, boosted up in towards window. Henny's op, as we know, can be super mobile and, and Henny's opping style, even to a certain degree, lends itself to a little bit of a chaotic pug situation so uh, there's certainly some positives to take away that imperial can bounce back in this yeah, i mean map. they have the players to do it right and that's the thing also with the brazilian cs i always feel like they've been notorious uh on on mirage the same thing with the danes being on nuke right it was uh, an old tale and we haven't seen it that much recently but i think imperial is is one team to watch for especially considering their experience they actually have um often we talk about the the older players combining with the newer ones and then it creates that symbiosis of a, a really good squad right and i think phillips and henny and vini brings that and then it's just up for the two new guys we just talked about saw earlier who initially did that and it worked really well well, let's see if that young old connection inside of Imperial is going to let them bounce back on Mirage. Their most recently played game on it was at the America's RMR. It was a 13 to five victory over Payne. So they've at least got some success to lean back on, but they've got to shuffle off a little bit of exhaustion, a little bit of travel and focus hard on Mirage to try and force a third map or else they're going home. They're eliminated. So third map or second map, excuse me, coming up right after the break. Scrawny and Laundry is going to bring it to you. We'll see you there.
Welcome back, everybody, to the showdown. We got map two. We got Mirage up next, Mo. I have to be honest. I expected bigger things from Imperial back on Nuke. I thought that uh, I thought that coming off of the RMRs, you know, maybe it was more copium. I thought NA would do well at the America's RMR, but if the Brazilians did better, then that meant they'd have a good showdown, surely. Yeah. It seems I was wrong on all counts. It's, it's, it's very tough. It's very tough. I mean, we do, it's tough for everyone to get a grab. Like, I'm sure it's even tough for the teams that play to understand how, what this means for them versus European teams. Like, it's so hard to gauge doing, a, you know, a middling performance in the EU RMR. What does that mean versus a North American team playing insanely well or the Mongols who are cleaning up in Asia? It's very, it's it, every time this happens, you know? If especially, and then if you watch like the NARMR too closely, then you screw up your challenger pickup. You know what I mean? True. Happens consistently. But there was also the fact that Monty are missing, bro. They got a sub. They have SDY. Disgruntled SDY coming back in. So there's lots of reasons why it, it shouldn't have worked, but it has. It's looking good, too. Down beneath. Ooh! Didn't get there. Demka double kill. And Henny's labored as well, so this one's not going well for Imperial Monty. Right back to winning ways off of the map one victory. Vinny gets caught out on stairs, mm. and that defense left a lot to be desired. Yeah. You know, because uh, it is Monty playing T-side Mirage. This could definitely be quick, actually, if, they, if they're just feeling it today. This would be the one side in one map that I think I would say that. A flash. A single flash on Henny with a P250 for Vinny. This is what round two's got in store. Mm. And they've got a three-pronged split. Actually, T's running back from the A ramp into mid. Wow, they really want to give it to him good here. Five players coming into mid versus the connector. This is just such a good way to clear this to turn it into a cat split, though. I like that. Ooh, flash is good. Four of the line is a bat. Two pistol kills come through. Clean up. All's good. SDY from the basic connector. Demka could leave with the bomb whenever he chooses to. So, Connor, where does SDY end up? Who knows, man? Where does it I think it depends on what SDY wants to do. Like, what his role, you know, what, what role is he going to look to do? He's already international, so he can, like, that's got options. Yeah, what role? I think he... Yeah, I think... I want to say there's probably an IGL he could replace. But uh, I don't know what... Like, for example, like, say, let's say OG, for example. Best DY went to OG, and they built a team around him. They'd probably get access to a lot of players, and they'd have an IGL that, like you could do massive damage with. Now, that being said, his current team here on Monty is probably more yeah, skilled on average. Play. But we saw, like, even in that complexity game, there are some good pieces now on OG individually. I don't think they have the calling, though. Terrorists win. But I can, can't think too much about He could join Furia. That doesn't seem... You know, what I mean? like keep an open mind, though. I no, I think I'm. I think I'm gonna they, shut that one down. Once they called it English for Junior, they wouldn't do that for SDY. <laughs> That's a fair point. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can't believe things, in Junior. You can't believe in SDY. Crazier things have indeed happened, huh? I hear M80 needs an IGL. M80 does need an IGL. Astralis. <laughs> Yo. Astralis? No. No. Let him speak Danish. Yeah, yeah. Come on now. I know. Quick 
turn around from no wait. Any creeping? Oh, almost puts his head out there. I think there were bursts of electricity from Imperial throughout that first map. There are all. Oh. There were also moments. Oh, that was yeah. nice, man. Yeah, refresh your stream, bro. <laughs> Wait, what happened? <laughs> I just felt late. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. Maybe I am late. Let me try. <laughs> Krasnell's got that Mac 10 kill up close. Phelps Duty sitting back. That's all the space, man. He lets him come to him at least. So he's able to shave one off. But so what? Still 4v3. Still Waro in apartments. And that's the end of that. First gun round from Imperial. And I mean, they honestly, they let they let the T's come out into that A play. That felt very inviting mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. terms of defense. Yeah, probably shouldn't have given them ex like that much space for sure. Okay, I've got one last one for you, though. Let me hear it. Canada's, Canada's team. What is Canada's team? I mean, Twist and Naf. Twist and Naf. I'd say Twist, Naf, Walco. Walco. Bang heck. Kind of, yeah. The only other options would be, like, substitute Walco for Stanislaw. And then... Could also I, sub it. Uh, I mean, Stanislaw's a good shout. I think Steel is as well next year. Yeah, dude. Honestly, man. Let's be honest. Give What's me, wild is we lost stuff. Steel in 2014, and he still is active st the entire time since then. There's been a gap in terms of the leadership in North America. We could still use that. We've never failed to avoid since I've hey, been back actually 2025, kind of baby. Yep. Josh Nissan, 2025. Big amount of guns in mid. Three Kong players rushing it, and oh, no way. Survives the test there. Demko's going to try to activate. Looked Ooh. like he had the space to come out from Palace. Honestly did. Looked like he had the timing on that one, but the Senti keeps his head up. Keeps the shot straight. Oh, pushes back Monty's top mid hit. Krasnow. Stuck in the corner, but able to go. And oh into the Senti. He hits the There's headshot. No way. No, he stopped there. Well, there is a way. It's no way. <laughs> uh, no way joined. Wait, what team is Ty? Uh, what team is somebody on? Who? <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you who. Rare Adam. It's rare Adam. Rare Adam. Is there a chance that Waro pulls this one off? No way is low HP. Phelps is locked in window. Vinny's a bit too far unless he jumps underpass. Waro's known no. for a clutch. Yeah, nobody's stopping this. No way was trying to hold it. Ah, it's the second player in. Phelps makes sure. Clean up shop and give Imperial the first. Yeah, that's a good setup. Nice kills in mid. It was precarious, but I think it's the right play to try to stop like this is no way winning his duels with a lot of support behind him and then also the senti getting a very important one if the senti dies they're all in connector and even though they have numbers they can't get out safely so it's actually quite hard if he jumps on a default and they could they could slowly just crunch the space out of uh imperial knowing that they're not really playing the a site but they answer back on both ends That's a low player in underpass and one gone in the window. Phelps uh -oh, trying to one run by Henny. Oh. Ooh, there we okay. go. I feel like we Jesus. sensed that opening a round ago when Henny comes or when Demka comes out. Oh, fights to Senti this time. Waro's gonna double down inside of sight, and Monty have seen blood in the water. This almost feels like the CS that Imperial want to play. When you think about players like Phelps and Henny and Vinny. Yeah, agreed. It's just Monty's a little sharper at the moment. Yeah, I mean, and in general, like, philosophically, they, they approach the game at a higher pace, like... more Furia. Bomb has been planted.
I guess there'd have to be space for Demka on that, you know. Ukrainian lineup potentially as well. Maybe. They just got too many, like, top players, though. Ukraine stacked. Ukraine is stacked and Canada's just a little too top heavy. Top heavy, yeah. But we do still have the best North American player of all time. That's right. Don't you ever forget it. Just because he's you know what though Europe. it's Stewie. At the end of the day, it's Stewie. I it's gotta say, Stewie. Uh, I don't Stewie. Know. no Stewie, no win. That's fair. No Stewie, no Cloud Nine, Boston E League major. No Grand Slam. No Zotac Masters, Hong Kong. <laughs> okay. The only trophy that MIBR has ever won. That's true. Stewie Two K MIBR. Remember those days, folks? That was not a dream. That was the best. Uh, that was the. the the highest point of Brazil's MIBR, so they better remember. What a fun event that was. Close ramp control with the MP9. Remember, it's MP9, M4, all they've got to work. All they've got to try and stop this Monty T-side tear. You said it could be the most... Below out half of the of the series, Mo. You said it could be mm -hmm. fast, and I think that that electricity has been felt. Monty swinging top mid. Monty hitting out A. This one's a little slower. Favors there. Waro predicting the angle and barely alive. Two points of health gets him out of that. But right now, we are talking about a very stacked B site. And no way on the brink of being found out by Demka, depending on the timing of his activation. Oh, timing there as SDY caught with Molly. Yeah, that's good info though. He sees their info. Uh oh, oh. This is Lurk Smoke. Demka thinking about the approach. Other players already up from connector. Those con <laughs> players able to soften him up. Decenti gets the one off of the ticket play, trying to bail his young teammate out of dodge, but nope. Phelps to come in from window. And they barely get this bomb down safely, actually. Saw the shadow. Lean up close. It's the flash. Oh, and it's the distraction for Phelps to come out. Out of connector, catching lean. Op shot off the mark. And remember, Waro, two health from that early boost. Vinny's bomb tap, but it's Phelps with the kit. And that kit just got dropped. Now timing, helping out for Monty. Again, it is 2 HP. It is low time. And that kit has to be retrieved. Does Waro bite down on this? No, sir. Now starts to come out. Doesn't clear it. Two seconds. Henny comes off. Oh. And with that, no chance. It's sloppy, but he gets there. Oh, it's really perfect. I mean, he reads there's no kit because it's a save round. So he goes for the plus five second play, and it's really perfect with the molly, with the peak and everything. No way for Henny to deal with that. He would have died eventually to the fire after getting tagged down. So another one won just barely, but that was really nice for Moro to stay focused on the side of stairs, trusting his teammate to deal with the A site, not responding to the tap on the bomb. That could have ruined the setup for sure. So some clutch moves. I'm really shocked on that cat, um, that cat boost that Waro couldn't see that guy first with a scope from that far away. You know, like he was getting shot down. Like, you know, I would have assumed he would get angle dominance there, but there is the right IP, even only slightly. I don't know where that stands in CS2, though. I was kind of surprised Waro was looking for it. Just yeah. the head as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, he was aiming low for it. Yep, not a player boosted on the bricks, just a player being actively boosted and a little off the mark. And he's got the clean one deep beat. They hadn't met an op here yet throughout this half, so a new challenge for Monty and one that Waro doesn't seem to shy away from, sticking around with the AK.
So while SDY stays locked in top mid, we get this three-player train to move towards ramp and a good chance for Imperial to maybe try and hold off. But again, it is pressure on No Way and Decenti, the two players in the A site. It was a kill apiece last round with lesser weapons. We're going to get a full-blown exec. We have seen convincing executions out of Monty with the A split. Demka's impact from Palace has been felt. Right now, he's smoked off, and so is Phelps on the other end of jungle. Descenti dodging the fire. Krasnow swings over the bricks, gets his headshot, uh -huh. and SDY is right with him. Plant on default cannot be contested. Imperial will not stop this one. And it is Monty with conviction yet again. Waro. Waits for the flash to fade, tries to press downstairs. Phelps is right here with him, barrel stuffing top steps. And with a teammate in Vinny, he tries to get the retake going. Trade's good, 2v2. And yet both the Monty players remaining over on the ramp. This bomb is not planted for them either. They're both tagged up. This retake's looking good. They've got mm. enough time and they managed to move it around. No kit, no problem. 10 second stick for Imperial second. Very hard retake, really well done from Phelps and the good patience to make sure not to phase that smoke to take out Waro top stairs. That really allows them to have a chance. And uh, those duels on a ramp, I mean, if either of them were lost, I think it, it could have been a, a situation where it comes down to time. And you could see because the bomb is flying at default, they had to fight. So I think this actually, one mistake is the ticket player fighting first when your a ramp players are holding the cross and they can't actually defend the bomb. And it's expensive, too. Hmm, oh, that was a T-Spot. Oh, yeah. Getting active here, but still costs them one. Moro creeping down beneath the scope of Henny. Ooh, collateral Fewer. shot. SDY survives it. Flash pelts Waro. Oh, so. Oh my Edge god, shot. that was slick, Very man. Good. But he'll still get caught out by Phelps from the trade. Demko making a ruckus, but... Uh oh my lord. And a smoke top connector to get that bomb to cross over and push Demka into a winnable clutch. Assuming even SDY goes down. Whoa, playing dangerous games and offering up more HP. That's two CTs coming at him now from CT spawn, but he doesn't know. They redirect one back through jungle. Phelps cleans up the little that was left of SDY. Bomb is planted again on default, so Demka opts not to get eyes on it, but instead holds the cross. Good decision. Demka's AWP with the trajectory from the nade. He knows Phelps is coming at him, but it's oh. on the side of it that Phelps will pick up the kill, jumps on with the kit, and another retake coming out for Imperial. Yes, and for Phelps. So really good last kill right there. And um, another situation where just the angle dominance works out. Doesn't jump too soon or freak out. Demka definitely plays it well. And they're really antsy in the 2v2 situation, looking to stay active the whole time, constantly moving, looking to get the kills early. You can see that Monty just do not like to play the delay game. They like to play with a lot of pressure all the time. But uh, oh, that's a specialty of Brazil, so they stand the test. And now the money is horrible for Monty. It's Imperial's way back into the half. Deagle creep all around and Henny. Ooh, that is a very sick headshot out of lean. Jeez. Just gave him the jiggle. He really has hit some nice shots. <laughs> Not like the most kills or anything, but some clean shots this series. That, honestly, that occupies Phelps in mid. Star of the show right now for Imperial. Critically in these retakes. He's also Vinny's support system if things start to go south on B. And Krasno, he's working up with the armored Galil. He's going to clear this. Swings in, the SMG gets both. Vinny, nicely done. Oh my god. Closes down with the triple kill. No support needed, Phelps. You could sit back mid. Vinny's got it all. Yeah. I mean, that was a full-on hard clear from all three people. Ready to take him out and just 
Vinny, small man with the MP9. That's all he needs. David versus Goliath. I like the looks we've had out of Imperial's A play with Decenti and No Way. We saw a little bit more engagement going up into the Palace push. We've seen a solo ramp hold. We've seen both in sight. It feels like Monty has had more conviction on the A hits. So Youngblood tested, doing enough to set up Phelps' retakes. Back to middle, Monty go. 10th round of the T side. You know, it's no longer the Waro show that we had back on Nuke. And he's looking for the freebie. Been jumping around, so now Demka's coming over head hunting. And oh. SDY catching Phelps through smoke. So ladder control offered entirely oh. over to Monty. We get this slide out from Lean. He has managed to get past the connector smoke onto bench, creeping up. But now they've made sound. Decenti, oh, oh. could have had him. Instead, Lean whips round. A good he reaction. So slowly. And Waro 2K prepared for the marketplace, so Vinny gets caught out too. There's fights on all fronts, smoke in connector. No way tries to spam Cat to stop this hit, but now Henny given a chance to cut off the first one. Krass now slides through on timing, and Henny will not be able to spot him. Oh no. Very well fall victim to it. Sure enough, Krasnow just that perfect slide through while the op was on cycle and Henny was in transition. So now no way he's going to have to come through. Hasn't been put in a retake situation. Will be given a chance and it gets taken out of his hands. Two kills from Krasnow to close out on B. It is crazy how, how hard Monty can shoot sometimes, you know? Like this, like I actually didn't catch many other games at the EU RMRs. Like, and I, and I watched this and I'm like, they look just like I remember, like when I watched them play um, almost a year ago. Their individual help was just crazy. They do the micro so well when it comes to juggling their duels and what to focus on. Did you catch many of their games by chance at the uh, at the RMR? The RMR, just the pain BO3. No, 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 Monty's games. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Nope. Over in Europe, no. Yeah, I feel like they just didn't have any like blockbuster matchups that I, that I watched so much of it, but I'll take a look. <laughs> Demka's shooting the cutout on the wall. <laughs> Looking a little too human-like for his liking. Then just pushes through, finding Decenti in the sight, and this one's gonna go down smooth. Vinny's M4, meant to catch him off guard, will find Demka at least, but there is no other threat beyond that one, and it looks like Monty's lead will continue to grow. Phelps, some clean retakes on this A site already throughout the half. This one a little too much to ask of him. Krasnow's gone deep, three survive for Monty, and the T rounds just keep coming. So I'll, I'll tell you their matchup. You tell me if they won, okay? Monty Ready. versus Ecstatic. Lost. Yes, lost 13-9. Monty versus Apex. Lost. Lost 13-5. Monty Oof. versus Nexus. One. One, 13-9. Three Let's for three. Go. Monty versus Astralis. You gotta call the... Map scores, not Wait, like or like two one. Lost two one. Oh, I couldn't remember who eliminated Astralis. Yeah, yeah. So it was actually Astralis. Well, someone's always got to lose, and in Henny's case, someone's got to die. No cross back out of the window. Good pressure there. I feel like Phelps has been playing in con and window on smokes, and he's been doing a good job of jabbing at them. So opening it up. Finding two kills in mid to close out this 8-4 T-side lead. Yeah, sorry, no way. Again, kind of put into a spot where he has to make something happen. And it's Monty just keeping eyes all across the map. Cool as a cucumber closing out this 12th.
anyway back in the round here we've got drifting from Vinny off of cat he was so good with that mp9 earlier but um he moves himself into like i would say a less formidable position to just go all or nothing more of a rotator spot where he can escape they don't oh shoot not a single kill well Vinny gets one at least but he could have used some more support right there too many to spot and they lose the round that they do. The final round of the half. So nice, clean T side. He said it could have been a quick one, could have been the blowout, and we are on par for it, folks. Imperial demanding the bounce back. In action with the Phelps cam, you see the pressure starting to mount because Imperial find themselves potentially as the third America's team to get eliminated today, Mohan. We thought we thought maybe there'd be the rebound oh. here for showdown. Maybe America's representation in London. And if this one fails, mm. well, all it's the pressure falls be us, on Connor. Elevate. Oh, no, it's okay. all on Elevate. Yeah, true, 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 true. They got to come through tomorrow. And uh, who do they play? Checks his nose. Oh, yeah. Spirits. Yeah. So. Yep. Good that'll, luck. That'll be a battle for sure. Battle of all time. Monty looking to cruise through this best of three, even despite not having their preferred stand in and recalling SDY to the roster. Things don't seem to have too many issues. We haven't seen mistakes really being made by Monty. And we've seen good individual levels, right? That first map, Waro 2K's off was hotter than anything. Kraz now oh. come through big on Mirage. And he's looking to keep holding on to the B site. Shots from bench, a miss. And Vinny comes out, double killing, and opening up this round for the possibility of an Imperial T side starts. Demka holds the angle back bench. 
Phelps tagging a couple shots down range. Oh, holding getting the scale. this take going. Phelps and Vinny back with a kill apiece. That's going to activate Demka, force him out from the market. And there we go, Imperial with the pistol to keep themselves alive. Yeah, pretty much the only way to make it a real map. So nice one here for Imperial. Good shooting. Good shooting for sure. But uh, this could be where the trouble begins. They got to keep it going. So no one's safe on Mirage, not on NT Ecos. Not in CS2. Not with five sevens, not with MP9s. Oh, and it's actually the Double Scout Antico. This is a classic. This is my favorite. Especially versus a team you know will play a slow Antico. Two Scouts is the way to go. If they go for shoulder peaks and they try to check things and they get tagged, that's like already round lost if they don't make a decision. The pistol has just become too strong, so... Moro is sort of a good person to have doing this. And it is a full-on default here from the T side. Oh my god, and they go clear out the A ramp right as they leave. They're coming back though. Oh, nice shot, Vinny. Jesus. SDY's got one that's on the bomb. ramp control. Yep, yep. That's a big one. It's only one, but a big one. Is it by time for the rest of Bonti to come over? Or is SDY gonna have to do it on his zone? He's got Demko with the smoke front. So it's a little more bomb control. And again, a little more time for the rest of Monty to try and come over. And there's nobody here to stop lean. So now we're talking three players on top of the bomb. Wow, from the back. They're coming in from the ramp. That's crazy. Phelps is cautious about the murder hole. Oh, nice headshot to catch on Krasnow. Now everybody else for Imperial what? fixates towards ramp, but there's still three players here. Flash over. Dem could double. The headshot's clean. Between him and SDY, they could have a full house. Five frags on the line. Sure enough, the dink is good. And we've got SDY to close it. Monty with the blunderbuss pushing down the B site and shooting through him. That's incredible. But I, I, you almost never see a situation exactly like that. And you almost see it always recovered from the T side, grouping up with enough time together. But I mean, Demka's spray with the globe was ridiculous. Like that second kill, the spray transfer up headshot. But they had perfect timing on the push, got the bomb, rotating in from the back. I mean, that's the test of your, you know, your creative decision making. How you're going to deal with a, uh, a situation like that. Monty do a great job setting up and peaking all the right times. Tough one though for Imperial. To lose in a fashion like that. And it ended up not being the scouts that mattered at all. They both actually got one bulleted. No trickery allowed for Vinny as he creeps out. Not alone there. But SDY is not turning away. He's like, can't fool me. I watch the demo. Oh! You can watch it all he wants. Phelps is sharp. <laughs> yeah, true. Seen it all map long, 18 and 7 at the moment. And he opens the possibility of the other three A players just flooding out and overwhelming Demka. Eagle shots whizzing by him, bomb stuck in Sandwich. Lean's gonna catch Phelps. Sure enough, of two minds thinking about getting going onto the A play. Demka's done a good job of dodging danger. His teammates supporting if anybody gets frisky for the cross. There's the flash that comes out, sets up Demko wonderfully, and leans on cleanup this round. Hey. Two kills plus the flash assists, getting his name into the feed as Monty keep on winning. Hey, that was a good flash, man, right? He kind of just, that was like an on the fly, threw it in front of triple for the peak. Real perfect, directly in front of two players. Didn't go too high, wasn't dodgeable. Good one from lean. And an easy swing. This one's probably the important one as well. I mean, Phelps is on fire. Wow, great Done. shot. Yeah, get the pistols out. If Imperial have any chance, it's going to need to be the gun rounds. And this one, at the very least, a waste of no one's time. Mm-hmm. Only Vinny could smile in a situation like this. He never stops. Never stops. Very consistent.
One last big effort here for the Imperial boys as they've got all the guns that they can afford. But that means no, no op. Wow. He trying to really go for it. No way finally getting a round to be proud of as he struggles throughout map two. And SDY on the quick turn back to the B site. Can Phelps get ahead of the util? Yo, oh, he has the chance. No. He had a very strong chance, and yet SDY finds the headshot. Look at this. Oh, a limb so for Krasnall to rip off. Henny didn't stand a chance there. Never saw it coming. Bomb possession again given over, and Monty on the fast track to a 12th round and map two in their back pocket. That really had to be Phelps, huh? Right there in the window. Vicente coming for it. Moro timing as he looks back and forth, but it works out for him in the end as it usually has. And uh, Monty are on to potentially clearing the series. I'd be so interested to know like what their confidence level was coming into it. Because obviously they clearly deserve to be still be very confident in this team, even though it almost went up in flames just a, a few days ago. I think what's exciting is this is a Monty who will now be able to secure a game versus Meta's port. Uh, the winner of this versus the young Swedes. Mm. You win that game and you're genuinely playing for London. So true, all true. of a sudden the road seems doable for Monty. These have been convincing victories. Of course, Spirit is out there. But Imperial are going to try and fight tooth and nail for the A play again. It is Demka consistently over towards Ticket, just shaving players off. SDY has been able to throw himself into the fray. And Henny's Deagle tries to cross. SDY, there it is. That killer instinct once more. Coming out big. No ways lurk at the bottom of mid pays off. Vinny's Tech 9 has found a victim already. But the bomb lays in the open ground. And the three CTs stacked. As they push out from Ticket, they'll clear Vinny off the bomb site. No way needs the clutch. They all line up, but they'll cut him down and carve that path forward into Meta's port. Monty with a sketchy stand-in situation, not the ideal roster they had wanted, and yet victory does not elude them tonight. Monty versus Meta's port. Soon enough. Enough. Ah, well, final series of the day, done and dusted. A 2-0 for Monty, a dominant 2-0 for Monty. An easy day for them, an easy day for Scrawny and Launders, uh, easy day for product. Uh, no, not really. Uh, it's been, it's been, it's been a long one. But Monty closed this one out quick, 13-5. to uh, I mean, look, they played simple Counter-Strike, uh, Bubsky. They didn't do anything crazy. They just, they yeah, just they did it did well. The good old Monty. Uh, it looks like a team that uh, hasn't been touched at all, but uh, it's a stand-in and it's a uh, academy graduates playing for the team right now. They're actually doing it in a dominant fashion against uh, a team who's had a, a good, um, couple of weeks right at Dharma, so it's it's a good uh, look for the monster of the future of the team. Yeah, a, re a really strong qualification for Imperial, and I think much like complexity, you know, I think Liquid with their loss of the RMR and, and here been exposed a little bit as not being to where everyone expects them to be. Uh, with teams like Imperial, teams like Complexity, it's like this is these are tough circumstances, but we know we know there's a little bit better of a Counter Strike that you can bring out into the field. So, um, no glaring indictments, I don't think of Imperial. Um, just surprising once again, as we kind of mentioned heading into the series and this map, is what Monty's been able to do despite some of the difficult circumstances that they've been in. in terms of their yeah, I mean, they've had countless, right? Coaches not being able to show up, some Da Young having a rough period. Uh, and it's just a, a good thing for, for their scene to, to actually be able to prove that you can still make it even going on with the, the issues in the world, right? That it's such an inspiration to see the guys of some Da Young and so on keep grinding and actually getting the results that they need. Um, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I think he has a very bright future in, in Counter-Strike. I think we saw him at Na'Vi. It, it didn't look too good, but uh, after that period going initially down to Monty, he was so close to getting into the top 20 last year. I think that says a lot. Yeah, he seems to have like reached reached a level uh, since he left Navi. He's like gotten better yeah. since he since he left that team. And and while it, you know it wasn't uh, anything mind blowing with his stint in Navi in terms of what he was able to accomplish, it was clear that he was a strong player, a solid player. Um, and some of their struggles were, were not were not falling uh, you know in, in his lap. But uh, certainly ever since then, I mean the fact that he's taken this Monty Pug lineup put together um, and taken them out of obscurity and into conversation is is impressive in its own way. Uh, but really, crap 
Krasnall and, and Demka, the high skilled players, Waro 2K, these are the guys who Yeah, I mean, uh, that's the one you want to perform, right? Because they're gonna be the future of this team. They're gonna be the ones that is gonna attract new talent coming into that squad. So it's gonna be interesting to see who they pick up. I don't think that they're gonna disappear from the top 30. I think maybe they're gonna take a step down for now, find a new couple of teammates, and then see if they can work their way, bay up, uh, way back up. Sorry. Well, from the winners of Monty to the losers of Imperial, we do have another loser interview for you with James Banks. It's conducted with Vinny, who gave us a little bit of time after the loss. So Vinny, this is certainly not what you want after doing so well at the RMR. I want to try and understand for you, how weird was it to go into this game where you also didn't really know what players from Monty you would be facing, even what would happen in this game? I mean, we knew we couldn't like instruct anything because we didn't even know the players were playing but uh, i think it is just like bug against us and they were just out aiming everybody they, they did like nothing fantastic they, they were just shooting better and that, that's why i lost yeah. pretty much so is that what it felt like to you like you were just out aimed out gunned there was nothing you could try change i think the up? problem was like our basics uh, pretty much on ct there we're just like losing some rounds that we shouldn't and and I think mm. that, I mean, we could, we could add, add like a lot of excuses, but we're just not playing good. Okay, well, fair enough for keeping it honest with us. But for you guys, off the coming up about that, the hype that was the RMR qualifying for the major, does this still feel quite sad for you guys to go out like this when I guess expectations were higher because of what you did? Uh, a little bit. I think it, we went out too fast. <laughs> we were like, the expectation was like winning at least one match, you know? in the tournament yeah. but uh we still have a hope like we're gonna boot camp for like 10 days for the major so i think we're, yeah it's just nice. a start so you're gonna stay here now in europe right all the way yeah. into the major and get yourselves in a great yeah, spot yeah exactly so that that's our goal nice that's very positive for sure and i let, let's let's focus yeah. on the positives <laughs> let's ignore what happened here at the showdown let's focus on this positive how you guys did so very well at the rmr going into the major how much confidence has that filled in just for you as an IGL? Mm -hmm. Because you're still new to this role, right? Yeah, I think for everyone was like, everyone was having the best communication possible. I think, I think individually against the American teams, we're just really confident. Um, mm. And as an IGL, I think like, it's just a really good step in my progression. Uh, I think this match would, would be like really valuable to see what we can fix and uh, how we lost, you know, but yeah, I mean, that that's for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, good words from Vinny. Uh, pretty much exactly what we expected. Did you take anything away from that interview as you got I the mean, practice I mean, he's up? just a lovely guy, right? I would really love to have played the... If I was a Brazilian, <laughs> really I would is. have loved to play with Vinny, man. He seems like such a freaking guy to be around. Never, like, they just got freaking lost. And he's just there smiling and saying, yeah, I can learn a lot from this. Uh, I mean, it's it's a positive outlook for, for, for Imperial, right? Yeah, he's a good guy to go get an omelet with in the morning and start your day right. Uh, Monty's going to take down Imperial. They move on to that quarterfinal number two against Meta's Sport uh, with their upset yesterday. Um, Saw Cloud 9, OG versus Heroic, the other three quarterfinals that we have set in stone, still looking uh, to figure out quarterfinal number one uh, in that spirit side of the bracket, which isn't going to be fun for the other three teams. But that's how things are shaping up so far. The Blast Premier Spring Showdown. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is starting to look like a really cool bracket. These quarterfinals are solid yeah, matchups. I mean, we had a theme going on today. Everybody who was on a, a flight yesterday, right, lost uh, the day of following. So, I mean, you can conclude whatever you want. You know, but, uh, it's, it's it's a pattern, right? I think I think it's one of those things that's easy to target as as a a casual mm. fan that wants to stir some shit. But like, obviously, at some point as a player, I think everyone knows what it's like to play when you're exhausted and compete at a high level when you're exhausted and dead and drained and mentally but fatigued. So um, it is tough circumstances. It's, it's not it's not the biggest excuse in the world. Uh, it's it's not like the only reason why they lost. But certainly, you could hear from Vinny like we missed like the basic yep. things. They outshot us. Those are the things that get affected most. Let's move on. Uh, really quick to the play of the game or the play of the day excuse me for day number two here at the spring showdown uh presented by traded gg had three plays yesterday we're gonna have three plays today uh one of them is gonna be the best first one up is the Aristoche ace 
that he got on Inferno. This was against Liquid, and they're uh, they're upset. And it still felt like a little bit of a shocking disappointment to see Liquid upset, but also a shocking excitement to see uh, Saw still maintaining their form from the RMR and I mean, looking you good. That player of the day, I would say this is the player of the day, right? Heavy God showing why he is being signed for the big box. He got picked up by Endpoint, such a nasty deagle in three in a row. Gets that initial duel on short as well, lines it up, gets the M4, and also gets the guy around long. It's really impressive. Yeah, and old mullet Halsey coming in for play number three of play of the day. Look at him with his AWP, covering his team, moving in, making it look good. Nice, quick shots. And this is the kind of impact we want to see out of Halzerk. This is the kind of opera complexity need him to be. And this was a fantastic job about halfway through the map um, to help complexity out, secure the map, but not the victory. Uh, and yeah, those are those those are the three contenders for play of the day presented by Traded GG. Um, now we've got another thing. We've got another fun thing. Uh, MVP check-in with James Banks. That's right, it's time for our mask MVP check-in as always. And well, it was Cloud9 all on top after their first game. And I think they're still there. They're still rocking it and dominating from start to finish. But guess who snuck on? We've got Krasnal and Waro in there. Now this time, I'm not gonna choose Krasnal, that was too easy. I'm gonna go for Waro this time around because he's having to deal with a lot with this Monty lineup. He is in-game leading, he is orping, and he is dominating. Now, we can say all these things about it was against this Imperial that's just flown on over, but he's having players swap out. Every game we see played by Monty at the moment, it's a different roster. And he, you know what, he goes, okay, me, Demka, Krasnow, we're the old guard. We're the ones sticking around. We're going to have to step up and deliver. And Moro stepped up in every way possible. Be interesting to see if he can keep it going. But for now, he is within our top five. Maybe he can put his hands on the trophy. There was a lot of Cloud9 in that MVP check-in. I had almost kind of forgotten. They had a they had a nice day. Uh, they're, lo they're looking good so far. Um, let's do a, let's check in with the predictions that we have. The prediction game that we're gonna bring all through the uh, the the spring showdown. A chance for everyone to laugh at the talents. Uh, everybody got complexity losing wrong, dead wrong. Every single person. Yeah. And I also lost two lives today. It's not looking too shit, <laughs> right? I could. I, I even thought about going for the Imperial today because I wanted to go for the other side. But I'm gonna steal a life yesterday and it's gonna uh, tomorrow, so it's gonna be interesting to see who I'll go for. Yeah, I get to steal two lives. So for those of you just tuning in, if you if you predict against GG Bet's line and get it correct, uh, you get to steal a life from another competitor. So I'm gonna steal two. That's great. I, that Monty one felt within reach. And honest to God, when I made that prediction, I didn't even I didn't even register in my head that Bro had departed the team and they'd be using a stand-in, and, and it still worked out for me. So um, that's cool. We take that. Let's take a look at the schedule for the next day uh, for tomorrow, day number three of the Spring Showdown, to see who's gonna be competing and who's gonna be looking for that spot. We still have one quarter final to decide of the four excuse me that's my bad it's coming up shortly um mm -hmm. for you bubski <laughs> as, as i do a smooth yeah. transition how do you feel about the prediction game how are you feeling uh in your, in your i mean stand? i'm i'm surviving for now and now we there we have go and i think i want to talk about yeah, yeah take I mean, it away I want to talk about that first game because we saw a lot of rough games to the uh, yeah, today actually but tomorrow i think that spirit versus elevate we talk about a dunk being impressive at 170 rating if dunk doesn't get 170 rating tomorrow i would be surprised he's playing against potentially the worst <laughs> opponent he's been uh, up against for a long long time and i'm about to say that it's the most skewed match matchup that I've done as an analyst at this point because okay. the form of spirit going up against the likes of Elevate um, it's not going to be a good look, right? Yeah, but the dangerous thing is the one team from the Americas that hasn't had to deal with uh, some oh, yeah, you're crazy gonna travel go schedule with Jetlag. So, you know, here we go. They also had a good night to sleep and they got the vitamins in the morning, so everything's going to be lining up for them. Yeah, if if they win, if they win, it's going to crack me up for so many reasons, and, I, and I'll, be living a, I'll be living a dream. Uh, either way, that's it for the day. My dogs are barking. I hope you all can't hear that. Um, that's it for day number two. Day number three is coming up tomorrow. Thanks for tuning into the Blast Premier Spring Showdown, and we'll see you tomorrow morning.